Yep, you read that title correctly. Today, I am going to be ranking every episode of Family Guy of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic ever. Yes, I'm aware someone has probably already done this, and by the time this video is finished, another YouTuber will have done this as well, but I'm still doing it because I want to. If you live under a rock, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a children's TV show from the 2010s, which has gained a massive cult following over the years. The following it gained wasn't quite what everyone expected. See, this show was very obviously targeted towards a younger audience, but seemed tons of the audience was a teenager or even an adult. These fans would often be referred to as bronies, which basically means pony bro, and the show would get so popular and there'd even be brony conventions. It was crazy. The show aired its first episode in late 2010 and lasted a good nine seasons before wrapping up in late 2019, lasting almost a full decade. It still airs episodes on the network though, which is nice, as some shows that have ended can't quite say the same. Anyways, I myself have been a fan of the show for quite a bit, and I even bought a Rainbow Dash Build-A-Bear when I was younger. I still have it, but Away. And I haven't quite watched every episode yet, so I thought I would watch all 222 of them and rank them from best to worst. I'm going to be doing this video in an LS Mark sort of style since he's done shows such as like Family Guy, Simpsons, SpongeBob, and I really like those videos. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to listen to episodes in chronological order rather than from worst to best or best to worst. I just prefer that style as it allows for viewers to find their favorite episodes a bit more easily. But I am not going to add a chapter for every episode it'd be literally impossible to skim through the video easily and one more thing this is obviously all just in my opinion if your favorite episode is like yakety sacks that is perfectly fine feel free to discuss your thoughts on these episodes in the comments and have a nice discussion with viewers you dislike an episode i like or i like an episode you dislike that's completely okay just don't get so heated over it and that'll be perfectly fine with me anyways without further ado let's start with season one where it all began <laughs> So here it is, the very first episode of the entire show, Friendship is Magic Part 1. Yes, I'm going to split up the two parters for discussion purposes. I'm still counting it as one in the ranking, okay? Anyways, this is a pretty good starting point. Obviously, since this is part one of two, it ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but I really like what this episode does. Twilight is instructed by Princess Celestia to visit a town called Ponyville and make some friends. However, Twilight is more focused on the fact that Nightmare Moon is about to return after years of being banished. It plays out like an introduction to all of the main six, and Spike, don't forget him, and all their introductions are perfect get a very easy understanding of all their character traits and personalities. Twilight takes things pretty seriously, Spike is a bit less serious and more goofy, Applejack is very honest and hardworking, Rainbow Dash is adventurous and fun, Rarity is self-conscious and beauty queen, Fluttershy is well shy, and Pinky is... Pinky. I find it really funny how Pinky is the first pony she meets and you forget about her brief encounter until the party bit and you realize why she gasped. New pony, new party, easy as that. Overall, a pretty good starting episode. Now, let's see what happens in part two, shall we? Alright, so yeah, as expected, this part is better than part one. Part one is still good, but part two is just so much better, as it really shows off the main six's elements of harmonies, and it's just more fun. We get to see Twilight go from not being on board with the whole friendship thing to starting to appreciate them more, which I really like. She even states at the end of the episode that she'd be sad to leave her friends. Obviously, Celestia lets her stay because if she didn't, well, would this show even exist? But yeah, this one is really fun as well. I liked how it recapped the events of the last part in case you forgot what happened in part one. And we get right into this one too, with the main six having to travel to the castle of two sisters in order to get their elements of harmony and defeat Nightmare Moon. We get lots of interesting things on the way, with each of the main six demonstrating their elements of harmony. Applejack assures Twilight that she'll be fine if she lets go off of a cliff and gets caught by Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, which shows that Applejack was honest. Fluttershy shows kindness towards a manticore. Pinky helps her friends laugh at spooky trees and we get a nice little song rarity fixes a serpent's mustache by using her own tail rainbow dash declines an offer to be captain of the shadow bolts and twilight helps defeat nightmare moon with the magic of friendship which is why it's called friendship is magic you see i'm a genius this and part one are definitely good starting points for the show and will definitely set you up well for what else this show has to offer also unrelated by no idea why the first few episodes have these like pale colors if you compare these to an episode from like season two you could definitely tell the difference like it's night and day not really complaining just something weird i noticed maybe something similar to spongebob where like the colors came out wrong and he looked pale i have no idea but yeah starting off pretty strong now for the non-pilot episodes so let's see what episode three has to offer 
Princess Celestia gives Twilight two tickets to the Grand Galloping Gala, and she has to decide which one of her friends she wants to take to the gala, as they all want to go. Through this episode, we get to see all the five ponies' reasons for why they want to go to the gala, and... It's not bad. It's not as great as Friendship is Magic, but it was still a fine episode for what it was. I liked how it all ended with all the main characters being invited to the gala as Celestia didn't know if the others wanted to go or not. It's a nice little easy resolution that Twilight did not expect. It's also interesting to see Twilight deal with all of Ponyville begging her to invite them to the gala. It was pretty funny. It's more of a simple story, so it doesn't really stand out to me, but still a simple and fun episode. I'm going to be putting it at the bottom of the list, but it's definitely nowhere near a bad episode at all. <laughs> Applejack is trying to harvest all the apple trees and sweet apple acres as her brother Big Mac isn't able to do so. However, she starts to get really exhausted but still wants to do it all on her own without help as she believes she can do it on her own. We then see how her sleep deprived behavior causes problems with helping all of her friends out with their daily tasks. This one's another decent one. This one definitely shows Applejack's impact on Ponyville and just how much she matters, especially with the award bit at the start of her stopping a stampede. I love how her being too tired causes yet another stampede later on in the episode as like a little callback to the beginning. Lori just shows how much she's changed throughout the episode. This episode also once again shows just how hard of a worker Applejack is and just how dedicated she is to what she does. Just a pretty good Applejack episode overall and there's also lots of funny moments in it like the Rainbow Dash scene. I'm going to be putting Applebug season above the Ticketmaster, but below Friendship is Magic. I really like this episode, mainly because it's a Pinky episode, and Pinky is one of my favorite characters on the show. But even putting that aside, I like the story here. Pinky chases Rainbow Dash all over Ponyville, is simply as good she could help with pulling a prank on Spike. They end up really enjoying doing pranks together and start to prank their friends, except Fluttershy, as Pinky thinks that's probably not the best idea. Now, this may be a very brief moment, but I really like it because it just shows how understanding she is of her friends and what she believes is right for them. Anyways, Rainbow Dash starts to hang out with her old friend Guild of the Griffin. Pinky gets left out of their activities, however, and Gilda starts to act like a jerk towards Pinky, which understandably upsets her. Pinky spots Gilda acting like a jerk towards more residents of Ponyville, including Fluttershy. Oh my god, I'm never forgiving her for that one. That was hard to watch. Pinky throws Gilda a party filled with wacky pranks, which are actually eventually revealed to be set up by Rainbow Dash rather than Pinky, and Pinky reveals she just wanted to set up a party to make Gilda feel better, which I found quite funny. Rainbow Dash then stands up for her friends and asks Gilda to go find some new friends, which I really liked. Once again, this really shows Rainbow Dash's loyalty aspect of her character and stays loyal to her true friends. Even though Rainbow Dash and Gilda have known each other for a while, I really like how she was able to stand up to her like that and tell her off felt really satisfying this is my new favorite episode so far five episodes in and none of these have even been bad yet let's hope this keeps up Ghostbusters is an interesting episode, to say the least. We are introduced to the great and powerful Trixie, who claims to be the best pony in Equestria. She constantly offers any ponies to step up to challenge her, which Twilight doesn't want to do as she's afraid she's going to be coming across as showing off and doesn't want to lose her friends. Spike, however, really wants her to step up to the plate and challenge Trixie, as Spike doesn't really like her that much. This episode's all right, but definitely the weakest one so far. I don't know, it just doesn't feel as progressive as some of the other episodes. We spent a decent amount of time at Trixie, Trixie's show where she's performing her magic in front of everyone. And also speaking of Trixie, she wasn't even trying to show off here. Since this was just a performance, of course she's gonna show off her magic to everyone. Not really a fan of how Trixie was just chased out of Ponyville. It felt a little bit mean-spirited. However, I do think she comes back later on in the series, so we'll see what happens then. Now, there were some funny parts in this though, like how Derpy was mad at Snips and Snails for bringing Ursa Major to Ponyville. You really know you screwed up when even Derpy is mad at you. Overall, this isn't a bad episode by any means, but definitely not the greatest. Most buzzers will be going at the bottom of the list, but still a fine episode. Oh, ho, and just like that, we already have a new number one. That was quick. I love Dragon Shy Man. It's an amazing Fluttershy episode, which truly helps develop her character a bit further. While Fluttershy is feeding a Joel Bunny, probably gonna hear me rant about this bunny a lot later on. She sees a bunch of smoke in the sky coming from a big dragon in the mountains. Fluttershy tries to warn everyone, but due to her quiet and calm tone, it doesn't really get across to anyone. It's not until Twilight arrives when everyone notices. Poor Fluttershy, she's trying to get the word across. Anyways, the ponies have to travel 
travel all the way up to the dragon and tell the dragon to stop creating the smoke with them hoping fluttershy will be the one to tell the dragon to go as she is very good with animals as we all know however fluttershy is too scared of the dragon to be able to stand up to it and we spend the episode seeing the ponies go on their journey while fluttershy tries to stay behind we eventually get the amazing payoff at the end with fluttershy lashing out at the dragon and even getting right in its face it gives us our first taste of assertive fluttershy and i love it i think my only complaint with this one is rainbow dash came off a little bit unlikable here but that's just a minor complaint it doesn't really hurt the episode that much but yeah this episode overall is fantastic like i already said fluttershy finally being brave enough to stand up for her friends is so satisfying to watch Riff on the brush off is still awesome but i love a good character development episode especially when it's one of my favorites i'll be putting dragon shy at the top of the list this is honestly the first episode which i think i call amazing Not. Oh, hey, look, the colors are fixed for this episode. Now it's more like the future ones. Okay, anyways, this episode is another all right one. Applejack and Rarity have a slumber party with Twilight, but Applejack and Rarity can't seem to get along well, so Twilight has to try and get them to get along so that they can just have a good time. The plot here is a bit more simple once again, so we spend most of the episode at one location, but it's not bad at all. I found some of the arguments quite funny, and I like how this episode gives us a taste of what duos we might see in future episodes. I did, however, feel like the arguing got just a little bit repetitive after a while, but that's just a minor complaint. Applejack and Rarity are a pretty funny duo overall, so I wouldn't mind seeing a future adventure with the two of them. Look before you sleep, we'll be going below the Ticketmaster, but above Ghostbusters. It's not the worst. Oh, looks like I spoke too soon. We're back to the pale colors. I still don't get why that happens. Anyways, this episode is pretty fun. I like it. When residents of Ponyville see a zebra named Zakora enter the town, they get scared of her because they think she's doing some evil things behind the scenes and see her as a threat to Ponyville. This is also our first episode with Apple Bloom. Kind of funny how it took nine episodes for her to show, but she's a pretty important character later on. But yeah, I really like how much more slapstick a comedy there is in this one. The funniest bit for sure was Flutter Guy. Hearing Fluttershy with the manliest voice ever is just too good i'm sorry that that was really good Grady girl what's wrong with you i don't want to talk about it pinky also repeating that stupid song was also pretty funny as a recurring gag i also really like apple bloom as a character here she's one of the only few to not believe the rumors and visit sakura herself to see what they're all about but yeah overall i think this episode is just the funniest so far there's lots of good jokes and slapstick in here such as twilight's floppy horn just all the curses in general were pretty funny but yeah not a bad episode pretty fun <laughs> Fluttershy finds a cute creature called a Parasprite and takes it back to Ponyville to show her friends. However, the Parasprites start to multiply and they must get them out of Ponyville before they make a huge mess as Princess Celestia is about to visit. I like this one too. It's entertaining to see all their taxes getting the Parasprites out of the town and Pinky also plays a prominent role here. Although, I do gotta feel bad for her here as she was really the only one who knew what to do. She should have just tried explaining why getting a bunch of instruments would have helped rather than just talk about getting instruments out of context. Like if she said something like, I know how to fix this i must get a bunch of instruments and lead them out i bet this episode would have been a lot different <laughs> other than that i still find this one pretty fun and funny not as funny as bridal gossip but still a fun time i'm starting to notice these episodes increasing in quality so let's hope they get better from here <laughs> Spring is on the horizon, and all of Ponyville have to do their annual winter wrap-up and clean up the town. However, Twilight isn't allowed to use her magic to clean up, as Ponyville was founded by Earth Ponies. I mean, I don't see how that makes sense, but okay. So she spends the episode trying to help out her friends in different ways, but not quite succeeding. This one's pretty alright. I like seeing the different ways Twilight tries to help out, and the pinky skating scene was pretty funny. I'm sure my first time was just as wobbly and bobbly and crash horrific as yours. Really? No. There's also a song in this episode, which is pretty good as well. I remember this song being in my head for the rest of the night after watching this episode. It was literally all I could hear. But yeah, this is a pretty good Twilight episode. It really shows how much she cares for the town and also shows her leadership quite well. For her ending up being the planner for who gets to do what. Winter Wrap Up is another alright episode, which is definitely a good one for Twilight fans. I'm going to be playing it below Applebuck season. 
like, hey, it's our first Cutie Mark Crusader episode. In fact, this episode shows the origin of the iconic Cutie Mark Crusader trio. So Apple Bloom is sad that she doesn't have her Cutie Mark yet when everyone else does. So she goes around town looking for a special talent that could give her a Cutie Mark. It's a really fun and wholesome episode, which really helps truly introduce Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Belle onto the show. The way the Cutie Mark Crusader group forms feels natural, and the twist that Apple Bloom wasn't the only pony without a Cutie Mark was very nice. The scene of Apple Bloom trying to help Applejack sell the apples was pretty funny too. This is a pretty good episode, which gives a different character the spotlight and does it in a very nice way. I'll be putting Call of the Cutie above Apple Buck season, but below Bridal Gossip. It's a pretty good one. Rainbow Dash and Applejack both compete to figure out who the better athlete is. They do many different athletic events, such as weaving through barrels, hammering a button to hit a bell, and even lassoing Spike. Poor guy. This episode does an amazing job at showing Rainbow Dash and Applejack as a duo and how fun they are to watch. The part when they race each other is by far my favorite part. You have Rainbow Dash and Applejack coming up with stupid ways to slow each other down, and they're all actually pretty creative. Also, them laughing at Twilight participating in the race and her ending up winning was pretty funny as well. I think that was the funniest part of the episode. You also have Pinky and Spike being the commentators of the race, which makes for some more funny yaks, with Spike being very confused by Pinky's wacky comments. Takes the lead! She's ahead by half a nose! Or maybe three quarters of a nose! No, about 63.7% of a nose! Roughly speaking. This is a very fun episode, and I hope to see more of Rainbow Dash and Applejack as a duo in future episodes, because they're really fun to watch. Yeah, Applejack and Rarity is fine, but Rainbow Dash and Applejack is just a bit more fun to watch than them. They feel more similar, so that definitely helps. Very good one. Very interesting one. Rarity wants to make dresses for all of her friends from the upcoming gala, but the dresses don't quite meet the pony's desires. This one's alright, but man, did I just feel bad for Rarity the whole time. I get that's the whole point, that you should just accept gifts from friends for what they are and not ask for too much, but man, it was still tough watching Rarity just exhaust herself and almost have her career ended. I'm glad she was able to overcome that though and show off the dresses she liked more than the ones her friends wore. This episode also has a song, which is another pretty good one. The songs seem to be orchestrated in some pretty well for our kids show especially this early on like we're only on episode 14 i hope to see him continue to get better overall this is a decent episode which may be hard to watch if you're a rarity fan but it has a good message in it and has some funny jokes so not bad say the line bart it needs to be about 20 percent cooler yeah! another pinky episode this time we find out about her special pinky sense which similar to a spidey sense warns her of any incoming danger this one i think is the new funniest episode there are so many good moments in this one like the way pinky is so specific with some of the warnings is just hilarious oh no 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 no! you're thinking of an ear flop then knee twitch then eye flutter this was an ear flop then eye flutter then knee twitch that usually means look out for opening doors. We also get introduced to her pet alligator, Gummy. It's interesting how some of these mainstays don't get introduced too early, but I definitely think it works in its favor. It gives us some time to get used to the main characters before introducing new ones rather than just throwing a billion new characters at our faces every second. It's funny seeing Twilight lose her mind over such a small thing. It kind of reminds me of that one Unikitty episode where Dr. Fox takes Richard's magic show way too seriously and just loses it. Obviously, I know this came first, but it's just a little funny connection I made. Okie dokie dokie. Remember that line. Anyways, yeah, this is a really funny episode. It's definitely a good pinky episode once again. I hope more of the pinky episodes are as funny as this one because their nonsense is just so funny to me. I don't know why. But yeah, this will go above Swarm of the Century, but below Fall Weather Friends. Also, wow, we're already on episode 16. That's wild. <laughs> Oh, hey, look, it's the episode with the iconic yay scene. It's funny how many iconic moments there is early on in the series. Anyways, this episode is a great one. Rainbow Dash has a best young flyer competition coming up, but she can't quite perfect the sonic rain boom, as it's called. So she is very nervous about it, and her friends have to help her out and comfort her. There's also Rarity, who gains her own wings thanks to a spell from Twilight, which allowed her to easily get around Cloudsdale. But she gets a bit too carried away with them and even enters the competition at the last minute, overshadowing Rainbow Dash. Honestly, I could see this being a relatable episode for some being so afraid of not performing your best in front of a huge crowd is definitely an issue lots can relate to and this episode does an amazing job showing that with rainbow dash constantly delaying her turn and her easily messing up what she practiced it just feels like such a good portrayal of this kind of situation it feels so realistic i also really liked how fluttershy managed to give out a good cheer at the end as a little callback to the beginning genuinely was pretty sweet to see and definitely the highlight of the episode for me <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Wow, okay, I guess even this was too spicy for Pinky. Anyway, Sonic Rainbow is one of my favorites so far. Going below Dragon Sight, but honestly, it's pretty close. Go check this one out, especially if you're a Rainbow Dash fan. Okay, wow, these episodes are really starting to pick up in quality. What happened? This is another amazing episode. It's a Fluttershy episode too, so my bias is probably the main reason for that, but I can't help it. It's very enjoyable though. We get to see more of the Cutie Mark Crusaders and Fluttershy being assertive, which is satisfying as always. Birdie isn't able to have her slumber party with the Cutie Mark Crusaders, so Fluttershy offers to have the slumber party at her cottage instead. So we see how Fluttershy deals with the Cutie Mark Crusaders' desire for adventure and how she takes care of them. It's funny seeing all the Cutie Mark Crusader names they come up with like the cutie mark carpenters cutie mark creature catchers and even cutie mark cottage cleaners we also get to see fluttershy stare in action hence the title stare master you're the stare master i really like how literally even the chicken that turns creatures to stone is just terrified of fluttershy stare here it's pretty funny but yeah i like how this episode shakes up things for once around than fluttershy taking care of animals she takes care of kids very interesting shakeup. also we broke the streak of derpy appearance as far as i can tell there is no derpy cameo Sad days, ain't it? Anyways, another solid episode. Very close to the best, but I'll still be putting it below Dragon Shy, as I believe that's just the better Fluttershy story. But let's hope these solid episodes keep coming through. I'm enjoying these. I'm the world champion, though. I bet you can't beat me. <gasps> I lose. Me too. Me free. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, she, she said the name of the show, guy. Not really, but close enough. Another Cutie Mark Crusader episode. Dang, that's two in a row. The Cutie Mark Crusaders get their own little hangout house built by Applejack and are still on the quest to get their Cutie Marks. However, as usual, they struggle a lot and we see that in a little montage. They get their opportunity to explore their talents at the Ponyville School Talent Show and so we spend the episode seeing the Cutie Mark Crusaders train for and perform their acts for the talent show. It's fine but probably the weakest episode yet i just felt the others felt like they had more story and adventure to them whereas this one takes place mainly at two locations the whole time you could argue that for stairmaster but i feel it worked better there as we did get to explore more fluttershy's cottage in the evertree forest but here is just the exact same location for a long period of time also the montage at the beginning probably could have been a bit shorter the cutie mark crusaders is still a fun trio to watch and i can't wait to see the episode where they get their cutie marks the showstoppers is a fine episode but i'll be at the bottom of the list i can see why people aren't really a fan of this one rarity gets kidnapped wow okay then by some creatures named the diamond dogs who want all of her jewels that she needs for her dresses this is a pretty decent rarity episode once again i think this one is better than suited for success as it's got way more funny moments than that one had the dogs getting annoyed by rarity later on was pretty funny i could see why this episode sold people on rarity being their favorite i also like how we get to see the others go about saving rarity with them struggling in the process once again despite this episode taking place in not many locations kind of like the showstoppers i think this one still works it kind of helps how despite it being the same location we get to see different parts of the cave which helps change the scenery kind of like stairmaster but yeah overall this is another decent rarity episode dog and pony show is going below winter wrap up i am so frustrated i could just scream <gasps> feel better no. Another Fluttershy episode. And it's solid once again. You know, I've been seeing a pattern with these Fluttershy episodes. Some... Just saying. Anyways, Fluttershy becomes a model and becomes super famous. So famous to the point where she's recognized literally everywhere and can't even go about her activities without being bothered. Hey. Hey guys, I bet YouTubers can highly relate to this one. Get it? No? Okay, I'll save myself out for this one. Fluttershy wants to quit being a model due to the fame and pressure, but is scared of letting Rarity down. Rarity ends up getting jealous of Fluttershy's fame, but is scared to tell Fluttershy. Notice how these two both have secrets they want to tell each other, but are scared of doing so, which ends up being the message for this episode. I like it a lot. The way these two secrets come together works out really well. There's also quite a bit of funny moments in this episode, mainly thanks to Pinky taking the secret thing pretty seriously. She even has her own Pinky promise pledge. Cross my heart and hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. And you also have Pinky just appearing out of nowhere constantly. That's a really funny recurring gag. That was definitely the funniest part of the whole episode. This episode is just overall very funny, has a good message, and just a fun time overall. Going above Griffon the brush off, but below Sonic Rainboom. What are episodes episode seem to be dominating the top five so far? Wow. Spike has a crush on Rarity! <sighs> and you are doing so well. Wait, how the fuck? 
Oh boy, here we go. Uh, this one is one of the most controversial episodes in the whole show, so let's see how it is. It's, uh interesting my biggest problem with this one is obviously the lesson at the end like sharing the land was, was that really the message they wanted to go for here i can see why this one's pretty controversial honestly that's just all right then <laughs> hey it's not the worst episode ever in my opinion i do really like some of the jokes in this episode and it's a new location for a change in fact this is the episode where the iconic fluttershy isn't a tree bit she's not a tree dashy I'd like to be a tree. Oh, for Pete's sake! But most of what I like is during the first half when they're on the train. When they actually get to a new location and they start to argue over who should be able to use the land, that's when the episode definitely starts to fall flat. And Pinky's son was kind of hard to watch. I can definitely understand the characters' reactions here. It may sound like I really hate this episode like others do, but I don't really. Like I said, it has its fair share of funny moments and it definitely feels more adventurous. I just wish the lesson was a little better because that just wasn't it. Over the Barrel isn't the worst episode so far, but it certainly isn't amazing. Putting it below, a dog and pony show you've got to share you've got to care hey that's what i said don't remind me is the fluttershy solid episode streak going to continue well let's find out fluttershy decides to take celestia's pet bird philomena to her cottage to take care of it as it appears to be very sick and well Pretty good. It's interesting seeing Fluttershy struggle with taking care of an animal, as that's pretty much what she's best at. The moment Philomena quote unquote died had me feeling really sorry for her, but part of me knew that the bird didn't actually die because like Celestia would have been <laughs> but yeah, it's another fun little Fluttershy story with some high stakes in it, with them trying to return Philomena without anyone knowing. As Fluttershy did take Philomena without Celestia's permission. I like it a lot. It's pretty good. I like the part when Fluttershy sang the melody to the theme song. That was a neat little Easter egg. I like that. And I also really liked how Fluttershy actually admitted to what she did at the end. Despite her shy character, she was brave enough to tell the truth, and I applaud her for that. This episode will be going above Griff on the brush up, but below green isn't your color. Aren't you gonna banish me, or throw me in a dungeon, or banish me, then throw me in a dungeon in the place that you banished me to? Of course not, my little pony. Is is this a trend now? What is with these title drops all of a sudden? <laughs> Another Cutie Mark Crusader episode. Let's hope this one's a step up from the last one. And wow, it definitely was. Cutie Mark Crusaders are still looking for their Cutie Marks. I mean, duh, what else would they be doing? And they decided to set out and ask Rainbow Dash how she got her Cutie Mark, with them hearing the other stories along the way. The way these stories perfectly connect to each other is so good, and I love how Rainbow Dash's Sonic Rainbow Melody was how they were all able to get their Cutie Marks. That was a nice little touch. It's also very interesting to see what their lives were like when they were little. Like, for example, Pinky growing up on a sad rock farm is not what you'd expect for a character but it just makes her origin all that more interesting and fluttershy's song was really good as well but literally all i could think about the whole time was flutter wonder like anytime you hear like a sound bit it just sounds so weird hearing it in full without it remix i don't know oh, oh my god is this from the song flutter wonder the ending with all of them hugging was also very sweet and this episode overall is just very good it gives these characters a bit more depth to them it really makes you appreciate this friend group just that little bit more going above a bird in the hoof go check this one out it's pretty cool this is uncanny. Mr. Incredible Uncanny. And now the punch has been spiked. Okay, how on earth did they get away with that joke? I was not expecting that. Anyway, this episode is weird spike is jealous of twilight's new owl friend owlicious who is helping her out alongside spike this is another episode where i just feel like despite the lesson being the whole point obviously that you shouldn't get too jealous of others it just goes a bit too far like spike just takes it way too far and really tries to frame owlicious to get twilight to make him her only assistant again like why it just felt a bit out of character for me you know it felt cruel i feel like this one would have worked out better if spike's jealousy wasn't so strong like it was kind of hard to watch him lose twilight's respect because his jealousy was just so strong he couldn't contain it however this one still has its moments like the pinky quill scene pinky seems to have lots of funny moments even in the weaker episodes which is good i also like the running gag of spike not understand the owl going who that was all right i'll be putting owls and while it ends well below the ticket master it's a mixed bag but it's not the worst Oh my god, I love this episode to bits. New number one for sure, no contest. Everything about it is just hilarious and so much fun. Pinkie Pie's party invites to her friends get rejected for what seem like excuses, so she must get to the bottom of what's really going on. She finds out her friends made up those excuses to not attend the party, and she thinks they hate her parties. Only for her to realize that it was because they were playing a birthday party for her. Like I said, this episode is hilarious. There are so many good moments in it, such as the part with Pinkie chasing Rainbow Dash. 
kind of a callback to Griff on the brush shop, if you think about it. Or the part where Pinky just loses it and goes insane. Literally making your own party and having inanimate objects as friends. Watching such a happy character suddenly act like this is just super funny, but also kind of surreal at first. Andrea Lipman did a really good job with the voice acting in this scene. She actually sounded like a completely different character at some parts. But I have some more punch. I also really like how her hair just deflates when she is super sad. It's a nice little touch that I thought was funny as well. And the facial expressions of this episode were also just perfect. I love the scene of Applejack just straight up lying to Pinky. It's so much funny when you realize Applejack's the honest one. She's such a bad liar. It's so funny to watch. Yeah, overall, Party of One is my new favorite episode so far. It's got so much to enjoy. Please check this one out. It's so good. Now, let's see if this season can wrap out with a banner. Okie dokie loki. Hey, it's the line again from earlier. So here it is, the final episode of season one. It's finally time for the grand galloping gala that they've hyped up all season. So all of the main six head to Canterlot to attend the gala and hope to have the best night ever, hence the title. However, the gala isn't quite as awesome as they thought it'd be, so they try to spice it up but cause quite a bit of chaos. This was an awesome season finale. I like this one a lot. There were so many funny moments in this one, and it also just felt like a good way to end off the season in general. It really felt like a finale. This episode didn't disappoint point at all it genuinely felt like a big event it does a really good job of showing us how each of the main six spend the night and how they try to spice it up ultimately leading into the entire gala turning to chaos the way these six stories are tied together just worked perfectly and i'm surprised they managed to do it this well the song at the beginning was also a pretty good one i like how they all get a singing role in it my favorite part by far has got to be fluttershy's story where she tries to talk to the animals remember how funny pinky going insane was well now here's fluttershy going insane i'd argue it's just as funny seeing such a kind soul get pushed over the edge this much is just hilarious it makes for some great moments for me such as the iconic you're going to love me scene I don't know, it's just fun seeing nice characters get genuinely mad or go insane, so it's always funny to see. Anyways, this episode was tons of fun and never really got that boring. I'll be putting it below Dragon Shy, but above Stairmaster. Awesome way to end off the season. And that was season one. Gotta say, this was a decent start to the show. There were a few all right episodes, but none I can really call downright bad. At worst, it was just okay and not the worst thing ever. And some of the best episodes were awesome and so much fun. I'd say around when the weird color thing got fixed was when the season was definitely improving. Episodes like Sonic, Rainboom, Stairmaster, and The Best Night Ever were all super solid episodes. It definitely stood out a lot to me. I won't be surprised that episodes like Party of One managed to make something like the top 15 in the final ranking, as that episode is just hilarious and some say it's their number one favorite of all time however some say that the show really picks up after season one so we'll see if that's true or not anyways on to season two what on earth is this we kick off season two with another two-parter already off the bat i have a feeling this one will be better than friendship is magic but to be fair that was like the pilots so of course this one will be better also is it just me or did the animation like slightly improve i don't know something about it just looks a bit more lively and bouncy compared to season one's animation anyways we get our first introduction to discord one of the most infamous characters in the whole show discord breaks free from his stone and starts to cause chaos in equestria and it's up to the main six to use their elements of harmony to freeze discord back into stone but uh oh discord took all the elements of harmony so they have to go through a maze and try and get their elements of harmony back however all except twilight get corrupted along the way and become polar opposites of their normal selves there's lots of fun to be had in this one discord's such a wacky character his voice his design his lines i can't wait to see more of him soon i also really like seeing the polar opposites of the ponies especially fluttershy and applejack they honestly made for some really funny moments here also i love how fluttershy was just so nice that discord just gave up and corrupted her in his normal form just goes to show how innocent Fluttershy is. But yeah, overall, very promising part one. Now, let's see what happens in part two. Oh well, if anyone needs me, I'll be outside in the chocolate petals with a giant With all of Twilight's friends now corrupted and her managing to find the elements of harmony, she must try to revert them back to normal so they can use the elements to defeat Discord. Much like Friendship is Magic, this is definitely better than part one. We get to see more of the main six acting opposite to their true selves, and there's lots of funny moments in this one. I never thought it would happen. 
my friends have turned into complete jerks. It's also really interesting to see just how chaotic Ponyville has become since Discord broke free. There's all this like chocolate rain, the long-legged bunnies. That's still terrifying. Dancing animals, it's wild around here. My favorite part has definitely got to be the ending with the five ponies trying to get Rainbow Dash down from the clouds so they can revert it back to normal. Watershy suddenly boosting ahead after hearing Discord would win was just really satisfying to watch. It was just a fun chase scene in general. This is a very solid start to the season. And I can't wait to see what else there is in store for us. Look out! Here comes Tom! Oh, hey, look, they changed the intro. Not really the biggest change, but still a change. Anyways, this one's another solid episode. Twilight has sent a letter to Celestia for a week and is afraid that she'll get sent back to kindergarten. So she sets out and tries to find a problem to solve so that she can write a letter to Celestia before sundown. This one is filled with hilarious moments. We haven't had a proper Twilight episode in some time, so it's nice to see one again. Also, her slowly losing her mind over this is terrifying, but so funny at the same time. Add that to the list of characters who have gone insane so far. First Pinkie Pie, then Flutter shine out twilight who's next rainbow dash she goes so insane that she literally makes a problem just so she can have an excuse to write a letter like she literally made all of ponyville in love with a, a doll like what but yeah this episode is just so wild and that's why i love it her friend sticking up for her at the end was very nice too this is just overall a very fun and wild episode and it's a good watch top of the list for season two <gasps> Tardy! what's that now Tardy it's a nightmare night in Ponyville and Princess Luna returns after being Nightmare Moon for a thousand years. However, all of Ponyville are scared of her, so Twilight must help her adjust to being a bit less threatening. It's alright, but definitely the weakest season 2 episode so far. I'm not gonna lie, Pinky did Luna a little bit dirty here with her pretending to be scared of her so that Luna genuinely felt like she didn't belong. Like, come on, Pinky, you're better than that. However, I did like some stuff in the episode, such as the Fluttershy bit. That was pretty funny. I won't lie. There's also the fact that Pinky being in her like 20s is still collecting candy and stuff. It's just great. Her chicken costume was like the highlight of this whole episode. It just fits her way too well for chaotic like energy. Anyways, this episode is fine, but just didn't feel as good as the past few were. Going at the bottom of the list for season two. <laughs> Rarity has struggles with taking care of Sweetie Belle, so they go their separate ways and Sweetie Belle spends time with Applejack to feel better. I actually like this one quite a bit. Yeah, Rarity might seem a bit unlikable at first, but I love her redemption when she competes in the race with Sweetie Belle in secret. The fact that she would get all muddy, which if you know Rarity, she hates that, just to get her little sister back was really sweet of her too and just shows how much she appreciates her. And it's nice to have an episode where we get to see them both develop as siblings. We haven't really gotten anything like that yet, so it's nice to finally get an episode like that. I think this episode this episode perfectly shows how tough it could be to take care of your sister or your brother or just a younger family member in general. This one's a pretty good one. It's gonna go below green isn't your color, but that's not saying it's bad at all. What a fun episode this was. Apple Bloom is super let down by still not having her cutie mark, so she brews up a potion at Zakora that gives her the cutie pox. I love seeing all the wacky talent she gets. At first, it starts out normal, and it seems like she actually did get a cutie mark, but then it starts to get out of hand really quickly. It gets to the point where she can't even talk to anyone properly, as she keeps getting new cutie marks like every second. She even gets one where she lifts like a super heavy weight, like... What is happening? It's just wild seeing how chaotic Ponyville becomes due to this situation and how it affects Apple Bloom's everyday life. I like how we're seeing more of Zakora now and she wasn't just a one-off. It seems they like to include these characters in several episodes to give them a chance to shine, which I really like. Who knows, maybe characters like Gummy weren't even meant to be a mainstay, but the fans liked the character so much that he stayed. I don't know, that might be a bit of a stretch as they might have included some of these characters to further build upon the lore. But I think it's certainly something to think about. But yeah, anyways, third best episode of season two so far. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey guys, that's the title. Rainbow Dash doesn't have a pet and can't decide what she'd want as a pet, so she holds a competition to see which pet is the coolest. It's another good one this season so far has definitely been an improvement over how season one was at the beginning so i hope this keeps up also fluttershy objectively has the best scene voice in this whole show and no one can tell me otherwise like literally just listen to this sure how about a bunny they're cutesy and wootsy and quick as can be like come on now that's literally perfect but yeah the song is one of the best songs yeah i really like that part remember that's just singing ain't even bad either i gotta say that it's also nice foreshadowing how throughout the song it constantly shows the tortoise as rainbow dash does end up picking the tortoise as it was the only one which saved her life meanwhile the others just 
ditched her? Yeah, you made the right choice, Rainbow. It's a really wholesome ending, too, with Dash giving Tank the Taurus a way to fly with her so she's not grounded, but also not leaving him behind. Overall, another good episode. They just keep topping themselves with this season. Two Rainbow Dash episodes in a row. All right, I see you season two. Rainbow Dash is praised for being the most heroic pony in Ponyville when suddenly a mysterious pony shows up and one-ups her. So Rainbow Dash tries to save people better than the mysterious pony in order to stop her ego from shattering. It's fine. It was very hard to watch Rainbow Dash shenanigans at times, though. Like that one scene with the jar or the grass scene where she mows the lawn and acts like it was the most heroic act. Like it... It just wasn't Rainbow. I still gotta admit it was entertaining though, and the twist at the end was expected, but I did still like it. It's funny how quickly the five ponies just get sick of her ego and decide to come up with the smartest plan ever, like, instantly. I do gotta say, this episode is literally a perfect representation of what fame can do to people. They start to lose their true selves, they flex on others, they act like they're better than everyone else. It's all in this episode, and I gotta give it props for that. But compared to everything else we watched today, it's just decent at best. What a good Rarity episode. Rarity stays at Canterlot for a bit before Twilight's birthday party, but she starts to enjoy her life at Canterlot and must choose between spending more time there or returning to Ponyville for the party. Once again, she may seem unlikable here, but this episode has a pretty good lesson going for it, and she does choose her friends at the end. It was also pretty fun to watch Rarity go from Twilight's party back to the other party going on. It was really funny to see the main six just appear out of thin air. I was not expecting that. All in all, this is one of my favorite Rarity episodes. It's got a good lesson. It's tons of fun to watch. Also, I'm sorry if some reviews are shorter than others. I mean, when you're reviewing over 200 episodes of a cartoon, not every review is going to be 100 consistent. Am I right? Moving on. I'll be honest, I was a bit skeptical of this episode when watching the beginning. I was like, no, 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 don't tell me there's gonna be another episode where Spike is extremely unlikable. But I ended up really enjoying this one a lot. Spike has his first birthday party and starts to realize how easy it is to get free gifts, just by clarifying that. So he goes around Ponyville getting free gifts from citizens. Now this is when the episode starts to get better. Spike starts to randomly grow and becomes even more greedy, and so Twilight and the others must help Spike and revert him back to his regular self. This episode is carried by how it's one of those episodes where it's like a goose chase that just keeps getting more and more intense the more you watch. Spike progressively getting bigger while the main six are chasing him and messing up their everyday lives was surprisingly fun to watch. I also like the ending with Spike feeling really guilty about what he did, but the main six just being glad the old Spike was back. That was nice. What a good Spike episode. I'm glad this one ended up being really good. I'm usually not a fan of the types of episodes which tell stories from the past, if that makes sense, as I find some of them quite boring at times. But I ended up enjoying this one more than I thought. It probably helps that's quite important information that helps you to understand the world more. It's the holidays and the main six star in a play about how Equestria was founded. By the way, both this episode and Winter Wrap Up are the 11th episode in the season coincidence i think not anyways i think the reason why this episode worked for me is just how fun the main six can make any situation with all of their unique and diverse personalities it makes stuff like this just that bit more interesting to watch like how aggressive rainbow dash is about who gets the land or how pinkie pie just doesn't take things seriously at all not much to say about this one other than i enjoyed it i'll be putting it below the last man i'm impressed with how much better this season has been so far not to say season one's bad obviously season one's pretty good but man season two might just be a bit better Another family episode. Is that even like a term? Family episode? Apple Bloom has to bring in her Granny Smith for family appreciation day at school, as Applejack and Big Mac are too busy harvesting zap apples. While I didn't find this one as good as Sister Hooves social, I still liked it. The situation Apple Bloom is in can be relatable to some, having a family member that's just so wacky and crazy that you feel embarrassed by them being around you in public. It was also interesting to see the ways Apple Bloom tries to get out of Granny Smith going to her class on Monday. It was pretty funny just seeing her up here out of nowhere after Apple Bloom thought she got rid of her for the day. I honestly saw that coming, but it was still funny how out of nowhere it was. And it was nice to see just how important Granny Smith is to Ponyville, with her telling a really good and interesting story, which once again helps you understand the world more. But yeah, another good episode. I sound like a broken record at this point, but season two just keeps delivering. My cats seem to be really into this one. Pinky decides to babysit the cakes as baby ponies and learns the responsibilities of taking care of kids. This one is good, but wasn't super good. It is fun to watch Pinky slowly lose her mind while she's taking care of the babies, cause like, 
I would too. But it's also interesting to see her way they're trying to make the babies happy and seeing if they work or not. They obviously don't. But I don't know. It just felt a bit repetitive for me. Beaky tries something. It fails. She pours the flower on her. They laugh. Repeat. It's not a bad thing, but it's certainly something I noticed. It definitely gets better around the halfway mark when Twilight shows up. But overall, this one is good, but not the greatest. Middle of the list. It's not as bad as people say it is. Uh-oh. Me too, Pinky. Hey, it's the episode where Derpy gets a speaking role. You okay, Rainbow Jack? Anything I can do to help? Anyways, this may be an extremely hot, spicy take, but I think it's my new favorite episode of season two. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Applejack leaves Ponyville to compete in the Cancer Lot Rodeo competition, but mysteriously never returns. So the game must head out and find Applejack and find out what's really going on. This is another episode where we get to see just how bad Applejack is at lying. It's always funny to see her do that because everyone can always tell it's a lie, but it's also just another really fun adventure. There's lots that happens here and it never really gets boring or slow. It just keeps going and going. The chasing at the end was fun. There were tons of funny bits and it's constantly changing scenery. My favorite parts were definitely the pinky bits as usual, but I love how she's used as a full-on weapon against Applejack to get her to spill the beans. And seeing her reaction to Applejack breaking her pinky promise was also really funny. This is just another super solid episode overall. Top of the list for season two. Being startled can be very startling. <laughs> Eh, I wasn't all that into this one. The best part was the intro of Rainbow Dash trying to get some cider and the ending with the game helping Applejack's family, but other than that, it's just all right. It's cider season and Applejack isn't able to supply every pony with some cider. So these two fellas right here come to Sweet Apple Acres with their super speedy cider squeezy 6,000. Oh my God, what is that name? A machine that can make cider in an instant. Applejack must stop them from running Sweet Apple Acres out of business by making more cider barrels than them in an hour. Like I said, I wasn't a big fan of this episode, but I did like the gang coming together to help Applejack's family. And the ending with the two getting karma for rushing their cider in the competition was also pretty satisfying. The song was all right but i think i've heard better songs from the show so far but it's not bad by any means all in all this is not a bad episode but definitely the weakest of the season so far that's it last cup all for This episode, on the other hand, is really good and fun. Rainbow Dash gets injured and rushed to the hospital, where she has to rest for a few days. Twilight suggests that Rainbow Dash reads a book called Daring Do in the Quest for the Sapphire Stone to keep her occupied. She says that reading is for eggheads, but after her friends leave, she starts to get really into the book, but doesn't want to admit it to her friends because she doesn't want to be seen as an egghead. So we spend the episode not only seeing Rainbow Dash try to hide the fact that she likes reading, but we even get to see some of the actual story too. This episode is tons of fun. It's interesting seeing her ways of trying to hide hide the book from her friends. The part where she literally breaks into the hospital just to retrieve the book was such a wild scene, but was super fun to watch. A really good Rainbow Dash episode overall. I'll be playing read it and weep above Hearth Swarming Eve. It's Hearts and Who's Day, and Mrs. Cherry Lee doesn't have a very special sun pony, so the Cunemut Crusaders give her a love potion and she falls in love with Big Mac. However, it turns out they actually drank love poison, and so they must try to snap them out of it before their love ruins their everyday jobs. This is such a weird episode, but it somehow still works. My favorite part has definitely gotta be them trying to snap the ponies out of the love poison. It actually gets pretty intense near the end when Mrs. Cherry Lee comes very close to seeing Big Mac again, just before they snap out of the love poison. Also, the Cunemut Mark Crusader's reaction to their love behavior is base. I have a special sum pony, a kissy wissy snuggy wuggy sugar bear. What kind of flirting is this? Anyways, another good and fun episode. Putting Hearts and Hooves Day above baby cakes. <laughs> Oh, it's the Smile episode. It's funny how this song literally carries the episode because the rest is just decent in comparison. Pinky meets a new citizen in Ponyville and wants to be his friend and make him smile. However, he doesn't want to be bothered and just wants some peace and quiet. 
But Pinky ain't having any of that. She wants to be his friend and won't even be. And that's my biggest issue with this episode. Pinky bothering this innocent donkey for a whole episode isn't exactly the most entertaining thing out there. Even her simply babysitting felt a bit more entertaining than this. Doesn't mean this episode is bad though. We do have the infamous smile song at the beginning, which is, like I said, the best part of the whole episode. This song is easily my favorite in the series so far. It's perfect how much it just encapsulates Pinky's character and what she's all about. Making others happy, putting others before herself. Others being happy is what makes her happy, and that's what this song is all about, and it's awesome, and I could listen to it for hours. The episode itself is alright, but not the best Pinky episode out there. I'll put it above Luna Eclipsed. Try everything you can to make Cranky smile and be your friend. Check! Are you sure I can't tempt you with a nice crisp piece of- yeah, see what I was talking about with this bunny? He sucks. Why does Fluttershy still keep it? Anyways, another hot take, but I actually like this episode a lot. Fluttershy is tired of being a pushover all the time, so she takes some advice from a bull named Iron Will to make her more assertive. However, that backfires and Fluttershy becomes a bit too assertive, if you know what I mean. The main criticism I see for this episode is the scene where Fluttershy yells at Pinky and Rarity. And while I can see why people aren't a fan of that, it works in this episode, I feel like, because isn't that what the episode is literally all about Fluttershy's advice being a bad influence on her. Remember, Fluttershy is very easily influenced because of her innocent character, so it makes sense for Iron Will's advice to make her like this. That's the whole point of the episode, that Fluttershy takes it too far. And this is even the point where she realizes she was wrong. That was her breaking point, but that's just my take on it. It's very interesting to see an aggressive Fluttershy after being so used to the innocent one we all know and love. It's kind of fun, I'll admit. And even the Pinky and Rarity scene is kind of funny to me because, like, it's so out of pocket, like, she did not need to go that hard on them. We even get our first taste of Fluttershy quote-unquote swearing. Are trying to tell new Fluttershy how to live her life when they are throwing their own lives away on pointless pursuits that no pony else gives a flying feather about. Anyways, unlike the mass majority, I actually enjoyed this episode quite a lot. It feels like a good character development episode for Fluttershy, as she even learns how to be really assertive at the end. Now, pay Iron Will what you owe Iron Will. Um, no. This makes for a really good reaction clip, I'm not gonna lie. Going above Lesson Zero. I'm gonna get murdered for this take, aren't I? Time travel episodes are always entertaining, and this one is no exception. Twilight gets a visit from her future self and tries to warn her about an apparent disaster, but disappears before getting to tell her what not to do. So Twilight freaks out and does everything she can to prevent this said disaster before next Tuesday morning, which is when the disaster supposedly takes place. This one is super fun, I love her methods of trying to prevent the disaster, only to cause Twilight to look exactly like her future self. It's funny seeing the twist at the end, which was that Twilight was trying to warn her past self about freaking out about the future. Like, I liked seeing the scene from the beginning again, but from her perspective instead of present Twilight's. I was hoping we'd see something like that. We also got a fun little adventure with Twilight, Spike, and Pinky, which was filled with hilarious moments. We even get Twilight going a little crazy again, just like from Lesson Zero. Why are the episodes where Twilight loses always solid ones? <laughs> Overall, this is a very solid Twilight episode once again, and it's gonna go at the top of the Season 2 list. Okay! I cannot watch this intro without thinking at the time I literally just recorded a Spongebob meme with this scene in it and just re-uploaded it in literally the worst quality possible. <laughs> Anyways, not the biggest fan of Dragon Quest. It just doesn't feel that interesting to me, honestly. Spike has an identity crisis and joins the Great Dragon Migration to see if it helps discover who he really is. However, the way the dragons are don't quite meet Spike's interests. I don't know, the dragons all just bully Spike the whole time and it isn't very fun to watch. They all act like exactly the same too, which doesn't really help. My favorite parts were basically just Twilight, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity trying to blend in with the dragons. And I'll admit, this joke was pretty good too. Who's this weirdo? I think he's Crackle's cousin. <laughs> oh. That would explain it. But yeah, this is honestly one of the weakest episodes of the whole show so far. Bottom of the list for season two, I wasn't really a fan of this one. And naturally, we go from a weak episode to a good episode. However, I feel like a good episode is an understatement for this one. 
this is an incredible episode not only is this one my new favorite of season two but it's my new favorite of the whole show so far yeah it's that good Fluttershy has to help the other pegasi with making a tornado that can lift up enough water for the rain season however she is too scared to help because of her fear of humiliation and doesn't feel like she'd make a huge impact on the project so Fluttershy must overcome her fears and not only help Rainbow Dash with the tornado, but try to improve her wing power. This episode is like actual perfection. First off, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy as a duo in this episode work so well. There's this one scene where Rainbow Dash literally adjusts her tone because she realizes she's talking to someone who is very sensitive to that type of stuff. Oh, I just can't risk that sort of humiliation again. Suck it up, Fluttershy! This is no time for... I mean confidence or no confidence yes that is a perfect way to show how much rainbow dash understands fluttershy especially considering their childhood friends like i said before small things can really make a difference in your scenes second off you have fluttershy herself in this episode her development in this episode was perfectly executed when she tries for the first time she doesn't go quite as fast as she wanted to and then we get this scene this scene represents anxiety so perfectly it is insane oh uh -huh, guys get it i said perfect depiction of anxiety attack you have the trembling in her legs her feeling like everyone's watching her and even the heavy breathing as a result it's just so well executed here but then fluttershy tries harder and improves and we even get a nice little rocky s training montage but she doesn't improve instantly which i like because that's realistic you sadly can't improve at something instantly and despite fluttershy feeling like her help wouldn't be a big impact on the project she comes in clutch at the end even uses her past trauma to push her to do better and ends up actually helping everyone lift the water up like this episode is just actual perfection i will be shocked if this doesn't make it into the top 10 of my final ranking just an absolutely flawless fluttershy episode overall i feel like this is a bit of an underrated episode so please check this one out top of the list the cutie mark crusader starts to write stories for the school newspaper under the name gabby gums but all of these stories are just gossip about other ponies as diamond tiara demands those type of stories from them this is definitely a more interesting episode about the cutie mark crusaders trying to find their cutie marks but it's another one of those infamous tropes where they write bad newspaper stories everyone gets upset and then everything goes back to normal like literally all i could think about this whole time was that one spongebob episode where it was this exact plot most of the episode is just the cutie mark crusaders constantly writing gossip stories about everyone in Ponyville and literally ruining their own friendships. This is definitely another weak episode of the season two, and I'll be dropping it just above the super speedy squeezy cider 6000. I'm not gonna get over that name, bro. The main six are on their way to a best dessert contest in Cantal, and someone eats their submission for the contest overnight. So Pinky and Twilight must try and find clues to see who ate the cake. This one is decent for what it is. I like seeing Detective Pinky for the first time. I definitely think she was the highlight here. It definitely is a more simple episode though, so not much really happens throughout. It takes place on the train the whole time, but we do get to see different parts of it, which helps a little bit. It's mainly carried by the comedy and the interesting conclusions Pinky jumps to. Like, she really claimed that she was tied to rare road tracks bro but yeah this one isn't too crazy just a fun little mystery episode not a bad episode it's decent for what it is like i said but i'll be playing it below baby cakes Here it is, the season two finale. And it's a two-parter, unlike the season one finale. So let's see how the season ends, shall we? The main six are all invited to a wedding in Cancelot, where Twilight's brother, Shining Armor, is gonna get married to Celestia's niece, Princess Cadence. So they all travel to Cancelot to attend the wedding and do their special duties for it. For this one being the first part, it was honestly a pretty good first part. I love seeing the hints of Princess Cadence acting a bit off and how manipulative she was. Like, dang man, that ending with everyone disappointed at Twilight was just so sad to watch because all she wanted to do was to protect everyone and then you get the ending reveal of her being evil all along and twilight being right and then bam to be continued right in your freaking face what an awesome first parter can't wait to see what happens next how will twilight get out of this predicament let's find out <laughs> It is revealed that there is an imposter. Ha ha ha. Get it, guys. Get it, get it. Of Princess Cadence, who is tricking everyone. The Twilight and the real Princess Cadence must escape the evil Cadence's cave and save Equestria from the changelings. Basically, evil creatures that impersonate others. I loved how adventurous this one was, and it was really fun to watch. I especially love the scene with the main six fighting the changelings. There's lots of interesting gags that happen here. Meh, I've seen better. 
And also, the songs are really well sung here, both in here and in part one. The best night ever was already an awesome season finale, but this one's even better. It's fun, it's emotional, it's epic. It's truly an amazing way to end off an amazing season. So yeah, this was a really good season finale and just an amazing episode overall. I'll be putting a cancer lot wedding above the best night ever. What a great episode to end off this great season. And that was season two of MLP. What an amazing step up from the already good first season. These episodes were some of the best in the whole series, and even the weaker ones weren't even the weakest of the series. Episodes like Hurricane Fluttershy, The Last Roundup, and It's About Time were super fun, and I could totally see myself watching them tons of times. I think this was the season where they definitely were starting to find their footing, and were able to expand the lore a little bit more than in season one, as that was more of like a season that introduces you to the characters in the world. Overall, just a very solid season, obviously my favorite so far. I wonder if season 3 will be able to maintain this quality. Now, speaking of season 3, before we start season 3, in case you don't know, season 3 actually only has 13 episodes rather than the usual 26. This is probably because they weren't sure if the show would be renewed for more seasons, as by the end of season 3, they had met a certain number of episodes and had to see if it would get renewed, if that makes any sense. But obviously, as we all know, Hasbro renewed the show for a few more seasons. So season 3 will be a little shorter than the first two, but let's see if it's still good regardless. Season 3 kicks off with another two-parter. This time, an empire called the Crystal Empire has suddenly returned after years of being gone thanks to a curse, and so Twilight is given a big test by Celestia. Twilight and her friends must protect the empire before the pony who originally cursed the empire named King Sombra doesn't curse it again. I like how we got a new location in this episode. Good way to freshen up the show a little bit. And so far, this looks like it'll be a good premiere for the season. The songs are pretty good, and the adventure so far is pretty fun. I love seeing the main six try to learn more about the empire. We get tons of good moments from that. Overall, not much to say about this one other than it's a promising start. Oh, oh, that's okay. Um, you all look really busy. Wait, what was she gonna do to them? Twilight and Spike go on a search to find the relic that will truly help protect the Empire, the Crystal Heart. Meanwhile, the others are trying to keep the Crystal Ponies happy at their Crystal Fair in order to keep spirits up to protect the Empire a little bit. I really like both of the little plots we got here. We got the plot with the others trying to keep the fake Crystal Heart a seeker, and we even get Applejack line once again, which, as usual, is pretty funny to watch. And then we got the plot with Twilight and Spike trying to find the Crystal Heart, which is definitely the stronger plot here. King Sombra as a villain was pretty good, and I like the weird illusions where Twilight was basically experiencing her worst fear, which was failing the test. And also, Spike saving the day by being the one to get the Crystal Heart was pretty nice and was definitely a good moment for Spike's character. Once again, another good season premiere. In fact, this is my favorite season premiere so far. Really good adventure. <laughs> Pinkie Pie struggles with trying to have fun with all of her friends at once, so she creates clones of herself to do the fun activities for her. This is another trope which I really like in cartoons. The one where tons of clones are created to the point where even the original gets sick of what is pretty much themselves. This is probably the funniest episode of the show so far. There were so many jokes that for some reason were just really funny to me. And it was also interesting to see Pinky start to get sick of her own self, with all of the clones just constantly wanting fun, fun, fun. With even the real Pinky having like an identity crisis, that was really interesting. The scene with Twilight testing all of the Pinkies also had lots of good gags in it, including the infamous Generation Three reference. Okay, yeah, I cannot deny that is absolutely terrifying. Also, can we talk about how Twilight pretty much committed mass murder in this episode? Like. Look at this. Anyways, this was a very funny and fun pinky episode. I would put it at the top of the season three list. Apple Bloom's cousin named Babseed visits Ponyville, and so the Cutie Mark Crusaders invite him to the group, as he also doesn't have a Cutie Mark quite yet. However, when he sees Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon bully the Cutie Mark Crusaders, he actually joins them in their bullying and becomes a bully towards the Cutie Mark Crusaders. The highlight of this episode was for sure the song, definitely another one of my favorite songs in the show so far. You have no idea how long it took for this song to get out of my head. It was stuck all day. The rest was fine, but I wasn't a fan of how the Cutie Mark Crusaders were portrayed as the bad guys for 
simply doing the only thing they thought they could do in that one situation. And Babsy just turned on them so quickly, like, come on. Anyway, this one is gonna go at the bottom of the season three list. However, it's not really a bad apple in this season. Ha. Twilight is wonderful with magic. Anything happens to them, Twilight, so help me. What is with all these aggressive Fluttershy moments? All of a sudden, Trixie's back. Surprised it took them this long to bring her back, considering the last time she was seen was the sixth episode. Anyway, she is suddenly even better at magic, thanks to her having an alicorn amulet. So she beats Twilight in a magic duel and banishes her from Ponyville, and then proceeds to pretty much take over the place. This one was way better than Ghostbusters for sure. See, this is how you make Trixie unlikable, not her simply doing her job. And all the events that happen throughout are also very interesting to watch. Even Sniffs and Snails who praise her every move start to get sick of her crap. You know she's bad when even her biggest supporters are getting sick of her. The ending with Twilight using the magic of friendship to defeat Trixie was nice, and I liked how they also sort of made up in the end. Makes me wonder if we'll see more of Trixie now. But yeah, this is a way better Trixie episode than the previous. Going above one bad apple. Cutie Mark Crusaders go camping with Applejack, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash, who likes how tough Scootaloo seems. However, when Rainbow Dash tells some scary campfire stories, Scootaloo actually gets really scared, but doesn't want Rainbow Dash to think she's not so tough. So we spend the episode seeing Scootaloo try to hide her fears from everyone. I like this one quite a bit. It's a super relatable story too, as there are definitely people out there who've done this exact thing. They get scared of something that is perceived as silly, but don't want others to know, so they have to try and hide their fears, which proves to be pretty much impossible. And it's also nice to actually have an episode dedicated to just Scootaloo. Usually it's Apple Bloom or Sweetie Belle, but from what I remember, we haven't had a proper Scootaloo episode yet, so it's nice to see them finally give us one. Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo as a duo also worked really well here, and I hope to see more episodes with them soon. Also, I have not brought this up yet, but can we just talk about how good the animation looks when they do this like spin around thing? It's like really smooth, like I'm really impressed with it, considering the show is animated in Flash. But yeah, anyways, good episode once again. Rainbow Dash gets to attend the Wonderbolt Academy, which is a dream come true for her. She meets a pony named Lightning Dust and gets paired up with her to do certain tasks. And after Rainbow Dash gets to know Lightning Dust's behavior, she wonders whether or not she is Wonderbolt material. It was quite nice to see Rainbow Dash feel like what Lightning Dust was doing was too far, as you'd probably expect her to really look up to what she was doing, as it was so radical and extreme. But nah, bro, she caused Rainbow Dash to injure her wing, cut through many people and flung them into clouds, and even almost caused Rainbow Dash's friends to crash. So yeah, her reaction is 100% justified here. She even manages to stand up to Spitfire and changes the expectations of what it means to be a Wonder Bowl, which was a really good moment for her character. I also like the B story of the other five sending Rainbow Dash the care package and Pinky losing it over not getting a letter from Rainbow Dash. Like, Pinky, I don't think mail just magically appears, but you do you. All in all, a solid Rainbow Dash story, and I wonder now that she is a leader of the Wonder Bowls, if they'll do more stuff with this. I'm sure they will at some point. Applejack wants to create the best Apple family reunion yet, and sets up many fun things to do throughout the day without any breaks. However, this leads to disaster and Applejack must find a way to make the day better before it ends. This one was alright for what it was, but once again reminded me of a Spongebob episode. That one being party pooper pants. But yeah, I don't know, it just wasn't as interesting to me as some of the other episodes in this season. I did however like seeing Babs again, I was surprised he came back that quickly. I also liked the ending with Applejack and the others raising the barn and making it a good Apple family reunion after all. The song is not bad at all. Other than that, that's all I gotta say. Bottom of the list for season three. This one wasn't as strong as the others, I feel like. Oh boy, the episode which many consider to be one of the worst of the whole series. So, is it that bad? Is this MLP's worst yet? No, it, it's, it's not even close. Spike gets saved from Timberwolves by Applejack, and so now, according to Spike's dragon code, he must serve her for the rest of her life. I seriously do not get why this one gets so much hate. There is so much worse episodes than this. Like, yeah, Spike was a little out of character, but like, that's it. And it wasn't as bad as Owlswell ends well. He wasn't like a jerk. This one's still a fun watch, and I like the main six is fake Timberwolf they set up. We get some really good gags with that. And it was also ironic how everything they staged ended up actually happening for real. Overall, this episode gets way too much hate, I feel like. Not the best thing out there for sure, but it's nothing bad at all. Middle of the list for season three. This one was enjoyable enough for me. That was very convincing. 
Celestia brings Discord back to Ponyville with her hoping the main six can reform Discord and make him use his magic for good instead of evil. Celestia relies a lot on Fluttershy to be the one who really helps to reform Discord as she's good with animals. This was definitely another really good episode for Fluttershy's character, once again showcasing more of her assertive and gullible side. Discord plays are like a fiddle throughout the whole episode, I feel bad for her just simply trying to make him a better person. Fluttershy at the end was easily the highlight here, with her yelling at Discord and telling him he's not her friend, with that being his point where he actually feels a bit upset. It's nice to see Discord actually manage to get reformed at the end and become a good guy in the main six's books. Can't wait to see what they do with him now, as I hear that he and Fluttershy appear a lot as a duo later on. Solid Fluttershy episode once again. They never disappoint with the Fluttershy episodes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Me too, Fluttershy. Another Spike episode! Sally, this one is weaker than the last. Spike needs some gems for a special cake recipe, and so he convinces the main six to let him take care of their pets while they're away at the Crystal Empire in exchange for some gems so that he can make his cake. Pretty much just 22 minutes of Spike failing to take care of the pets. Oh no, who could have seen that coming? This is another goose chase type one, but unlike Sneaker to My Excess, it just doesn't feel as wacky as that one did. Literally just Spike chasing after Angel Bunny constantly, which doesn't even last too long before the episode ends. And Spike doesn't get like any sort of punishment for this, so that's just great. This one wasn't too great. Going above apple family reunion when will we get another spike episode like seeker of my excess again that was a great one why are all these other ones so much weaker Okay, wow, I was not expecting them to do this. So, remember the last episode? Well, they pretty much incorporate it into this one, except from the main six's perspective. Like, I literally had to check to see if I somehow accidentally clicked on the wrong episode, but no, it turns out they actually incorporated the last into this, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, the main six are back at the Crystal Empire, as the Empire is going to host the Equestria Games, and Princess Cadence wants the main six to welcome the Games Inspector. But, uh-oh, they accidentally welcomed the wrong pony, so now they must try to find the actual games inspector we also have the b story of rarity wanting to help with the fashion aspect of the event with her struggling a little bit this one's actually really fun i like this one a lot in fact i think i literally have a photographic memory of me watching the first pinky no scene at my grandmother's house literally gave me flashbacks but yeah anyways the ways the main six welcome this random pony are really creative and funny so you see this And it was interesting to see how Rarity deals with her dilemma. Pretty good one. Second best of the season so far. No! I mean, yeah! Holy crap. I don't care what anyone says, this is the best finale of the show so far. This had so much in it that I loved. Twilight accidentally casts a spell which switches all of the main six as cutie marks, and so she must try to fix the marks so that her friends are happy again. The songs in this one were great and really carried the episode. It was also interesting to see the main six as if they pretty much swap bodies with each other, with Rarity trying to handle clouds, Fluttershy trying to be fun and funny, Pinkie Pie trying to take care of sweet apple acres, Applejack trying to make dresses, and Rainbow Dash trying to take care of animals. And then after the cutie marks get fixed, we get the infamous scene of Twilight becoming an alicorn. Man, was this a super controversial change back when this episode first aired. But honestly, I didn't mind it at all. It feels like true character development for Twilight, and it truly felt like she deserved it. And this episode just hits a little harder when you think about the fact that this was actually originally going to be the last episode of the whole series, as this is the last episode of season 3. And like I said before, this season had potential to be the final season of the whole show due to the episode count being reached or whatever. What an amazing finale, man. Top of the list for season 3. They really went out of a bang here. Hold on a second. Season 
three is an interesting one. While I do think this one is the weakest season so far, it's still got tons of great episodes in here. I think the main reason this one just didn't do it for me as much as the last two is just how most of the episodes in this season were just simply good, but nothing amazing. But some of the best of season three were awesome and totally make the season a lot better than it would have been. They definitely still had their magic here, but the contents in this one definitely don't make the season as a whole as awesome as one and two. For overall, this is still a good season, nothing bad at all. We're now moving on to season four, which many consider the best season of the whole series. And after being met with amazing results with season two, I'm looking forward to seeing how season four is. And this is a new era for the show, as this marks the first season of the show after being renewed. So with Twilight being an Alicorn princess now, what will the show be like? Well, let's find out. Looks like season four starts off with another two-parter. And the intro has changed once again with way more noticeable changes this time, such as Twilight's wings, a new group photo, Princess Luna along Celestia, and even Discord in the very back of Fluttershy's bar, which I find pretty funny. Like, what is bro doing there? But yeah, anyways, with Twilight now being a princess, she has lots of more royal responsibilities to take care of. And we get to see just how she deals with all these sudden responsibilities on her back. Trouble strikes when Celestia and Luna suddenly disappear, and the Everfree Forest starts to invade Ponyville. So it's up to the main six to figure out what on earth is going on and save Equestria before the Summer Sun celebration. This looks like it will be another awesome adventure to kick off the season. Possibly even better than the last season premiere. We get to see Twilight try to deal with being a princess, which portrayed really well here as obviously it's hard to adapt to a big role like this and they really show twilight struggles here such as her having troubles with flying and not knowing exactly what to do in certain situations we also get the others trying to deal with the invasion of the everfree forest while twilight is at cancer lock preparing for the summer sun celebration with all the others obviously being very scared and confused these two stories really make this an interesting first part to this premiere and i cannot wait to see what happens next this premiere looks like it'll once again be a very promising one Rut, Pinkie Pie, creamy, creamy frosting. <laughs> you should take that as a yes. Thanks to some potions by Zakor, Twilight finds out that what is happening is that the Tree of Harmony is in danger, which is why all the invasion stuff is happening. So it's up to the main six to try and save the Tree of Harmony before it's too late. I think this is definitely my new favorite season premiere. There is so much content both in this and part one that is super enjoyable. We even get Discord's return and he definitely makes for some good jokes. I do hope she breaks into a song this time. And that one part when the others feel it's best for Twilight to go back to Ponyville to do her princess duties was pretty sad. I really felt bad for Twilight here. But overall, it's just super fun and definitely did a good job showing how the show will be with Twilight as a princess now. She may be a bit occupied with princess duties, but that'll never break their friendship they have. They even say that near the end of the episode. They also find this mysterious chest at the end, which is very interesting. I wonder if it'll be open anytime soon. And we even get to see some events that have happened in the past, such as Discord first being frozen into stone, and even the first time Princess Luna was banished. But yeah, once again, it's looking like this season will be starting off well, which is good to see. Definitely the best season premiere so far. The main six visit an abandoned castle which Celestia and Luna used to own. However, the ponies are all split up into little duos and we get to see each of their own adventures inside the castle, with them believing the castle is haunted due to an old myth about a quote-unquote shadow pony being in the castle. Meanwhile, Twilight is the only one who isn't scared at all and is just reading books. This one is another one that is more of a simple story but still works because of how interesting the scenarios here are and how funny it is. Rarity is trying to find tapestries with Fluttershy who is also trying to find Angel and Rainbow Dash and Applejack are trying to see who can stay in the castle the longest to find out who the bravest pony is. It's a really funny episode, and it's interesting how these stories eventually do collide with each other. The twist at the end with Pinky being the shadow pony was expected, but was still funny, with her just casually playing the organ and not being scared, like, at all. Just a super fun episode overall. Going below the last, but still pretty good. Oh yeah! I only had to ring it for like five minutes! They said that was good enough! <laughs> Can't imagine why! <laughs> Thank you.
It's super cool to see the Daring Do stuff revisited. Rainbow Dash finds out that the newest Daring Do book's release date was delayed, and so they visit the author's house to try and help them finish the book. However, hijinks ensue once it is revealed that the author, AK Yearling, is actually Daring Do herself. So the game must help Daring Do complete her mission. This is once again another really fun one. Like I said, it's super cool that they revisited the Daring Do stuff and actually built upon it in a cool way. The twist with the author actually being Daring Do herself and her actually being a real character was super cool and definitely makes the lore a bit more interesting. Also, I love how the name AK Yearling is clearly just a play on the famous author JK Rowling. That was a funny little touch. It was also super fun to watch the gang help out Daring Do, and I like the ending with Daring Do's book featuring Rainbow Dash, as she was a huge help in her adventure. All in all, another great episode. Go at the top of the season four list. You might say the secret ingredient is a secret. <laughs> The Cutie Mark Crusaders want to be the ones to carry the Ponyville flag at the Equestria Games, so they try their hardest to make a routine that Coach Rainbow Dash will enjoy. However, Diamond Tiara makes Scootaloo feel bad about her inability to fly to try and sabotage the competition, and so Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle must figure out how to lift Scootaloo's spirit so that they can do the routine they enjoyed. One thing I seem to notice about all of these Season 4 episodes so far is that the visuals I think have improved a little bit. Like, during the sun, you have these, like, little glares on the Cutie Mark Crusaders, which I I don't recall seeing much in the past three seasons. They also blur the background sometimes, which I don't recall seeing much either. Just a cool little thing I noticed. Talking about the episode now, it's good for what it is. It was interesting to see more of Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo interact, as like I said in Sleepless and Ponyville, they are a unique duo to watch and work really well together. And the song wasn't bad either. The Kuma Crusaders can really sing wow. Good episode for what it is, but it's gonna go at the bottom of the list, as I believe they're just stronger episodes than this one. The main six and Spike get sucked into a comic book and gain superpowers. And they find out that the only way to escape the comic book is to defeat the maniac. This one is so creative. This is easily my new favorite of the season so far. Superhero stories are always really fun, and this one for sure is no exception. I love seeing all their superpowers they got. Pinky having super speed, Fluttershy being able to go Hulk mode, Rainbow Dash having weather powers, Rarity being able to make anything with a bracelet, Applejack having a lasso which is connected to her, Twilight being able to shoot power beams and Spike just being the little sidekick. I also loved all their super outfits they got. They look really good and truly capture the comic book spirit. And we also get to see a common theme throughout this episode, which was that Spike always felt left out in terms of helping people as they usually wouldn't need his help. However, we get to see that by the end, they do need his help sometimes, even if not all the time, which is like executed super well in this episode for sure. With Spike being the one to save the power ponies and saving the day. I also for sure gotta mention Fluttershy losing her crap once once again, this was for sure one of the funniest instances of it, and I'm glad they actually did show her using that power rather than just teasing it and, like, never showing it. What makes you think you are so special? Like the rules of common courtesy don't apply to you? Why don't you pick up supporting your own side? <laughs> All in all, an amazing and fun episode. Top of the list for season four for sure. And my second favorite episode of the whole show so far. Okay, what on earth is happening? This is another amazing episode. Vampire fruit bats start to ruin sweet apple acres, and so Applejack wants to get rid of them. However, with Fluttershy's caring character, she feels like there are better and nicer solutions to this, and even suggests an idea that would benefit both them and the bats. They eventually come up with a compromise, with Twilight casting a spell which would stop the bats from eating the apples, while Fluttershy does the stare on the bats. Little does Twilight know, though, that the spell accidentally changed Fluttershy into a vampire fruit bat, and so the others must try to change her back with Twilight's reverse spell. This one is just super fun like the last. The saw is another one of my favorites. I love the visuals here too, with Applejack having more of a dark tone, but Fluttershy having more of a bright tone. And it's always nice to see them bring back Fluttershy's stare. I'm glad that this tray of hers wasn't just like a one-time thing that they forgot about. Also, Flutterbat's design honestly looks really cool, and it was funny to see Fluttershy slowly start to crave apples. Not sure about the rest of you guys, but I'm really hungry. It 
It was also interesting to see Fluttershy's idea at the beginning come into play by the end and proved to have worked well. But yeah, once again, solid episode going below the last. Season four is off to a strong start. Oh my God. I got it. Something <laughs> Rarity and the others travel to Manhattan, obviously a parody of Manhattan, New York, so that Rarity can participate in a fashion show. However, her designs get stolen, and so she must create new designs to compete against her old designs, which were stolen. I really like the visuals for Manhattan. Really interesting to see an MLP version of New York. And this one also has another song. Lots of songs so far. But it's another good one, as usual. And each of the ponies get singing roles, which is always nice. I also liked how not only we get to see Rarity's story, but also how the others spend their time at Manhattan. It was fun to see them just enjoying a nice little trip i like this episode it was very fun and it had a new setting which always helps going above daring don't okay now this one is very interesting so pinkie pie finds out that she could possibly be related to applejack i bet this blew everyone's minds back when this aired. and so the apple family go on a road trip to find a book with their family history in order to solve this mystery not much really happens here it's just a simple little road trip with applejack trying to make the family look good for pinky with pinky just enjoying the trip the whole time but for what it is it's good i like the running gag of pinky constantly taking photos in the most random situations like she must have the most stable hooves ever to get good pictures going down a freaking waterfall but hey it's pinky you can't really question her can you remember this is the same pony that can keep up with freaking rainbow dash and i like the ending with the mystery never really being able to get 100 solved but the apple's considering pinky a cousin regardless overall an interesting episode which is nothing amazing but still can be a little fun Holy crap, okay, this one I 100% remember watching. Although, rather than being at my grandmother's house like usual, it was a YouTube clip of Rainbow Dash faking her injury on an old iMac in our office. I remember the most random things, I know. Anyways, Rainbow Dash is trying to qualify for the Equestria Games by helping the Ponyville Relay team win at tryouts. However, when she gets an exciting offer to fly for the Cloudsdale team instead, she must choose between Cloudsdale and Ponyville. This one for sure felt like a good episode for Rainbow Dash. Her realization that Ponyville was the right choice to make was well developed, and the scene with her talking to the other pony in the hospital was really good. Not only that, but we get plenty of funny scenes with Fluttershy and Bulk Biceps trying to train for tryouts. I'm ready to take the horseshoe, if you want me to. Also, during this episode, my smoke detector was running out of batteries, so like twice throughout this episode, I had to pause it because it kept going off, and it scared the bejeebers out of me. Anyways, good Rainbow Dash episode. I'll be putting Rainbow Falls below bats. I just couldn't wait to tell some pony. I love when the ponies do this silly little bounce thing. I don't know what to call it, but it's great. Anyways, with Fluttershy off to see some breezies, Twilight and Cadence hang out and hope to be able to have a good day together without any chaos. But uh-oh, speaking of chaos, Discord isn't feeling too well. So since Fluttershy is gone, Applejack and Rarity are sick too, and Pinky is chasing after a balloon, Discord wants Twilight and Cadence to take care of him, ruining their day together. This is another episode where Discord has the funniest bits. I think the decision to make him a recurring character rather than just having him appear once and then never again was a good decision, because Discord definitely adds a bit more more well chaos considering that's what he's all about to the show and it spices things up a bit discord saw in this episode was unironically not even that bad but i did find it quite funny just another fun little adventure episode oh it's no coincidence my little pony not even gonna say it this time. Weird Al Yankovic guest stars as cheese sandwich in this episode. Yup, you heard that correctly. Pinky is super excited to be the one to plan Rainbow Dash's birth anniversary party when suddenly a new pony named Cheese Sandwich arrives and wows everyone with his party planning skills. This leaves Pinky feeling unappreciated and wanting to reclaim her title as the ultimate party planner. This is a really good Pinky episode. I'm glad that Weird Al wasn't used in a weak episode. This one's more of a musical episode, which definitely works considering 
Weird Al is a musical artist. But the songs on this one are just really good and definitely are some of the show's best. And I truly think this was a really good episode for Pinky overall, having her realize she shouldn't let her pride get in the way. Just a solid episode overall. Going above Daring Don't. I heard Cheese Sandwich comes back more later on, so I cannot wait to see what they do with this duo later on. Parties are no picnic. Oh, I like a nice picnic party. Oh. <laughs> Rarity selected to be the Pony of Ceremonies for the Ponyville Days Festival and wants to impress her crush Tenderhoof with her ideals for the festival. However, she finds out that Tenderhoof is more to Applejack, and so Rarity tries to act like Applejack to win him over. This one is fine, but probably the weakest of the season so far. Basically just a montage of Rarity trying to impress him, failing, repeat. It definitely gets better in the second half where Rarity decides to change the whole theme of the festival and Applejack tries to snap her out of it. But overall, it's just whatever. It does have a good lesson going for it, being that you shouldn't act like someone else and just be yourself. And there are some funny jokes throughout. It's just that this episode wasn't as strong as some of the others in the show so far. Bottom of the list. Sorry if you're a fan of this one, but wasn't that all into it. Oh boy, another episode which is widely considered to be a bad one. Will this end the streak of good Fluttershy episodes? Do we have a bad Fluttershy episode? Well, I'll let Big Mac answer that question for me. No. Nope. Rarity suggests that Fluttershy joins a singing group called the Ponytones as she loves her singing voice and believes she could be a good fit for the group. But Fluttershy is too scared to perform on stage so she declines the offer. However, when Big Mac loses his voice due to her turkey call competition, Rarity needs a singer to replace Big Mac for the show. When visiting Zakor, Rarity gets the idea to bring back Flutter Guy and have Fluttershy sing backstage while Big Mac is simply moving his mouth to give the illusion that he's singing. She has a blast with this with her being able to express her talents but not having all eyes on her. It's the perfect combo until she accidentally reveals herself and gets ultimate stage fright and so the others try to convince her that singing on stage isn't as much of a nightmare as she thought it was like spike at your service i seriously do not understand the hate for this episode the main criticism i see for is how pinky acts in it and while yeah i can understand why people may not like that aspect does that really ruin the entire episode like it doesn't even last that long either those moments happen like twice for like 30 seconds in the entire 22 minutes I didn't see it that big of a deal. Anyways, I had a ton of fun with this one. We even get another absolutely terrifying Fluttershy anxiety attack scene. Seriously, they try to make these as terrifying as possible. And it's really nice to see Fluttershy just having a good time singing. The song is really good. I have this in my head a lot. And this episode is just a really good representation of stage fright in general. Pretty accurate. Overall, a really overrated episode for sure. One of my favorites of the season so far, in fact. The Cutie Mark Crusaders revealed a diamond tiara and silver spoon that they have strong connections with Twilight, and so they get super famous off of that fact. However, Twilight suggested that their time together should be more private, so the Cutie Mark Crusaders must deal trying to keep the mob away. For what it was, this one was really bad, but one of the weakest of the season. I will admit, it was interesting to see diamond tiara and silver spoon treat the Cutie Mark Crusaders somewhat nicely for a change, but other than that, it's just fine. Going above simple ways. Oh my god, she said the V! The Breezies are coming to Ponyville, and Fluttershy makes sure they get to their home safely, but a mishap occurs during their travels through the Breeze, and some Breezies get left behind, leaving Fluttershy to take care of them a bit before getting them back on the Breeze again. This one felt a bit similar to A Bird in the Hoof, but this one was a bit more interesting than that episode for sure. The Breezies are really unique creatures, and I'm glad they got an episode, as they have been mentioned in the past but never actually seen. Not only that, but we even get more assertive Fluttershy in here. Excuse me! I've done nothing but be kind, but I guess that is not working. You bees know better than to hurt a helpless breezy. I demand that you go away now, or you'll have to answer to me. And also, that part where the main six turned to Breezy's was very cool, and I like the design of the Breezy's world. The visuals here were really good. Just yet again, another good Fluttershy episode. I'll be putting It Ain't Easy Being Breezy's above three's a crowd. 
Apple Tech and the others finally trust Apple Bloom to stay home alone for the first time while they make a dangerous pie delivery. But when Apple Tech causes Apple Bloom to fall when checking on her, she believes she isn't quite ready yet and starts to become super overprotective of her. This leads to Apple Bloom wanting to finish the dangerous delivery herself to prove to Apple Jack that she can take care of herself. This was just odd, man. The first half is easily the worst part, which is just being Apple Jack being super overprotective for the most ridiculous reasons ever and not taking her sister seriously. It's just frustrating to watch. In fact, at first, when Apple Jack was about to check on Apple Bloom for the first time, I literally thought this episode was going to become Squid's Day Off. Oh my god, that's the third SpongeBob reference I made in this video. But yeah, I thought it'd be like a thing where Apple Jack keeps overthinking about potential danger Apple Bloom could be in, and so keeps pausing while making the delivery to check in on her. I think that would have made for a way better episode than what we got, with Apple Bloom always being just fine and Apple Jack going to just trust her sister for once. The second half when Apple Bloom tries to make the delivery is for sure the better part, but this episode overall was just a bit frustrating to watch. The visuals were cool in the weird fire forest Apple Bloom was in, but uh, yeah, this one's going at the bottom of the list for season four. I wasn't really a fan of this one. Thankfully, this episode is way better than the last. Pinkie Pie's sister, Maude, is coming to Ponyville for the week, and so Pinkie hopes Maude and the others can become friends. However, the others have troubles trying to bond with Maude, as she is drastically different from all of them, and so they must deal with this dilemma and try not to upset Pinkie in the process. Maude is a really good character, definitely another one of my favorites in the show. Her monotone voice along with her emotionless expressions really make her a funny, interesting character, especially when comparing her to Pinkie, who is like the complete opposite. And the story itself is good too with the others obviously not clashing with Maude's personality very well, which disappoints Pinky as she wanted to make rock candy friendship necklaces, which was a tradition she and Maude always did. All in all, just a great Pinky episode that explores more of the Pi family's history while also just having a good story. Going above Rainbow Falls, hope to see more Maude soon. Sweetie Belle gets upset about Rarity seemingly always stealing the spotlight, and so she sabotages one of her dresses. But when she is dreaming, Princess Luna shows Sweetie Belle the truth behind Rarity's behavior, and even shows her what Rarity's future will be like if she doesn't fix the dress. I actually really like this one. It kind of reminded me of A Christmas Carol, where Scrooge has dreams about seeing the past and what the future will be like if he doesn't become nicer towards others, with him fixing his attitude because of this. We even get a fun little adventure towards the end, with the Kirimar Crusaders trying to fix the dress before Rarity shows it off at Sapphire. Fire Shores. It's definitely weaker in the first half when it's just about Sweetie Belle being upset about Rarity's dresses being the main reason everyone liked the play. But everything after that is great, and this episode will be going above it ain't easy being breezies. Oh god, not again. The Flim Flam brothers are back and are selling a special tonic that can supposedly cure any pony's ailments. And when Granny Smith tries some, she can actually swim efficiently. But Applejack doesn't quite buy it, so she tries to figure out what's really going on. This one wasn't too bad, but it didn't feel too eventful. Granny Smith drinks it, gets carried away, Flim Flam brothers get exposed, the end. Not much really happens here. Although Applejack's dilemma was a little interesting to watch and Granny Smith was pretty funny as usual. Other than that, not much to say. Going above some pony to watch over me. Rainbow Dash has a test on the history of the Wonderbolts coming up, but doesn't quite seem to have the knowledge. So the others come up with many interesting ways of trying to help Rainbow Dash pass the test. I like how it starts out with just Twilight trying to help her, but then it naturally evolves into the others chiming in and showing their ways of how to study. Pinky's running gag about rapping was easily the funniest part of this whole episode. Top 10 rappers Eminem was too afraid to diss. And I like the ending, with Rainbow Dash's own method of learning being the one that helps her well because she did it her way. What a great one. Good story, good job jokes and a good lesson testing testing one two three is gonna go below bats not quite as good as the top two episodes of the season but it did come pretty close It's the Rainbow Falls Traders Exchange, and the main six visit to trade some of their things they don't feel they need anymore. We actually get to see three stories at once here, with Twilight and Pinky trying to get old books sold, Rarity and Applejack having a dispute on what to get, and the main story, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy trying to get a signed copy of a Daring Do book. They balance out these stories really well and give each of them plenty of time to shine. There are even some scenes where you can actually see other stories playing out in the background, like this scene when Applejack and Rarity are arguing and you can see Fluttershy just flying over them. For such a simple story, it was really entertaining, and the Rainbow Dash story was really funny with how many items she had to get just for the book. And the ending with Rainbow Dash giving up the book so that she didn't have to lose Fluttershy was nice. Another good episode. 
After Rarity's puppet theater gets called Awful, Spike helps her out and finds a spell which helps her creative ideas come to life. And so Rarity starts to abuse this newfound power to ruin Ponyville with all her ideas. Spike is too afraid to call her out on this, however, and so he has to stand back and just watch. This is actually a very interesting idea, putting Spike in a situation where he knows Rarity is in the wrong, but is too afraid to tell her as he doesn't want to lose her as a friend. Because as we all know, Spike really appreciates Rarity. This one was decent for what it was, but there are definitely stronger episodes in this season. Not bad though, below it ain't easy being breezies. It's finally here, the Equestria Games. And since Spike was the one who saved the Crystal Empire, they want him to be the one to light the torch for the games. However, Spike gets too nervous, which causes him to not be able to light the torch. And so Spike feels super embarrassed about this and tries to redeem himself. I'm glad that despite this being a Spike episode, we actually did get to see some of the games themselves, as it would have kind of sucked if, like, we weren't shown it. Especially since this whole event was teased back at the end of Season 3. But the Spike stuff isn't bad either. They seem to do a really good job of these stage fright episodes. Also, fun fact, did you know that an animator had struggles with animating the scene with Spike looking around the stadium? Yeah, apparently the file kept crashing as there were too many ponies at once. What a hassle that must have been. Anyways, this is a decent Spike episode, and it's nice to have another good one after all the other weak Spike episodes. Now, on to the season finale, which I hear is very good. <laughs> Twilight doesn't feel that her role as princess is as important as the others, and so she is a bit disappointed when she isn't chosen to be the one to stop a new threat, T-Rex, who managed to escape from the pits of Tartarus. Geometry Dash Reference Re In fact, Celestia chooses Discord to help stop him. So while Discord tries to stop T-Rex, Twilight and the others try to figure out how to open the chest they found back in the season premiere. Already a very good start. The songs are good as usual, and there's lots of buildup in this one. Discord ends up teaming up with T-Rex by the end, Twilight and the others figure out how to get the keys to open the chest, and Twilight is about to get all the others' magic. And speaking of the chest, I love seeing all the past episodes truly come together for the others to manage to get their keys to help open the chest. Overall, this first part honestly has me really excited for the next part and i have a feeling this could dethrone magical mystery cure as the new best season finale but we'll see Okay, I'll just say it right now. Yeah, this is the new best season finale by far. So much happens in this part. It is insane. So with Twilight now having the other's magic, she must try to hide it from her friends so that they can stay out of potential danger. With Discord and T-Rex now helping to steal magic from every pony in Equestria. If you thought part one was already awesome, man, you are going to love part two. Easily the best part was the Dragon Ball Z-esque fight between Twilight and T-Rex. For a kid's show, this was an intense fight. It was just awesome to watch unfold. I just wanted to keep going and going and going. Like, Twilight literally gets smashed through a mountain like... What? And seeing Twilight just unleash her rage on him was so satisfying to watch, using her magic to the absolute extreme. I just love these types of fights where you can tell the other character is just mad. Fights where they are just straight up out for blood. Like, Twilight was not having it here. But yeah, anyways, everything other than that was great as well. The main six opening the chest and that ending up being the way to defeat T-Rex was awesome. I love their designs here. I loved how this chest that was teased all the way back at the very start of the season was how they managed to defeat T-Rex. Really made the season feel like one big story. Although I am for sure gonna miss the library Twilight lived in. The castle friendship is cool and all and I love the colors they used for it but man that library is just so cozy and simple it seemed like the perfect setting for her and Spike. But oh well not that big of a deal to me. Overall a fantastic finale to a fantastic season. I definitely agree with the mass majority that say this is one of the best seasons of the show. Literally so many of the top episodes on the list right now are all from season 4. So many episodes in here managed to stand out to me way more than the already great season 2. With episodes such as Power Ponies, Twilight's Kingdom, and Bats being such memorable ones to me that I had so much fun watching. Despite them having to change a lot with Twilight becoming a princess, they managed to make it work and give us a great time. They managed to make a season that was even better than the previous ones that could have been the only ones in the show runtime if the show didn't get as popular as it got. By far my new favorite season of the show so far. However, the next season is also praised a lot by many, so who knows? Maybe this next season will dethrone it. This next season also marks the beginning of what many call the Discovery Family Era, as season 4 was the last season before The Hub, which was the network the show aired on, was renamed to Discovery Family by the end of 2014. I personally grew up with the show during The Hub era, so almost all of the episodes beyond that era I have not seen, so this will be very very interesting to me. With all that being said, 
onwards to season five. The main six are called over to a random village in the middle of nowhere, where it seems that every pony is super happy and friendly to each other. But the others are a bit suspicious, especially Pinky, who claims the smiles they give each other are fake. So they must figure out what is going on in this town and why they were called over to it in the first place. What a great start to a premiere. Probably the best first part of a premiere we've had so far, actually. There's lots of fun to be had in this one, mainly thanks to Pinky. Her angry looks as they walk through the town are just way too good, and I love the facial expressions they give her here. We don't complicate when you learn to and the town in general is super weird because you can tell something's up at first and then you find out this pony named Starlight Glimmer has forced these ponies to act the same like it's kind of creepy. He's like something out of a freaking sci-fi movie. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what part two is like. With Starlight stealing all of the main six's cutie marks, what's gonna happen? Will they get them back? Let's see what happens. The ponies are locked inside this weird little tiny house where Starlight's goal is to have them act the same now that their cutie marks are gone. However, the others form a plan where Fluttershy acts like she'll become friends with Starlight so that she can sneakily get the cutie marks back. And Fluttershy eventually actually discovers that Starlight actually had her cutie mark all along while no one else did. So Fluttershy exposes Starlight and tries to not only help her friends get their cutie marks back, but the rest of the town too. This premiere was great, definitely my new favorite so far. I will admit it was kind of close, but with the unique setting, fun adventure, and good jokes, I gotta admit this one definitely beats Princess Twilight Sparkle. Fluttershy successfully exposing Starlight was super satisfying, and I gotta admit, she is stealthy. Like, does she have Spider-Man reflexes or something? Anyway, this was a really fun premiere, and I hope they keep progressively getting better like this. Except for you. <gasps> is that the Five Nights at Freddy? Twilight reveals that she doesn't quite feel comfortable in the castle. So while Twilight is out at the spa, the others try their best to make the castle more fit for her. But troubles arise when their methods don't quite make the castle look better, and so they must figure out how to make the castle look better before Twilight gets home while Spike distracts her. This is another great one. It was fun to see them bond together to try to make the castle look better for Twilight, and it was also really funny to see them try their hardest to fix the mess they made. I don't know if it's just me, but the humor has actually kind of improved a little bit in my opinion. Which is interesting, because I always hear others say they preferred the more chaotic humor in the first few seasons. To be fair, this is literally like the third episode of the season, but I don't know. Three in a row of good humor seems to be a good sign. Anyways, another thing I liked about this episode was them referencing the past. Honestly, it gives me quite a bit of nostalgia hearing them talk about stuff from the first few seasons, even if as I'm writing the script for this episode, I literally watched those seasons like a month ago. But yeah, I really like that aspect a lot. They even have like a whole strain of memories that they include in the castle at the very end, which was sweet. Overall, a really good episode with a solid message, being that while old memories are nice to remember, you can always make new ones, which is certainly a message that I think a lot should remember. Best episode of the season so far. Then Twilight will be stuck living in a castle that just makes her feel sad. Sad, sad, sad. Wow, Fluttershy! I didn't know you could be loud enough to echo! Appleboom actually starts to gain concerns about her cutie mark and starts to wonder if she even wants one anymore, with her worrying about things such as her not being satisfied with her talent, her losing Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle as friends, and even being kicked out of the Apple family just because your cutie mark wasn't related to apples. And so due to all these thoughts, she actually has nightmares where she experiences all of these worries and must try to escape the endless nightmares. Kinda like for whom the Sweetie Belle toils, this episode has Princess Luna appear in these dreams to help solve the problem. However, I think this one was just slightly better. Seeing how Apple Bloom imagines her anxieties was so interesting, and the concept of endless nightmares is really unique to me. I was kinda getting Groundhog Day vibes with this one, with Apple Bloom basically reliving the same day over and over and over again, except obviously different things happen. But like, she wakes up to Applejack calling for breakfast the same way, Applejack letting Apple Bloom know sleep's help for problems, and Applejack pointing out that she has a cutie mark. Literally Groundhog Day, bro. Another very unique one. Going at the bottom of the list, but that's just because there have been stronger episodes in this one. Still very good, though. 
Okay, now this one might get a little depressing. Rainbow Dash is super excited to have fun with Tank during the winter, but little does she know that Tank actually needs to hibernate for the winter. And so Rainbow Dash tries to stop winter from coming so that her and Tank can have some fun. What I really like about this one is that while this is simply about hibernation, it's for sure an allegory for loss, with Rainbow Dash going through all the stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. It was represented super well here, and it's nice to see Rainbow Dash act a bit more soft here rather than her energetic personality we all know and love. And that scene with the others crying around Rainbow Dash was both sad and funny at the same time. What? Me? What about Applejack? Applejack cries on the inside, Twilight! It's true. This is for sure one of the best Rainbow Dash episodes of the series so far. It was cute, emotional, funny, and does a good job at teaching kids about loss while not actually having Tank die. Tanks for the Memories is gonna go below Castle Sweet Castle. Very sweet one. Going from sweet to wild, we have the Cutie Mark Crusaders learn about a wanted pony named Troubleshoes, who apparently has terrorized rodeos for years. So they set out to find him and learn about what he's really like, with him never wanting to ruin the rodeos, but always doing it by accident and just wanting to enjoy them. So the Cutie Mark Crusaders feel bad for him and try to help him get back on his hooves and let him back into Appaloosa. This one was fine for what it was, but it just didn't feel super entertaining. It was interesting to get a new character, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders trying to help him out was nice, but I didn't really feel this one had as much substance as the others. Bottom of the list for season 5. Not an awful one, but didn't really have me super interested the whole time. Just not much to say about it. Discord learns that Fluttershy is taking a friend to the Grand Galloping Gala named Tree Hugger and feels super jealous. So he takes his own little friend to try and make Fluttershy jealous, but this obviously backfires as he doesn't get the concept of having multiple friends yet. Okay, did I type this part on my phone or something? It says mutt joke friends yet. What, what happened here? Anyways, another pretty funny Discord episode. It is hard to watch him embarrass himself, but nothing bad at all. That's pretty much the point. It's kind of funny seeing him fail at trying to ruin Fluttershy's friendship with Tree Hugger, as they're just being really nice to him, even when he's not. And Tree Hugger really reminds me of Mod, so she's definitely another character I wouldn't mind seeing more of in the future. And speaking of Mod, she actually appears in this one too. This is the most basic of jokes. You're the most basic of jokes. <laughs> Overall, good one. One of my favorite Discord episodes so far. <laughs> Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are called by the map to Griffon Stone to try and resolve a problem going on over there. However, much like the cutie map, they have no idea what the problem is. So Pinkie tries to make the kingdom a better place, and Rainbow Dash tries to retrieve a lost idol that was super important to the kingdom. I really like this one. Gilda actually returns after four seasons, which is crazy to think about. Like, you thought Trixie was gone for too long? Nah, look how long Gilda was gone for. Anyways, my favorite aspect of this one isn't even the adventure itself. Yeah, it's fun, but my favorite aspect of it is Gilda actually becoming a nicer person and befriending Rainbow Dash again and Pinky. Gilda giving up the idol just to save these two was for sure a highlight for her character and earned lots of respect for me. She may have been like really cruel before, but now that she appreciates everyone a lot more, I hope to see her again in a future episode. New best episode of season 5 so far, this was a really good one. Okay, so this is a really interesting one. So this is actually the 100th episode of the series. Yeah, it's crazy that we're already here. So I guess to celebrate, they decided to make an episode dedicated to background characters as like some little fan service. So the main six are too busy battling a bugbear. So the rest of Ponyville try to set up a Wendy for Cranky and Matilda without them. The reason why this one is so interesting is like I said, it's all about the background characters and they really get a chance to shine here. Even Derpy has a prominent role here, which was nice. And occasionally you you'll see the main six in the background fighting the bugbear in case you're curious about how they were doing. And it was also nice to see Cranky and Matilda again. Lots of old characters returning, wow. But yeah, this is an episode that tries something new and I think it accomplished it well. It's gonna be near the bottom of the season five list, but that's just because the episodes in the season so far have been really good. <laughs> Hooray, another week spike episode. So excited. And it's another one where he's unlikable. Best of both worlds. Princess Cadence requests Spike to help keep Twilight asleep so that she can be fully awake for the Grand Equestria Pony Summit. However, Spike warns that he can make decisions under Twilight's name and starts to abuse his power. Once again, Spike is just extremely unlikable here. Him making these decisions under Twilight's name was just 
unpleasant. I really felt bad for Twilight, who obviously did nothing wrong, like, at all. Like, why couldn't he have just said at the very start that Twilight was asleep at the moment instead of making a decision under her name? This one just frustrated me a little bit. Bottom of the list for season five. I like Spike as a character, but man, his episodes don't seem to sit too well with me. Give my boy some better episodes. <laughs> Party Pooped is a way better episode. Some yaks from Yak Yakistan come to Ponyville, but the town doesn't quite live up to their standards. So the others rely on Pinkie Pie to create the perfect friendship party that the yaks will enjoy. Pinkie feels super nervous and under pressure about this, but has a genius idea and decides to go to Yak Yakistan to help give her ideas for her party. This one's mainly just super fun and funny. Pinkie's overdramatic narration was a good running gag and it never really ran its course. And then they give me a ride to Manhattan. I joined a traveling band and we played some shows here and there. Got popular. Popular, almost made it big until creative differences tore us apart. Friendly reminder that Pinky being in the Beatles is canon. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but I think the facial expressions gained a slight bit more exaggerated. Not that that's a bad thing at all, though. I think it actually makes some scenes just a tad bit funnier. I know some people have a problem with exaggerated expressions in shows like SpongeBob, which is usually the main thing people argue about when saying whether modern SpongeBob is good or not. But I think they found a good balance here. With the faces being exaggerated, but not like in your face or over you. Used. But yeah, this is my new favorite episode of the season. Very good pinky episode. Twilight remembers how bad of a friend she was back in Cancerlot, and so heads back to make amends with her old friends, with making amends with her old friend Moon Dancer proving to be a difficult task. This was a super unique one. We never really got to learn much about Twilight's life in Cancerlot before she moved to Ponyville, so it was cool to see how she was before moving there, with her not really caring about friendship and just wanting to read her books. And Moon Dancer acting just like old Twilight was a really good touch, as Twilight was basically being put in old Moon Dancer shoes. That scene with Moon Dancer lashing out at Twilight was really well done. I applaud Moon Dancer's voice actor. She did an amazing job here. Just a really unique episode overall, and I hope to see more like this in the future. Above Bloom and Gloom. A magical force called the Tantabus is changing every dream into a nightmare, and so Princess Luna has the main six try to track it down before the nightmares become reality. The Princess Luna dream episodes are always interesting, but man was this one cool. In the other ones, we usually get to see one pony's dream, but we get to see several in this one. And the mega dream near the end was just filled with the most wacky things ever, and I loved it. Such as Giant Derpy, Alicorn Big Mac, and even a brief return of Flutterbat. I also just enjoyed seeing all the main six's different dreams near the beginning with Rainbow Dashes by far being the scariest. Watch me so low on jazz flute. And the ending with Twilight convincing Luna that everyone forgives her for her past was really well executed in my opinion, and was a good moment for her character. Just another super fun one overall. I hope these Princess Luna episodes continue to be as enjoyable as they have been. <laughs> Pinkie Pie excitedly delivers Rarity a letter, which says that there is a spot in Cantola available for Rarity to open her own boutique, which she has been waiting for for ages. However, her manager, Sassy Saddle, starts to ruin the boutique for Rarity, and so she must deal with the way Sassy is handling things. I could honestly see many relating to this one, with you being super excited to start your own business, but things don't quite turn out the way you hoped they'd be, and so it feels more like a chore than a hobby. Other than that, though, this one just felt a bit average to me. Nothing bad, but nothing super crazy. I I do like the rules of Rarity song though, and I'm glad Rarity and Sassy made up by the end. Not much to say other than, not bad. Gonna go below Bloom and Gloom though. <laughs> Two rarity episodes in a row, all right. And we even start out in the boutique with Sassy Saddles. Rainbow Dash is accused of faking a letter from Spitfire's mother, which claimed that she was sick. And so Rarity must investigate this mystery and try to defend her. The best part of this one was for sure how creative it was with the classic black and white filter that these detective stories tend to have. However, this one also just felt a bit average to me. The jokes were pretty good and it was cool to get some more lore about the Wonderbolts. But other than that, just another all right one. Gonna go above the last though. Rarity and Applejack, not Twilight, are called by the map back to Manhattan, where they must help a pony named Coco with bringing back a classic tradition, the Midsummer Theater Revival. And so Rarity and Applejack try their hardest to make the Midsummer Theater Revival the best it can be, but they find themselves overworking themselves quite a ton, and so they instead just try to do what they can, and it ends up working out well. I actually quite enjoyed this one. I like Coco, and Rarity and Applejack once again are a funny duo to watch here. It was also nice to return to Manhattan, as I really like the design of the city, as I said back in Season 4. 
And also, I love how the song during Applejack's montage was so good that they literally made it the credit song, too. Sorry? You're making a terrible mistake! <sighs> but yeah, not only is this episode pretty fun, but it has a good message going for it, too. With it being that just the smallest things can make such a huge impact. Which is true. You don't need to go super crazy just to make others happy. Just doing what you can will still lead to positive results. All in all, a pretty good one. This map concept they're doing is pretty interesting, and I hope to see more of other characters. Especially Twilight, she needs a new mission, bro. Oh, God, this episode did not quite age so well, did it? So, while Applejack is away at Manhattan to solve a friendship problem, yes, this is another episode which has two stories intertwined with each other, Big Mac volunteers to participate in the Sister Who social with Apple Bloom. And so we spent most of the episode seeing how that goes, and well, it sadly doesn't go well. I just feel bad for Big Mac the whole time. He seemed to be genuinely having a great time, but then everything just falls apart, and even Apple Bloom gets kind of upset with him. It's just kind of sad. The one thing that definitely gave this episode some points, though, was for sure the ending with Apple Bloom and Big Mac. Just a genuinely heartwarming moment between the two, and it gives us a very satisfying ending. Other than that, and also hearing Big Mac speak in full sentences, this episode just wasn't it, in my opinion. Going above Princess Spike, as it definitely has some saving graces, but it did come close to going bold. Blow it. Now this is more like it, a quality episode. So this is actually a very big episode in the series, as it not only is the episode where Diamond Tiara actually becomes friends with everyone and learns not to listen to our parents anymore, but it's also the episode where the Cutie Mark Crusaders finally complete their super long journey and all three of them manage to get their cutie marks. This is for sure the best cutie mark crusader episode so far, no contest. The songs are really good, Diamond TR's backstory was really sad, and the cutie mark crusaders getting their cutie marks was super sad is fine to watch, and they got them in the perfect way in my opinion. I actually was wondering if they do something like this, where the cutie mark crusaders help others get their own cutie marks instead of just looking for their own. It's nice to see that this will be the direction these three will be going in in future episodes, as we've still got four seasons left. But yeah, this for sure felt like a good time to give them their cutie marks. What else can I say? Just a super solid episode. I definitely think that this one was worth all the buildup after all the previous Cutie Mark Crusader episodes. It's awesome to see how far they've come already, and I look forward to future episodes with them. Top of the list, no contest. Pinkie Pie learns that Princess Cadence and Shining Armor are going to be having a baby, but is requested to keep it a secret. And so Pinkie must resist the urge to tell all of her friends the exciting news. And? And that's it. Oh. Uh, how did you know all that? <laughs> uh, Pinkie says? <laughs> This is another really funny one. It's more of a grounded story, but it was definitely executed well here. It starts off with Pinky simply just trying to keep her mouth shut, but then it turns into her just losing her mind and looking like she's about to burst. All the expressions in this episode were really good and just once again shows how much better the animation has gotten. Like half of the expressions in this episode would not appear in season one at all. This episode could for sure also be another relatable one, as keeping secrets can definitely be very hard sometimes. In fact, this episode was a perfect representation of me trying to keep this video a secret for months. But yeah, super funny and fun Pinky episode. Gonna go below the previous episode. Wasn't expecting this one to be as good as it was. Was it much trouble? Piece of cake. It's hard swarming once again, and Applejack and Pinkie Pie decide to spend it together at the rock farm. And so Applejack gets to know the Pie family and what their traditions for the holiday are like. But their traditions don't quite appeal to the apples, and so the apple family must figure out how to have a perfect harp swarming with the pie family and have both families satisfied. I'm glad we got to revisit the whole Applejack and Pinkie being cousins thing, because them as a duo is way more fun than it may sound. Applejack just accepts Pinkie's chaotic energy and actually has tons of fun with her. They really do feel like family. Of course! We might be related! Hey! I, I was, was gonna, gonna say, say that! Stop, Stop saying, saying what I'm saying! saying. 
It also helps that this episode is another Christmas one, which is a holiday that always puts me in a good mood. And seeing Applejack upset about not being able to have a good horse warming with the pies was really sad. So sad that Applejack actually cries tears over this. I guess her crying on the inside isn't 100% of the time. But jokes aside, it genuinely was upsetting to see both her and Pinky upset. Once again, just showing how well they work together on screen. When they're both sad, you're sad. But they do end up having a good horse warming at the end, obviously, so that's good. Anyways, yet another good episode. Season 5 really saving the best for last huh hey guys guess what another solid episode you love to see it it's nightmare night once again been a while but fluttershy is once again spending the night in her cottage as she's too scared to spend the night with her friends however she decides that this year she wants to try and get over her fears and just have a good time with her friends but she has a hard time getting over her fears and so fluttershy suggested the idea of scaring people instead of her being scared herself and so fluttershy tries to come up with ways to scare her friends to not be scared on nightmare night but also be able to hang out with her friends still i mainly just found this one to be really fun i've heard some people say that this episode portrayed Fluttershy to be scared of the silliest thing, but I honestly disagree with that criticism. Fears take time to get over, and everyone is scared of many different things, no matter how ridiculous they may sound. Like, for example, you could be scared of the SpongeBob closing song, but be totally neutral seeing a two-headed Mario right at the foot of your bed. Don't ask why I made such a specific analogy. But yeah, it was just fun to see Fluttershy hang out with her friends on Nightmare Night. And also, I watched this episode when October just began, so it was pretty good timing if you ask me. And guess what? Butterbeds back, baby! That now makes two appearances this season, which is pretty funny. I guess fans really love this design. But yeah, Fluttershy's scare tactic near the end was pretty impressive for her being more of a soft character. Just another really good episode, in my opinion. <laughs> Twilight finds out that her friends are actually having a fun time with Discord and so must figure out what's going on as she feels like something is up behind the scenes. And so what follows is Twilight once again overthinking about a situation and constantly trying to figure out what's happening. Only for her to realize that, well, they simply just had a fun time with Discord. For what it was, this one was fine, but I can understand why others don't really like it. You just feel bad for Twilight the whole time. And also most of it is mainly just them trying to recreate what Twilight missed, only for it to result in the punchline being... Twilight wasn't there, so it can't be 100% recreated for her. But I will admit Discord did have some good jokes in here as usual. And I loved some of the references in here, such as the Bob Ross references and even Pinky referencing Back to the Future. Are you suggesting time travel? Absolutely not. Which is ironic considering I literally use music from the Back to the Future game for my It's About Time review. The ending is a perfect representation of how jokes being run into the ground instantly result in the jokes themselves not really being funny anymore. Overall, this was a fine episode, but nothing amazing. Fluttershy and Twilight, there you go, are called by the map to the Smoky Mountains, where two families named the Hoofields and the McColts are fighting each other constantly, and Fluttershy and Twilight must figure out how to settle the dispute between the two families. This was another good map adventure episode. Twilight and Fluttershy actually worked really well as a duo, and Twilight being super excited about being called by the map was quite funny. I've prepared our things. Snacks, books, blankets, books. You said books twice. And the Hooffields and the McColts are really interesting characters, and we get a cool little backstory about why they started fighting. Nothing much really to say about this one other than, I enjoyed it. Just a simple little adventure with not much stakes at hand. The Hooffields and McColts will be going below tanks for the memories. The episode, not the families. Wait, that's me. A childhood friend of Applejack's, Paula Ratura, is coming to Ponyville to perform a song for the Helping Hooves Music Festival. However, her manager seems to be super demanding and only wants Cola Ratura to do what he wants rather than what she wants. So Applejack tries to solve this situation so that Cola Ratura can do the event how she wants and so she can truly be herself again. I really like Cola Ratura as a character. She truly seems like such a kind character to be around with her, even having the Cuma Crusader scene on stage with her at the end of the episode. And they did an amazing job of making the manager super unlikable because my god, he was awful. Like, he didn't even give a crap about Cola Ratura at all, and it genuinely frustrated me to watch. And like, look how much he overworked Pinky, like, come on! But that's the emotion he's supposed to give you, so that isn't a complaint about the episode at all. And Cola Ratura's song near the end was really well sung. Probably helps that Lena Hall voiced her. And it was satisfying to see her truly be herself and get so much support. Another good episode. 
all right so this finale seems to have a very interesting start twilight and starlight glimmer meet each other once again and starlight time travels back in time to stop rainbow dash's sonic rain boom from happening so that twilight and her friends never meet we then see how this has impacted the future and my god does this have disastrous results i'm telling you man one penny could be thrown into a fountain and as a result family guy would have become lost media or something but anyways all these futures were wild to see and it was just nice to revisit past events once again i don't think i have much to say about this first part as it's mainly just twilight and starlight meeting again starlight stopping the sonic rain boom and then twilight exploring what effects that had on the future but let's see what part two has to offer all right see how obviously way more happens in this one probably visits a few more futures which are all worse than the previous and so twilight keeps doing the time travel spell to try and stop starlight from preventing the sonic rain boom as repetitive as it felt it was kind of interesting to see twilight's different adventures through the futures and it was especially interesting to see her constantly go back to the past where starlight uses different tactics to prevent the sonic rain boom i think the best part of this finale for sure though was starlight's backstory it's always cool to see backstories of these types of characters as it for sure gives the other characters a different perspective on on things and starlight does get redeemed in this episode with her managing to become friends with the main six which was sweet to see i've heard some say that felt a bit forced but the way i see it twilight's the princess of friendship of course she's gonna be super forgiving but yeah it was just nice to see a former antagonist become friends with everyone you know but i will say this was one of the weaker finales for me honestly it's just mainly twilight going back in time numerous times but again the futures were really interesting to see continuously get worse and worse so that definitely helps a bit along with starlight's redemption i think overall while this was one of the weaker finales it was still good as an episode and it's still an interesting watch this one will be going around the middle of the season five list an interesting way to end off what was for sure an interesting season Season 5 is where I can for sure say the show starts to change a little bit. But the animation definitely seems to be looking a bit more expressive. And also, obviously, the writing has changed a lot with, you know, the cutie map being implemented. Which allows for some more grounded stories about some ponies just trying to solve a simple conflict. But yeah, how was Season 5? Well, not the best season, as I still think Season 4 was better, but I think it's still second place material. Season 5 starts off pretty good, gets a little weak around the middle, but gets really good near the end. And there are for sure some really good episodes in here that I recommend checking out. It also has some of the show's most iconic episodes, such as the Cutie Map, Tanks for the Memories, and Crusaders of the Lost Mark, which were all pretty good episodes. Now, we're about to move on to Season 6, which is when many of the fandom considered it to be when the show started to decline a little bit, and also seems to be the season where many dropped off as by this point the show was half a decade old and many have just moved on from the show by this point but i also hear that some people actually really like season six and i've even heard some say it's their favorite season of the whole show so i'm still looking forward to seeing what this season will have to offer especially after starlight was redeemed will season six truly mark the beginning of a slight decline well i'll be the judge of that new season new intro let's see what's up Starlight is now in the picture. That that that's all the changes. That 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 that's it. Cut to the next part. The gang is headed to the Crystal Empire to see Shiny Armor and Princess Cadence's new baby, and Twilight wants to help Starlight with her first friendship lesson in the process which is trying to become friends with her old friend Starburst again. But Starlight is too scared to become friends with him again, as she is afraid that Sunburst will find out about her past. So while Starlight struggles with trying to get out of the friendship lesson, the others find out that the baby is actually an alicorn. And so while some of the game helps with setting up the crystalline event, Twilight and Pinky try to look after the baby, which proves to be pretty difficult. Like most part ones, not a bad start. So far, I really like Starlight, and I'm really glad she seems to be becoming a main character now. She has tons of good moments in this part for sure. And also this scene is once again a really good representation of anxiety with her ears ringing and excessively sweating with fear in her eyes. Damn, they do a really good job with showing this stuff. But yeah, the Starlight plot was really enjoyable. It might be my favorite plot of this part. The plot with the baby is fun as well. Pinky looking after the baby really gave me flashbacks to baby cakes with how much she was struggling. And the ending with the crystal heart breaking is a good little setup for what part two will likely be like. Let's see how they get themselves out of this dilemma. 
While Starlight continues her journey to complete her first friendship lesson, the others try to figure out how to fix the crystal heart so that they don't get frozen by the eternal winter that is coming. And just like the other part twos, this definitely had more to it than part one. We get a lot in this one, in fact. Starlight learns that Sunburst was also trying to keep his past a secret, with him actually failing at Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. Then becoming friends again after them splitting apart in the past was sweet, and I'm glad that they finally reunited after all this time. Especially since this whole thing was why Starlight did what she did before. The other who's trying to save the Crystal Empire was also a really good adventure. Celestia and Luna trying with all their might to prevent the winter, Twilight panicking, trying to find solutions, and the others having trouble trying to get everyone to leave the area. Still, when you think about it, the view is just as good a little further back, like inside your house. This whole premiere, like the other premieres, was just really fun and had tons of good material in it. I think Starlight is a really good addition to the cast, and I hope she gets a decent amount of episodes in the future, as she's already grown on me quite a bit, which is a really good sign. Overall, another good premiere. The premieres seem to never disappoint, dude. Pinkie Pie and Rarity head to Manhattan, where Pinkie is going to be celebrating Pie Sister Surprise Swap Day. What a name. <laughs> With Mod, and Rarity tries to find a good location for her new shop. Throughout the episode, we mainly focus on Pinkie's plot, where she tries to find a rock pouch to give Mod for Pie Sister Surprise Swap Day, also known as Psst. But the only one she could find was in a clothes store. Pinkie ends up trading her party cannon for the same pouch that someone else had, and so Pinkie tries to enjoy Psst with mod without her cannon. This one was way more enjoyable than I thought it'd be. Yeah, it's a pinky episode, and you know I like me a good pinky episode, but with how simple the story was, it was super fun. Rarity and Pinky are hilarious together, probably one of my favorite duos in the show we've gotten so far. And also, similarly to the one where Pinkie Pie knows, we get tons of really good facial expressions in this one. Once again, though, they're never really in your face and don't last too long, which I like. It's just the right amount. Pinky Mod's relationship was, as usual, very sweet, and for sure gave this episode some more points. Just another really funny Pinky episode. With the Cutie Mark Crusaders now having their Cutie Marks, they have no idea how to move forward whenever they can't find a Cutie Mark problem. And so Sweet Belle and Scootaloo come up with an amazing idea. Just do things they love doing during the free time. But Apple Bloom doesn't really agree with this idea as she thinks that they won't hang out ever again. And so Apple Bloom tries to find something that she enjoys doing alone and manages to find a cutie mark problem on the way, which the cutie mark crusaders must solve. This is another one which I enjoyed way more than I expected. I think I'm really gonna like this new direction the cutie mark crusaders will be going in. These three helping that one dancing pony get their cutie mark was really wholesome and Apple Bloom willing to embarrass herself just to help this one pony out was for sure a highlight for our character. And it was also interesting to see what the Cumor Crusaders end up doing in their free time, with Apple Bloom going all over the place trying to find something that she enjoys. But yeah, pretty good one. Gonna go below the previous episode, but this was still a really good Cumor Crusader episode, and I hope that more of the future ones are similar to this one in quality. Oh, oh my god. Could it be a Spike episode where he's likable? These are rare, I tell you, rare. Anyway, Spike is called to the Dragonlands by the Dragon Lord because he's going to step down as the Dragon Lord and wants to hold a competition to determine who the new Dragon Lord should be. If one manages to receive a Bloodstone Scepter, they become the new Dragon Lord. Spike decides to enter this competition due to the risk of Equestria being in danger if any of the other rude dragons won the competition. I think the best part of this one was Spike and this dragon named Ember teaming up to stop the other dragons from winning. Spike letting Ember become the Dragon Lord since she was one of the nicer dragons was such a W move. While I did like how Spike was more likable in this one, I didn't really find it too entertaining. This episode didn't do anything offensively bad, but in comparison to other episodes, I didn't feel too much while watching this one. Not bad, just wasn't too interested. Princess Celestia is coming to the castle for dinner to see how Starlight's friendship lessons are going. However, Starlight must bring a friend to the dinner in order to prove that she has in fact been learning a lot. Starlight actually ends up becoming friends with Trixie due to how much they could relate to each other, with both of them having dark pasts that they regret. But when Twilight finds out, she doesn't approve of this due to her past with Trixie. We then spend the rest of the episode seeing how Starlight deals with this predicament. 
I really like Starlight and Trixie's dynamic in this one. Their friendship truly feels legitimate, and even when you think it was fake due to a slip up by Trixie, you learn that Trixie truly did like Starlight as a friend and wanted her back. I just mainly enjoyed this one due to how enjoyable the two were as a duo. Yeah, Twilight wasn't at her best in this episode, but I can look past that and just enjoy Starlight and Trixie. I already like Starlight as she is now, but Trixie also seems to be getting better. So I'm hoping we get more episodes with these two in the future. Above the Crystalline. Rainbow Dash finds out that she has finally become a Wonder Bolt, and is obviously super psyched about it, considering this was her dream after all. However, she doesn't make a very good first impression on the team and gets the nickname Rainbow Crash, which coincidentally was the exact nickname that she got back in flight school. Rainbow Dash tries to get rid of this nickname, but just makes her look worse in front of everyone. For this being the episode where Rainbow Dash actually becomes a Wonder Bolt, which is six seasons in the making, you think this one would likely be one of the best episodes, right? Well, well, no, it's not even close. Now, I don't consider this a bad episode like many do, but it for sure could have been better. I'll start with some positives. I did find the scene where Rainbow Dash tried to act like her friends to be pretty funny. I always like to see characters in shows impersonate other characters, as it just puts a unique spin on the characters you know and love. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to help because I care about all of the Wonder Bolts oh so much. Yes, sorry. Just call me Care Mare. Um, but if you're busy now, I can just come back later. And as usual, some jokes in this episode did land. But I think that's all the positives I can think of. Now for the negatives. My main complaint with this episode is that the message is not good at all. The message this episode gives is basically that you should just let others make fun of you and just deal with it. Obviously, not a good message to deliver to people at all. But if you ignore that, this episode isn't the worst thing ever. There are some fun bits in it, but at the same time, the moral isn't good at all, and it's not really fun watching Rainbow Dash just embarrass herself for 22 minutes. Gonna go near the bottom of the season 6 list, so I can understand why this episode gets some hate. You already know an episode is gonna be good when it's a hard swarming episode. And it's a really good one, too. It's Starlight's first hard swarming in Ponyville, but she doesn't quite understand the meaning of hard swarming. So Twilight reads Starlight a story about hard swarming in order to help her understand why it's so important. The story itself is basically a parody of the famous Christmas story, A Christmas Carol, and the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future show Starlight's character, Snowball Frost, what would happen if she got rid of Harp Swarming forever. It's honestly really funny that I'm bringing up A Christmas Carol again after I already mentioned it way back in Season 4, but this was a really good and fun parody of it. I knew I was in for a good ride when it was going to be a parody of one of my favorite Christmas stories. They adapted the original story very well, and it all flowed perfectly. This episode also acts as another musical, and there are some some baners in this one, especially Pinky Son. This is just a very solid heartwarming episode. These seem to never disappoint. And the reason is to be with your friends. And the reason is to be with your friends. What? You know you're doing your Pinkie Pie voice, right? Rarity receives a newspaper containing a review of her new boutique that she opened in Manhattan, but the others are scared about her reading it due to how disastrous the opening apparently was. And so we get to see how the opening went and... Yeah, it was definitely an opening, I'll say that for sure. This was a hilarious episode, man. So much good fun to be had in this one. I love the little sections of the main six being interviewed about the opening in the restaurant. When you write the story, could you maybe skip over the part where we locked Rarity in the window display? <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun to see them try to make sure the opening went smoothly, and it almost didn't, but they managed to save it in the end, which was nice. I don't think I even have much to say about this one, other than it was really funny and super fun. I even go as far as to say it's one of the funniest episodes in the whole show so far. Top of the season six list. Rarity designs fashion, DJ Pwn 3 designs beats. What better combination than a boutique dance club? Rarity is upset that Applejack never has time to spend time with her at the spa, so Twilight offers to help Applejack with her chores for one hour so that Applejack can have some time off. But there appears to be an issue at the spa, and so Applejack must try to fix the problem at the spa so that the other ponies can finally use the steam room. This episode also had a really weird flow to it. Like, the first half of it is about the issue at the spa, and then the last half is Applejack learning that her methods of doing her chores were too complicated. Yeah, both of these halves pretty much teach this lesson, but I don't know, it just didn't really feel that connected. Not 
saying it's a bad thing, but it's definitely something I noticed while watching this one. There's not much stakes in this episode either, so it's a very relaxing one. Makes sense considering they're at a spa. So if you're someone who likes episodes with high stakes or a lot going on, this one probably isn't for you. What do I think of it? It's decent. Definitely a more average one, but nothing offensively bad. I'll be pointing Applejack's day off at the bottom of the season six list. There are definitely best of better episodes than this one in the season. Fluttershy's brother, Zephyr Breeze, comes back to her parents' house as they are letting him move back in with them. Fluttershy, however, does not approve of this. Understandably so. And so after Zephyr ends up moving in with her, she tries to help her stubborn brother find a career path. If you are a fan of assertive Fluttershy like me, this is the episode for you, man. There are so many good Fluttershy moments in this one, and it really made for a fun viewing experience. Well, maybe if you stuck with it for more than a few weeks. I'm sorry, but I am just so... So peeved right now. When mom and dad told you to find someplace else to live, I don't think they meant here. That's the main reason why I like this one. Seeing Fluttershy actually stand up for herself a bit more and act assertive when she needed to was just an amazing reminder of how far her character has come. Remember when she met Twilight in the first episode? Remember how she was so shy she literally whimpered? Well, look at her now. I'm so proud. And not only that, but it's just really funny in general. This episode gave me huge Can You Spare a Dime vibes, with the premise being very similar. Square refuses to get a job and lives at SpongeBob's house, driving SpongeBob up the walls. And that was one of the funniest SpongeBob episodes of all time. So it's nice to see that this one managed to be funny as well. Flutter Brother will be going above the Saddle Row review. about the silliest things. Oh, okay, Pinky. Rarity and Pinkie Pie are called by the map to Canterlot, where they find out that there's a restaurant that's struggling to get customers due to it not even having a rating by a critic named Zesty Gourmand. And after trying the food, they love it. Even more than the other bland restaurants at Canterlot. So they must help spread the word about the restaurant to other ponies so that the restaurant could get good business. Another good map episode. Once again, Rarity and Pinkie Pie really do shine as a duo and are really funny. And their It's Gonna Work song goes harder than it needed to. Seeing the duo try out the other restaurants was also really funny. Uh, maybe I'm not in the mood for whatever this is. Can we try someplace else? Um, yeah. Maybe one more stop? Blech! Nope. Overall, another good map episode. I hope to see more episodes with Rarity and Pinky because they seem to work really well together on screen. Also, what is Gordon Ramsay doing here? Rainbow Dash goes to a Daring Do convention and meets a pony named Quibble Pants, who she disagrees with regarding opinions about the Daring Do franchise. Now, after they get put into a real Daring Do mission, they must help retrieve a treasure from a temple before Caballeron does. I love how accurately this one portrays fandoms. Rainbow Dash and Quibble Pants arguing over their opinions about Daring Do is literally just every single fandom in a nutshell, <laughs> arguing over the stupidest things ever. And the adventure was fun as usual, too. I will admit that Quibble Pants denying that the adventure was real did get old quick, though. Like, you just wait for him to realize and then he finally realized like near the end of the adventure other than that though this was another decent episode stranger than fanfic will be going below applejack's day off not the craziest episode ever but it was decent <laughs> It's that time of year again, the annual Applewood Derby. And the Cutie Mark Crusaders are really excited to participate in it. However, when they try to work with their teammates to design their cards for the Derby, they take over and don't let the Cutie Mark Crusaders take control over their design. And it even gets to the point where the older ponies race instead of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So the Cutie Mark Crusaders must try to take back control over their cards and try to have a good Applewood Derby. I have mixed feelings about this one, honestly. On one hand, it was cool to explore another annual tradition, but on the other hand, this one was a bit frustrating. I don't know how Rarity Rainbow Dash, and especially Applejack were this oblivious to the fact that they were basically stealing the Derby from the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Like, they were even confronted about being behind the wheel instead of the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and they just don't care. Like, what? They just fell a bit out of character here, in my opinion. This one wasn't bad, but definitely not great. Above Gauntlet of Fire. At least it's wanted a decent song. Oh boy, yet another episode that is widely hated by fans. Let's see what this one is like, shall we? So, Rainbow Dash starts to get a kick out of pranking others, but the prank she pulls don't quite get a laugh out of the others. Oh yeah, by the way, at the beginning of this episode, she literally pranks Fluttershy, even though Pinkie Pie literally told Rainbow Dash way back in the fifth episode of the whole show to not do that. Great. 
And so the entirety of Ponyville decided to do a mega prank as revenge for all Rainbow Dash's pranks she has pulled recently. I can for sure understand why others don't like this one. The first half of this one is so irritating. Rainbow Dash is just so annoying in the first half of this episode. It's just her ruining other people's days over and over and over again with the most unfunny pranks ever. However, I did like the second half where the zombie prank starts to happen. That aspect of the episode was really fun and Rainbow Dash gained a taste of her own medicine was definitely needed. But my god, does the first have bring this episode down so much i don't hate this one but i don't love it either 28 pranks later will be going above the last that wasn't funny you really scared me i hope you're happy you got that right Another Spike episode where he's likable? What is happening? This is a great episode. Spike meets a changeling named Thorax, who actually turns out to be really nice and just wants some friends. But since he's a changeling, literally no one else trusts him. So Spike must prove to everyone that Thorax isn't what he seems and that all he needs is a little love. Spike is really at his best in this episode. Him actually giving this changeling a chance really gave me a lot of respect for him. Doesn't quite redeem his other episodes though. But hey, it's good that the Spike episodes have seemingly been improving a bit. Let's hope that they can keep this up. Well, guess what, Sassafras? I'm opposite Fluttershy, and I'm sick of being nice and quiet all the time! Oh my god! God, okay. <laughs> While the main six are touring Yak Yakistan, Discord finds out about Spike and Big Mac's secret guys night, which they do every time the main six are gone. Discord joins them in their activities, but doesn't quite get a kick out of them. Especially their game of... Especially their game of Ogre and Ubali. Especially the game of Ogres and Ubaliettes, which is pretty much just Dungeons and Dragons in the My Little Pony world. So Discord tries to make the night a little bit more fun for him so he can have a good guy's night. All I'm saying is, it's an opportunity to expand your circle of friends. Unless you're afraid they won't like you. I'm telling you, bro, she really starts to get sassy this season. This is another episode where it's more laid back, so you get more of a relaxing feeling from it. It's just a fun little hangout with Discord, Spike, and Big Mac. There is some chaos that happens near the end, but it doesn't last too long. Overall, if you're looking for a simple episode about some guys just hanging out and having fun for the night, then this is the one for you. I'll put Dungeons and Discords about Stranger Than Fan Fiction. <laughs> Applejack and Rainbow Dash find out that Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie are actually really good at a sport called Buckball. So Applejack and Rainbow Dash try to train the two for an upcoming game against Appaloosa, but they start to play poorly due to pressure. And so Applejack and Rainbow Dash must figure out how to help them play well again. Fun fact, as far as I know, this is the only episode in the entire series where we get a Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie adventure. And this one isn't even really an adventure with just the two of them, so even this one doesn't really count. And it's a real shame because this is probably my favorite duo to watch. They were absolutely hilarious here. Oh, there's just no way to... There's no way that we can get in the zone because the zone sounds like a horrible place since we are terrible at buckball and we are going to lose and let everybody down and we don't want to play anymore! That is by far one of my favorite Fluttershy freakouts of the entire series. And bro, you know it's bad when Pinkie Pie is super anxious. Yeah, if you can't tell already, I love this episode. It's just mainly because of how well Fluttershy and Pinkie worked off of each other. It was also kind of funny to see Snips just return out of nowhere, and he was pretty funny here too. Also, another fun fact, this episode played a huge role in my magnum opus of school assignments. My My Little Pony physics project. Yeah, I legit made a physics project on MLP. It was for my final, I had an idea, and I ran with it. And guess what? I got a 100, baby, let's go. But yeah, if you're interested in seeing the project, let me know, maybe I'll make a video about it or something. Anyways, I know I've been talking for a while, but this is a really good episode. New favorite of the season. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry. I'd be surprised if any pony in this town cares about this game at all. Whoa. The whole town really seems to care about this game a lot. The Cutie Mark Crusaders run into a griffin named Gabby, who really wants to get a cutie mark of her own. The problem is that it's likely not possible for griffins to get their own cutie marks, and so the Cutie Mark Crusaders must at least try to see if it is really true or not. It was really cool to see more of the griffins from Griffon Stone, and the way they connected this episode to the one way back in Season 5 was also pretty cool. And it's also really interesting to see Griffin who is this energetic. Like, Gabby throughout this whole episode basically radiated Pinkie Pie energy. Don't have much more to say. It was good. If only there was a pony who knew how to trick a trickster. Or maybe 
A pair of ponies? I'm telling you, bro. Fluttershy sassles are through the roof this season. Applejack and Fluttershy called by the map to Las Pegasus. Which is obviously a parody of Las Vegas. As there is a pony named Gladmane who is causing customers at the luxury resort to argue with each other on purpose. And so they get help from... Flim and Flam. Oh, God. I was a little jump scared at first when they came on screen. But they weren't that bad in this one. I'll get to why soon. But yeah, these four must try to figure out what's really going on behind the scenes. So yeah, Flim and Flam are in this one. But I actually didn't mind them here at all. And why is that? Well, because they weren't being the same unfunny scammers for once. Seeing them actually help Applejack and Fluttershy was a nice change of pace for them. Oh, you can't trick a confession out of a pony like me. I am always one step ahead. Well, you better check your hooves because you just stepped in a confession. That cheeky little smile says so much. This is a really fun episode overall. These map adventure episodes just prove how well these characters work off of each other. No matter what the duo is, it always seems to work. Pinkie Pie and Rarity, Applejack and Rarity, Fluttershy and Twilight, and so much more. If all of your characters can work this well as different duos, then you have great characters. Just a little compliment for the show as a whole. But back to the episode now, this was a really good one. Putting it above the times they are a changeling. Starlight tries to tackle a bunch of friendship lessons with the others while Twilight is out. She does this by using a spell where they do everything she says. However, this proves to be disastrous and Starlight must figure out how to make things up to them. This was a wild one, bro. So much happened here. Like, look at them with those big old eyes. That's terrifying. But it was also just weird to see how they acted under this spell. Speaking in this really robotic sounding voice and just not being themselves at all. I think that's why I like this one so much. Seeing all this chaos unfold was crazy, yeah, but you can't deny it was pretty fun too. I bet Discord would have loved this episode. And Starlight does end up doing the friendship lessons for real near the end, obviously, so that's good. Another fun one. <laughs> Pinkie Pie, Applejack, and Rarity get back from a boat trip, and Twilight is super excited to hear about it. But the three seem to be really mad at each other, and Twilight has no idea why. So she decides to talk to the three of them individually to find out what went wrong during the trip. Not gonna lie, I thought the arguments in this episode were just really petty. I don't know if it's just me, but they felt really out of character in this one. Especially Pinkie Pie, who loves friendship and making others smile. Why would she stop being friends with these two over a boat trip that just didn't go to plan? I feel like it'd take a lot more for Pinkie Pie to literally stop being friends with Pony she has known for years now. <laughs> don't get me wrong, this episode does still have some fun in it. The stories they all tell were really well connected to each other while giving a new spin on it, of course. And it was kind of fun hearing about the versions of what happened. But still, man, their arguments just felt really petty. This is another mixed bag for me. Gonna go above Newbie Dash. After Apple Bloom lies to Applejack, she tells a story about her lying ended up causing her way more problems than she expected. And these lies just make her situation worse and worse and worse. So Applejack tries to lie her way out of all these problems. We actually get to hear Big Mac speak full sentences in this one again, and I think this might just be the origin for why Big Mac doesn't talk so much. Because throughout this episode, Applejack constantly tells Big Mac to keep his mouth shut. I could definitely see this being one of the reasons why Big Mac doesn't really talk much nowadays. Now about the episode itself, this one is another one that I felt mixed on. I did mention a lot how Applejack lying was always pretty funny, but that was mainly because it was just a random thing that happened. It was extremely obvious that she was struggling, and it didn't drag out too long. It was usually very brief. Applejack will tell a lie. That lie will make things worse. Repeat. It's very repetitive, and it got kind of old fast. But at the same time, it was cool to see how the farm was back then, and I won't deny that I was on the edge of my seat during the hospital scene near the end. But other than that, this episode just felt a bit repetitive. Where the Apple lies will go below Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Now, this is a way better episode than Newbie Dash. Twilight and Rainbow Dash are called by the map to the Wonderbolt Academy, where two ponies named Vapor Trail and Sky Stainer have a little problem. And that problem is that they are actually holding each other back from having a chance to get into the Wonderbolt Academy. So Twilight and Rainbow Dash must help these two out and give them a better chance to get into the Academy. See, now this is a good Wonderbolt episode, not Rainbow Dash getting embarrassed for 22 minutes. These two just trying to help this little duo get into the Academy is way more entertaining. Not to mention, it's a nice little full circle thing after Rainbow Dash has already gone to the academy a while ago. Also, Vapor Trail was way better memorable of a character than I thought she'd be. Her backstory with Sky Steiner was really sweet. What can I say? Another great episode. Topple will be going above No Second Prances. 
right, season finale time. Let's see what this one's like, shall we? All right, so it turns out that the changelings are back once again, and I've taken a bunch of ponies, including the main six, to their lair, and I've replaced them with changeling versions. So it's up to Starlight, Trixie, Discord, and Thorax to stop Queen Chrysalis and save their friends. So far, I'm really digging this one. Ponies other than the main six saving the day is a nice little change of pace, even if the main six are super fun to watch on screen. But these characters are all super fun too, especially Trixie. She's starting to grow on me like Starlight did. But yeah, as usual, part one mainly just sets the adventure up and not much action happens. So if we want to get to the juicy stuff, we'll have to continue this adventure in part two. Wow, I was not expecting this finale to be as fun as it was. Everyone goes into the Changeling Hive to try and find their friends, but this ends up proving to be difficult, and so they help each other in many different ways to get to Queen Chrysalis. This is where Starlight tries to stop her and save her friends, and eventually succeeds by giving Thorax the motivation he needed, and he is now the new leader of the Changeling Hive. This finale was definitely better than Season 5's. No offense. But it was just so much more fun. Starlight and Trixie are the main selling points for me. They work off of each other, like, way too well. I know I said this, while reviewing No Second Prances, but it's nice to see that their dynamic is still really good. Discord obviously sprinkles in some comedy, and Thorax just helps everyone out. Also, this episode shows us that Changeling Fluttershy is just as, if not more, sassy than the real one. You should rescue any of us, unless you think maybe one of us might be the real Fluttershy. Oh, that certainly would be a nasty Changeling trick, wouldn't it? Anyways, what a great finale. I really hope we get more episodes with Starlight and Trixie in Season 7. This was a really fun way to end this season. So, is Season 6 truly the beginning of a slight decline in the series? Honestly? Not at all. This season didn't feel much different from season 5 at all. I'm definitely in the group of people who like this season a lot. There's tons of fun to be had in this one. Some of the best episodes from this season are currently really high on the overall list. And the worst episodes from the season weren't even offensively bad either. Starlight was also a big character this season, and honestly, she's an amazing character. I can relate to her in some aspects, like being nervous about making new friends or overthinking certain things. She's just another great character to add to the series and helps mix things up a little bit. In fact, I'm pretty sure all the episodes where she was a main character were all pretty good, and none of them were really close to the lower side of the overall ranking. I definitely like Starlight way more after she was redeemed. I know some others like her better as a villain, but she's just so much more entertaining this way but yeah overall season six was another good season now we will be moving on to season seven which lots of people consider to be where the show really fell off season six has more of a mixed opinion but i see a lot of others talk about season seven when asked about when the show started to decline so i'm wondering if this will be like season six and i actually really enjoy it or i somewhat agree with these people let's find out by watching it shall we New season, so you know what time it is. New intro time! All that's changed is the logo, but other than that, everything's the same. Moving on. Anyways, as usual, we start off with a two-part... Wait. Wait, this isn't a two-parter. Yeah, so this isn't like a title mistake or anything. This is apparently the only season in the entire series which doesn't premiere with a two-parter. Which is definitely super random considering literally every other season has started with a two-parter. Even the very first season, which didn't even have a two-part finale. Well, that's honestly no big deal. Pretty much means we could just chillax a little bit with the first episode. So after Starlight saves everyone from the Changeling Hive, Twilight is wondering what's next for Starlight, as she believes she doesn't need friendship lessons anymore after a bit journey. She comes to the conclusion that she might actually have to send Starlight away as that is what Celestia did to Twilight. And so Twilight looks at different possible locations to send Starlight to, wondering if this is really the choice she wants to make. Honestly, I didn't mind this episode being so chilled out. After the big journey that was the season 6 finale, it's nice to just take a breather and get a nice little wholesome episode between Twilight and Starlight. I do definitely think in terms of quality the two parters are better, but this one was fine as well. Overall, a decent start to the season. second episode and we already have more of Starlight and Trixie. 
This is a good sign, y'all. Trixie accidentally makes the cutie mark map disappear, and so she and Starlight must track it down before the main six get back. Starlight is also trying to hold in her anger as she is scared of upsetting Trixie. Meanwhile, the main six work together in order to get out of an escape room. What I found really cool about this one is how these two stories are shown. It's a nice little comparison to see just how different the stories are. Like, you have the main six just having a fun time and working together while Starlight is getting exhausted from trying to hold her anger in, and chaos ensues in Ponyville. And the song during this episode is probably one of their best so far. I'm glad Starlight and Trixie will probably start to become more of a regular duo, as their chemistry just works so well, much like the other characters. Since Shining Armor and Princess Cadence feel they need a break from taking care of Flurry Heart, they have Twilight be in charge of the baby. And as you'd expect, this doesn't quite go to plan. Honestly, this just felt like a worse version of Baby Cakes. Wanna see a baby cause chaos in Ponyville and mess up Twilight's task for 22 minutes? Well, this is the episode for you. Honestly, I can't say much about this one. Just a babysitting episode that didn't quite keep my interest the whole time. Bottom of the season seven list. <laughs> Maude is considering moving to either Ponyville or a place called Ghastly Gorge, and so Pinky tries to show Maude that she should choose Ponyville, and tries to get her to become friends with Starlight in the process. Total Rock! I actually really like this one. It's more of Maude, which is already a plus, and we get to see how Starlight and Maude bond together. And they actually get along quite well and enjoy each other's company. Pinky is also tons of fun here, as per usual. <laughs> Derpy better have gotten that pizza in the end. It's a good lesson too, being that you shouldn't force others to make a choice and just let them be. It was executed really well here and showed how Pinky's interference just made Maude want to go to Ghastly Gorge more. Really good episode, top of the season 7 list. A vet pony is having troubles with animals staying out of place, so Fluttershy gets the bright idea to create an animal sanctuary for them, which has actually been her lifelong dream. And so her friends help hire some ponies that would help Fluttershy with building her sanctuary. But they end up doing what they like since they think Fluttershy's ideas are kind of silly. This is another great episode about Fluttershy standing up for herself. Throughout, we see Fluttershy respectfully asking that they follow her ideas rather than just ignoring them. And then when she finds out they ignored her suggestions, she snaps. And I know I've said this a billion times already, but it's just a great reminder of how far she has come since meeting Twilight. Like, she goes off on them. And by the end, she manages to get an actual animal sanctuary built, and it looks pretty cool. It's nice to see Fluttershy be able to not only help the vet pony, but the animals too, so that they have a place to live other than her cottage, which can get a little cramped at times. Another really good episode. <laughs> Rarity realizes that due to how busy she is managing her boutique, she hasn't spent time with Sweetie Belle in ages and misses having fun with her. So Sassy Saddles allows Rarity to take a break in order to spend time with Sweetie Belle. But Rarity ends up treating Sweetie Belle like a filly rather than the older pony she is now. It's been ages since we got a proper episode with these two, so it's nice to get one again. And this one I ended up enjoying a lot. There's a nice little parallel of two stories, the Rarity story and the Q Mark Crusader story. The way these eventually connect by the end was really well done and both reinforce the lesson about letting people grow up and acknowledging that their interests will just change over time. It's just a really sweet episode overall. Gonna go above Celestial Advice. So, we actually meet Rainbow Dash's parents in this one, and it turns out that they didn't even know Rainbow Dash was a Wonderbolt, and that's because Rainbow didn't want her parents to find out because they get a little over the top with their cheering. So now Rainbow Dash must deal with her parents' excessive cheering while she does her Wonderbolt duties. Similar to Family Appreciation Day, I could see this being a very relatable episode to some. Except rather than being embarrassed by how your parents act, it's about being embarrassed by the way your parents show support, which tends to happen a lot in sports. There's always that one family that's louder than everyone else. And for some, they love that, but for others like Rainbow Dash, they find it pretty embarrassing. It was also interesting to see Scootaloo tour Rainbow Dash's childhood home with her parents, and she even gets a wholesome ending. Good episode. The q -Mart Crusaders find out that Big Mac actually has a crush on a pony named Sugar Bell, and so the q -Mart Crusaders try to help Big Mac earn her love before another pony named Featherbane succeeds first. 
I think my favorite part of this one was just Big Mac. This is another episode where he actually speaks in full sentences with the occasional yups and nopes. And this episode also has a very good lesson, which is that you shouldn't try to constantly impress a girl, but rather do something nice for her instead. A lesson that I definitely think a lot more people should consider. I also really like Sugar Bell in this episode. And yes, they do end up getting together by the end, so I hope that we see more of her and Big Mac in the future. Or to say anything, we'll be going above the last. Applejack finds out that Rarity wants her to be one of the judges for her fashion show, but Applejack doesn't quite think she's fit for the job. Where after being told to just be honest, she takes this a bit too far and starts being quite harsh towards the designs. I know we were on a streak of pretty good episodes, but I wasn't too big on this one. My biggest problem with it is that... Why on earth did Rarity pick Applejack? Like, that has gotta be the most random pick for a fashion show judge ever. No offense to Applejack, she's a good character, but like she said, she has zero knowledge on fashion, so how would she be able to judge properly? Like, yeah, Applejack was definitely in the wrong too for not really being honest, but just being a jerk. But Rarity should have picked someone who's more familiar with fashion. Like, why not pick someone like Fluttershy if she really wanted to pick one of her friends? She clearly has more of an interest in it has literally had experience with it before. Oh wait, if Rarity picked someone like Fluttershy to be a judge instead, this episode wouldn't even exist. My bad. Anyways, yeah, this episode was kind of whack. Bottom of the list for season seven. This was the best part of the episode. Sure. Mm. Oh, much better. For the first time, a non-main sixth member gets called by the map, and it is none other than... Starlight, who is called to care a lot as apparently Celestia and Luna aren't quite getting along. So Starlight's best solution she can think of is switching their cutie marks so that they can see how hard the other's lives can be. This was a really cool concept. The sisters living different lives really just gave us a perspective on how hard they work every day. And Celestia and Luna both struggling to do their new jobs really just showed that their lives were both just as hard. There was also the running gag with Twilight basically spying on Starlight that I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> Are you okay in there? I'm good, just uh, reading an exciting book. <laughs> He's gonna think I'm nuts. He's not the only one. Overall, another pretty good episode that gives us a good perspective of the sisters' lives. After my 17 scroll, I think he picked up what I was putting down. <laughs> There it is again. Pinkie Pie is invited by Prince Rutherford to go spend some time with the Yaks in Yak Yakistan. However, eventually the entire village gets covered in snow due to the Yaks stomping a little bit too hard. Pinkie's first instinct was obviously to go try and get some help from her friends. But for some reason, Prince Rutherford doesn't want their help. So Pinkie must try to convince him that help from friends can really go a long way. This is another one of those episodes where not much crazy like action happens, but it's just a nice chill one that has more of a grounded story. And this one was pretty fun. I especially like seeing Pinky have fun with the yaks. She was really into the stomping. It does mainly take place in Yak Yakistan until like the last bit of the episode where the others help. So if you're not really into the yaks, you might not get a kick out of this one. But personally, I enjoyed it. I'll put not asking for trouble above not hard to say anything. Wow, I was not expecting this one to be as good as it was. I mean, yeah, it's a Fluttershy episode and Discord is in it for some good comedy, so it was bound to be good. But this was a super good one. Not just your normal good. No, 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 no. It was a super good. Anyways, after spending some time sipping tea at Fluttershy's cottage, Discord decides to set up his own tea party for Fluttershy, as he feels bad that she spends so much time setting them up just for him. So Discord sets out and tries to make the tea party as good as possible for Fluttershy, but he tries a little too hard and starts to lose sight of his true self. So Fluttershy must help Discord get back to normal so that they can have a real Discord tea party. Like I said, this was a really good episode, man. I loved it. The lesson it teaches is another one that more people should remember and that is staying true to yourself and not trying to be someone you're not because as we saw in this episode not only did it affect discord himself but it affected the people around him too like fluttershy it was cool how even though fluttershy really likes peaceful things and cute things she likes that little bit of chaos discord brings to her life so she was a little disappointed when the tea party just felt like one she would put together Ooh, does it actually turn us green is it really envious of the other teas what's it do what's it do 
Uh, well, it tastes delicious. Oh, okay. And I really like the scenes of Fluttershy trying to bring Discord's chaos back. That was also really good. And he'd have a chaise lounge that would actually chase you because he's funny like that. <laughs> Bet you can't catch me. <laughs> I know this might be a bit of a random episode to enjoy this much, like buckball season, but I just find it fun. And it teaches a really good moral. Top of the list for this season, one of the best in the series so far. The Apple family wants to learn more about the feud between the apples and the pears, and end up learning about their parents. It's a cute little love story about an apple and a pear falling in love and wanting to be together forever. But with the feud going on, that proved to be a little bit difficult. And so we see how this couple tries to stay together despite what's going on around them. This was such a cute one, man. I can see why other sites their favorite of the whole show. Not only that, but we get to learn about Applejack's parents who are dead now. Seriously, look how cruel this image is. They made her transparent, implying she's a goat. But yeah, it's a really sweet story, and it really shows how strong their love is for each other. They don't care about the feud. They don't care how many obstacles they get thrown at them. They are staying together. No feud will separate this couple. But yeah, a really good episode, and definitely one of the best of this season so far. <laughs> Okay, so this is a really weird episode. So Twilight decides to publish her friendship journal so that others can read it and possibly get inspired. But this doesn't quite go the way Twilight expected, and literally everyone in Ponyville starts to go crazy over it. Ponies laugh at literally everything Pinky says, are sick of Fluttershy learning the same lesson over and over again, Rainbow Dash's lessons are ignored and others just want to hear how cool she is, Sweet Apple Acres is flooded with new ponies wanting to be a part of the Apple family, they think Twilight should have stayed in Cairns a lot, and they just don't like rarity. Now with the Fluttershy criticism, you're probably thinking, wait, that's a common criticism amongst the fandom. Well, guess what? This entire episode is basically just a way to mock the fandom. <laughs> and it's usually pretty funny when other shows do this type of thing, but here it didn't feel too funny at all. Everyone in Ponyville just felt extremely out of character. Like these six have done so much work for Ponyville and have literally saved Equestria several times, but just because they released this book, everyone suddenly turns on them? It just doesn't make any sense. The rest of the episode is just everyone being cruel to the main six. It isn't that fun to witness. Although Fluttershy standing up for herself was nice as per usual. It's okay. I got this, girls. <gasps> Listen up. I am more suited. And yes, it took me a while to get there. But can you honestly say that you could learn something one time and completely change who you are? I didn't think so. Another thing I could say liked in this episode was the flawless song. The visuals were cool and the song itself was nice too, but the rest I'm not too big on. I love how the writers had no idea how to actually solve the conflict so the episode just ends like they don't even do anything to solve the problem. It's just staying in the castle and that's the solution apparently. Anyways, yeah, not the greatest episode ever. Going below celestial advice. Spike accidentally invites his friends Ember and Thorax to Ponyville on the same day and thinks that they'll not like each other. So in order to keep them from seeing each other, Spike comes up with ridiculous ways of distracting them while also trying to spend time with both of them. Dude, these Spike episodes have seriously been improving. This one was good too. It's really funny to see the way Spike tries to keep both of his friends distracted. Even Twilight and Starlight get involved with this situation. And I'm really glad we're still seeing more of Thorax even after the season 6 finale. His design is way better now and he's a really likable character. Ember was nice to see again as well. Nothing else I can say other than this one's a fun time. This is a weird friendship thing you ponies do, right? Yep, this episode is bound to happen at some point. For some reason, literally every TV show does this sort of plot at some point. Or quote-unquote plot, I should say. Because this entire episode is basically just three random stories put together. And there actually is a term for these types of episodes. This, my friends, is what we like to call an anthology episode. And what do I think of them? 
it depends. In this case, I wasn't too interested the whole time. Applejack's story was the best here for sure. The rest though, I just wasn't that too into. I just don't think MLP is the type of show to do these types of episodes, because MLP is mainly about adventure and learning lessons. But here, we don't really get either of that. There's no big adventure or no lesson to be learned. It's just a bunch of random stories. This episode obviously doesn't do anything offensively bad, but it's just kind of boring. This is probably another hot take, but I wasn't too big on this episode at all. At least Honest Apple and Famous Fortune were entertained in a way. More Trixie! Whoa! Starland and Trixie drop by the Changeling Hive and find out that Thorax's brother, Pharynx, seems to hate the new direction in which the Hive is going. He loved being more mean and aggressive rather than being more soft and kind to each other. So Starland and Trixie try their hardest to try and get Pharynx to adapt to the changes. Because not only am I the great and powerful, I am also the unscarable Trixie! It's cool that we get some more lore to the changelings. And we got to see how the Hive was doing with Thorax now being their leader. And it's crazy how much more lively this place is compared to how dark it was before. They even have a little feelings form where you can just vent about your problems to everyone. Everyone tries to help you in the best way possible. Like, I can't believe this used to be this at one point. But yeah, it was just cool to see all the changes the Hive has gone through. And Starly and Trixie were definitely the highlight here. Once again, proving to work really well together on screen and make for some good moments. Maybe we don't have to. Get Pharynx and meet me at the Hive entrance. I'll explain everything. And how am I supposed to know where Pharynx is? I just saw Pharynx. Oh, well that was easy. To change a changeling is going above hard to say anything. In case you're wondering, Pharynx did change by the end. All right, let's see what the Daring Dino episode for this season will be like. So Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie find out that AK Yearling, AKA Daring Do herself, is actually retiring. So they rush over to Daring Do's home to make sure she's doing all right. But as it turns out, the reason why she's retiring is because she feels like she causes more problems than she wants to. And this is due to a village in Southern Equestria being upset for this exact reason. So Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie must try to convince the village that Daring Do is a hero and should be treated as such. This is a pretty good Daring Do adventure once again. Pinkie Pie tagging along made the episode more fun for sure, but the adventure in general was also pretty cool. I also like the twist at the end, which was that Daring Do is actually just being framed by her arch nemesis, Cavaleron. Not much to say, just a super fun time. Rarity's man gets a little messy, and due to how hard it is to clean, she tries visiting Zakora to see if she could fix it. But Rarity ends up taking a magical remover potion instead of the shampoo and loses almost all of her mane. And so Rarity tries to hide her mane throughout the day and must get it fixed before a photo shoot that will be happening soon. Rarity really had it rough this episode, oh my god. But this was another good one. Putting Rarity, a pony who is very self-conscious about the way she looks, in this situation definitely made for an interesting time. And this one teaches a very good lesson too. Being that how you look does not define who you are at all. And Rarity's friends remind her of that. They don't care about how she looks. As long as she's the pony they all know and love, they still appreciate her. Rarity even took advantage of her main problems by the end and made a cool looking outfit, so that was nice too. One of the best Rarity episodes for sure. <laughs> Zakora comes down with a disease called Swamp Fever, and Fluttershy is desperate to find a cure. So she teams up with Twilight to find the cure to this disease so that Zakora can be cured. And Fluttershy is willing to find this cure, no matter what it takes. This is another one of those episodes which sounded fun just from the plot alone, but I ended up enjoying way more than I expected. Twilight and Fluttershy proved to work really well back in the Hooffields and McColt's episode, so it was inevitable that they'd work well here too. In fact, I think they were even better in this episode than the other one. Fluttershy was just willing to do anything to cure Zakora, even if it meant literally never sleeping. But Twilight is there to constantly remind her that she needs some rest and needs to also take care of herself, which is true. This episode executes the lesson of taking care of yourself pretty well, and it was just tons of fun. A health of information is gonna go below Discord and Harmony. The Cutie Mark Crusaders get the bright idea to start their very own Cutie Mark Day Camp, which would help other ponies get their Cutie Marks and various activities. The Cutie Mark Crusaders seem to have a little bit of a problem, and that is the fact that there is a pony who doesn't want a Cutie Mark and thinks they're a burden rather than a gift. And so the Cutie Mark Crusaders must try to convince him that Cutie Marks are in fact a gift rather than a curse. This, my friends, is what we like to call a decent episode not too bad but not like amazing either i did like the concept of the q mark day camp but other than that 
It's just fine. Above fame and misfortune. God, I was just not into this episode, like, at all. Which is rare for me to say, because usually these weaker episodes have some entertainment value, but this one had, like none at all twilight and her family attend a cruise for the purpose of having a nice little vacation but little do they know that the cruise is actually for hanging out with twilight so twilight must not only get some family time in but also some time with other ponies as well like i said i didn't find this one too fun or interesting the one interesting thing about this one was iron will returning but that was it this entire episode just makes you feel bad for twilight who did nothing wrong at all and just want to spend time with her family not many funny jokes in this one to save it either bottom of the list for season seven i did not really like this one at all okay this is probably gonna be another one of my hottest takes in this video but i actually like this episode yes i know i know put the pitchforks down i know the lesson is a little eh but i found this one to be pretty fun so after pinkie pie spots one of her pies for rainbow dash in the trash bars she thinks maybe rainbow dash hasn't actually been eating her pies and has been throwing them away the whole time this is because right before rainbow dash eats a pie she usually tries to distract pinkie in some way so that she doesn't see her hide the pie and it's pinkie's ultimate mission to find out whether this is the truth or she's just overthinking like crazy I think my main appeal for this one is just how fun it is, like other Pinky episodes. I know it's definitely my bias for Pinky, but she can just make any episode fun for me. We even get Detective Pinky back after not having appeared since way back in season two. Watching Pinky slowly lose her crap definitely gave me some Party of One vibes, and my god, the expressions here are sheesh yeah she's lost it but yeah this episode definitely has its flaws like again the lesson could have been a bit better but other than that it's just some good old pinky fun secrets and pies will be going below to change a change lane in this video i have called it spike at your service putting your hoof down and secrets and pies good i am so done for in the comments aren't i <laughs> Sunburst visits Ponyville, and Starlight is super excited to hang out with him, as she believes they have tons in common. But Sunburst ends up having fun with loads of ponies like Twilight, Maud, and Trixie. This leaves Starlight wondering if they even do have a lot in common anymore, or if things have changed. This is a pretty good episode, which teaches a very important life lesson. People can change. As you get older, your interests start to change, your personality starts to change, your looks start to change, every part of you changes. That's just the natural progression of growing up. And this episode shows that they're not like they were when they were younger. They have new interests now. But that does not mean that they still can't have fun together, as seen by the ending of this episode. So yeah, I like this one. The lesson was executed very well. And keep some burst journal at the end of this episode in mind. May be important for the season 7 finale. Speaking of which... No. So apparently the journal belongs to the one and only Star Swirl the Bearded, who Twilight is a huge fan of. And they discover that he, along with other ponies who were considered urban legends, sacrificed themselves to save Equestria from the Pony of Shadows and were all sent to Limbo for thousands of years. So Twilight really wants to save them from Limbo and bring them back to Ponyville. But as we can see from the cliffhanger, that didn't end so well. So already, we are starting off with something very interesting. So apparently all these urban legend ponies were real, along with the Pony in Shadows who was mentioned way back in Season 4 in the Castle episode. Well, that's quite a bit to take in. Now that's a bad thing. So far, I'm really digging where this plot is going. It's cool to actually see these heroes interact with Twilight and the others. Let's find out how every pony solves this conflict, shall we? So now that all of the heroes are back from Limbo, they must once again stop the Pony of Shadows with the help of Twilight and her friends. A Star Swirl isn't really too fond of Twilight after she freed everyone, including the Pony of Shadows. Twilight tries to reassure him that her method is the method that will have better results, but Star Swirl doesn't want to listen and wants to do things his way instead. But they end up listening to Twilight in the end after some convincing from her friends, and well, guess what? Things ended well. I know some people weren't really a fan of how Star Wars was super grumpy, but I personally didn't mind it all that much. I mean, they were basically stuck in a prison for thousands of years. I bet you'd be grumpy too. As far as finales go, this one isn't like the best one out there, but I still enjoyed it. It's cool that these heroes are here to stay, and hopefully we'll see more of them in the future. I understand this finale isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I personally had a good time with it. An interesting send off for the last season before things start to really change.
So season seven, the season where people say the show really started to decline. I can definitely say that this season wasn't as great as some of the others, but it's definitely not the weakest season of the show so far. Heck, the best episode in the season is up there with some of my favorites of the whole show so far. But at the same time, there were some episodes in here that really didn't hit for me, and some of them were even some of the worst of the whole show. It's definitely a bit of a mixed bag. If I could best describe this season, it'd be... It's pretty good. Not like a super amazing season or like an awesome season, but for what it was, pretty good. I can definitely tell that they're starting to use secondary characters more like Trixie and Thorax. Not a bad thing at all, but it definitely makes this season stand out from some of the others, which mainly involved the main six characters. But the next season is when things really change. New characters, new stories, a friendship school? Yeah, it sounds like a lot. So before we get into season eight, let's talk about the My Little Pony movie. Yup, we're even talking about the movie in this video. We ain't just covering the main series, no, 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 no. We gotta cover some other content too. And yes, I will be ranking a movie alongside 22 minute TV show episodes and there's nothing you can do about it. Anyways, yeah, in case you didn't know, My Little Pony has a movie. And how is it? Well, let's go over it first. So the plot of the movie is that Equestria is in danger due to the Storm King and a pony named Tempest Shadow, who wants to take over the kingdom. So the main six embark on a crazy adventure to try and save Equestria from these villains. As far as the plot goes, it's as you'd probably expect. There's some new villain threatening the lives of every pony, and so the main six go on an adventure to save every pony. As far as this adventure goes, I liked it a lot. There were a lot more stakes at hand, which makes sense considering that this was a whole movie. And not gonna lie, this kind of felt dark for an MLP adventure. You have this pony whose horn is literally half chopped off and is literally turning every pony into stone and stealing the power from them. That's not even mentioning how dark the atmosphere gets when the villains arrive. And we even have a little fake out death with Twilight, but she obviously lives and saves the day. I think me and many others favorite part about this movie is the animation. The animation for this movie is absolutely gorgeous. It's so lively, bouncy, colorful, it really made the movie so much better. You obviously can't go wrong with the classic flash animation for the show, but man, this animation style is awesome. It just gives even more life to this world and its characters and really helps separate the movie from the show. It's a different style and I appreciate it a lot. The story itself was also super fun. I love me a good old main six adventure and that's exactly what this movie was. And they travel really far in this one. What's that friend? We're lost? <laughs> so we get to see tons of new locations and characters along the way who actually do end up serving an important role in the story later on you also have the infamous scene of twilight and pinky arguing about twilight stealing the one thing they needed to save equestria from the hippogriffs instead of earning their trust first now what i find interesting about this scene is people tend to either say twilight was in the wrong Pinky was in the wrong, or both were in the wrong. So who you think was in the wrong entirely depends on what you'd probably do in that situation. It's pretty much all left up for the viewers to decide who was wrong. And in case you're curious, I think both sides definitely could have done better. Yes, Twilight should have trusted her friends a bit and let them earn the trust of the hippogriffs, but at the same time, Pinky should have understood that Twilight was just super desperate and was trying to do whatever she could to save Equestria. Remember, she's a princess, so that's gotta be a lot of responsibility on her back. So instead of arguing, they should have just talked it out with each other. But that's just my take on this scene. Anyways, the movie does end with Tempest, Shadow, and Twilight making up, which was nice. The villain redemption in MLP always felt satisfying, and this one was no exception. It was a good ending to what was a fantastic movie. If I had one criticism, though, it's that some characters definitely don't serve a super important purpose of the story, especially Fluttershy and Applejack. Most of the other main six members definitely served some purpose in the story, but some didn't quite, and I wish all six of them played a big role in the story. Not really a big complaint, but it definitely would have made the movie even better if all the main six members had an important role in the story, other than helping Twilight, of course. But yeah, the My Little Pony movie was really good. I love the animation, the story, the characters, the songs. It was all a delight to watch. I definitely recommend watching this movie, even if you don't like My Little Pony. Who knows? You might end up having a great time. All right, now on to season eight. In case you were wondering, the intro is still the same. 
but it won't be for long. Anyways, after the wild adventure that was the movie and meeting a bunch of new creatures, the main six decide to open a school about friendship where every creature can learn about it. However, in order for Twilight to be able to keep the school open, she must follow some very strict guidelines by the EEA, aka the Equine Education Association. So the main six try to manage the school and make sure they don't do anything that goes against the EEA guidelines so that a pony named Naysay doesn't close down the school. But this proves to be pretty difficult. If you're wondering what I think of the friendship school so far, I think it's fine. Nothing that like amazes me, but it's not the worst thing ever. I assume that in part two, the main six won't have to follow the guidelines anymore or something, so the school might be a bit more interesting then. But for right now, it's just all right. But the premiere itself so far, not bad. It was cool that this episode pretty much recaps the events of the movie at the beginning, not only to give you a little recap, but to also help connect the movie to the show. We also meet the young six in this episode, who, as you probably guessed, are just the main six, but with students from the friendship school. So far, I find them all right, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, let's just move on to part two to see where the friendship school will be going. Naysay closes down the friendship school due to not finding it to be very safe and also thinking that it should be for only ponies. So Twilight must find a way to bring back the friendship school and fight against the EEA. As usual, part two was way better than the first part. Although I feel like this is definitely one of the more forgettable premieres, especially since even after this part, I'm still not too big on the friendship school concept. I just feel like it's gonna make the show even more busy than it already was. Like you had the castle, the cutie mark map, Starlight, that was good enough. But now with this friendship school the show just seems like it has too much going on and i don't know how it'll affect future episodes like what if the map calls one of the main six members are they just gonna have to like leave class or something hopefully we'll see how that works later on but yeah this premiere wasn't bad but it's definitely one of the weaker premieres again that's mainly because i'm not too big on the whole friendship school thing but hey maybe it'll get better as the season goes along i guess we'll have to find out <laughs> Yeah, see, this is the new intro I was talking about earlier. And this is easily the biggest change they made to the intro yet. Instead of it being Twilight arriving in Ponyville and meeting the main six and the picture being taken, all that jazz, they make the Friendship School the center of the attention. While I definitely prefer the older intros, I can appreciate this one for showing us how far these characters have come. You could see many secondary characters like Maud, Big Mac, Sugar Bell. It's cool. However, one thing that I did notice is that they pretty much just use the exact audio from the old intro for this one. Like when the Friendship School shows up, you can still hear the whoosh sound that Rainbow Dash makes at the beginning of the old intro like bro i'm never gonna be able to unhear that anyways enough talking about the intro pinkie pie finds out that mod actually has a boyfriend whose name is mudbriar but there seems to be a little bit of a problem pinkie isn't quite a big fan of mudbriar after he held up the line a little bit at a cake shop Pinky tries to get along with Mudbriar, but it doesn't quite seem to work out. I think my favorite part of this one was Pinky getting so annoyed because of Mudbriar's technically lines. Like, this pony is literally just the nerd emoji, bro. But yeah, this episode was pretty good. Not the best Pinky or Mod episode out there, but it was fun for what it was. We even got to go back to the rock farm for a little bit. The Mod couple is going above the last. <laughs> Rarity asks Fluttershy to take over her boutique while she is out, but Fluttershy has no idea how to manage the boutique in a professional manner, so she tries to get her confidence up by playing several different characters that cater to specific customers. She gets a little too carried away with these characters, however, and Rarity and the others must try to figure out how to get her to stop. This is for sure one of the funniest Fluttershy episodes in the entire series. Her interactions with the customers while playing these characters were just way too good. It's a totally live ensemble with the little, like, thingies that sparkle and make the whole squad go whoa that pony is woke like i said in newbie dash i love seeing different spins on the characters you know and love and seeing fluttershy in these different ways really made this episode a fun experience it's also the reason we have goth fluttershy so that's a plus what a fun one this was actually you're like totally terminated as well like okay <sighs> well i'm glad that's over <laughs> closes this week forever but i can't go to las pegasus because i have to teach at twilight school looks like we're already starting to see just how many conflicts the friendship school is causing rainbow dash begs applejack to take over her classes so that she can ride a roller coaster over at last pegasus before it closes for good applejack agrees to take over her classes but under one condition 
Rainbow Dash must take some grannies along for the ride. So she spends the day with the grannies at Last Pegasus while also trying to get on the roller coaster in the process. This one was pretty good too. Last Pegasus was definitely a really fun looking location in Viva Last Pegasus, and it's no different here. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this episode was literally written in Las Vegas. That probably helped. I liked exploring some of the fun activities you could do here. And Rainbow Dash just trying to get on the roller coaster was a fun story as well. Not much to say. Another pretty good episode. Also, I wonder why they look so familiar. Hmm. The Cumor Crusaders have their first ever map mission, and they must help a hippogriff with figuring out where they should live. Twilight also tags along, as the Cumor Crusaders obviously can't just go all this way alone. Hopefully this isn't really a hot take, but I just found this episode to be, well kind of boring maybe it's just me not having much of an interest in the hippogriffs but i don't know i just didn't find much appeal to this one other than like the saw and the sea mount areas and sea quest you're on the show's flash style it was cool that the Qmark crusaders got a map adventure instead of the main six but i really did not find much appeal to this episode sadly sorry y'all but this episode will be going at the bottom of the season eight list Now, here's the super entertaining and fun episode. Twilight and the others try to set up a school play for the students to watch, and Twilight decides to cast Celestia as the main star, as it has always been her dream to act. But her acting skills aren't quite the greatest. But Twilight doesn't want to tell Celestia that, so she tries to keep the play going with Celestia as the main star. The main reason why I found this one so enjoyable was because it was another one of those episodes where it's about the main six working together. We get to see them help out with the play and also help out with Twilight's dilemma. That looks unsafe. Why would untested magic fireworks that I bought in a back alley from Trixie at midnight be unsafe? I also like seeing Celestia do something other than princess duties for once. We don't get that a lot, and it's a nice little refresher. All in all, a pretty good episode. Top of the season 8 list. Hopefully there's more like this coming up. Starlight and Sunburst are called by the map to their hometown, but they have no idea what the friendship problem is. Along the way, they come across their parents, who they find very annoying, and we get to see how they deal with them. Honestly, I didn't really get a kick out of this one. I think this is the first Starlight episode that I consider below average in quality. It's just not all that fun to watch. It's just a bunch of Starlight and Sunburst arguments with their parents, and it's not very entertaining. The parent map will be going at the bottom of the Season 8 list. Man, some of these episodes seem to have been way weaker than past seasons. Let's hope the quality picks up soon, because this isn't looking too amazing. And the quality continues to decrease. How fantastic. Grandmadash and Applejack both have to lead a field trip about teamwork, but they both want to teach the students different things. So pretty much this entire episode is spent seeing Rainbow Dash and Applejack argue over what to do during the field trip. This episode sucks yeah that is the first time i've said an episode just straight up sucked in this entire video it took eight seasons but we finally got an episode which i consider just awful it is so unpleasant to watch the entire time like rainbow dash and applejack basically got reverted to their season one selves for this episode i thought we were way past the stage of them arguing over petty stuff like this and there's even one part in this episode where they literally put the students in danger and yet they just continue to argue like how do you make your characters this unlikable usually in these weaker episodes there's some entertainment value i get out of them but in this one i got absolutely none this episode was just so infuriating to watch and i totally recommend avoiding it altogether worst episode of the entire show so far it sucks thank god a good episode really needed one after whatever that was anyways it's hearts and hooves day once again and big mac wants to have a good day with sugar bell and has some plans for what to do with her however he manages to overhear her talking with mrs cake and it seems like sugar bell is actually playing to break up with him i really like the episode with big mac trying to earn sugar bell's love and this episode was even better than that one there's tons of fun to be had in this one with spike discord and the qmark crusaders also being involved i like the little subplots we get in this one with spike trying to teach discard about the importance of hearts and who's day and sweetie bell thinking she has a secret admirer we even get some good old ogres and oubliettes action in here there we got set correctly on the first try and big mac and sugar bell were super cute in this one if you enjoyed hard to say anything i think you'll definitely get a kick out of this one new best episode of the season by the way sugar bell wasn't actually playing a break up with big mac he just heard that out of context and was a misunderstanding okay moving on <laughs> 
Spike starts to realize that weird red spots are appearing all over him and is confused about what is going on. According to Smolder, this is completely normal and it's just a sign of Dragon is getting a bit older. Basically, Spike is going through Dragon puberty. And so we see how Spike deals with all this happening to him. This was another good Spike episode. He actually manages to get wings of his own in this one, so we'll probably see him flying a bit in the future. I honestly can't think of anything else to say for this one. It was just interesting to see how Spike adapted to the new changes he was going through. And it's cool that Spike seems to be actually growing up now. I'll be putting Molt down below the mod couple. The Cumber Crusaders really like Twilight's new school and want to get into it and switch from their old school due to Twilight seeming more fun. But since the Cumber Crusaders already know so much about friendship, Twilight doesn't allow them to attend the school. This results in the Cumber Crusaders trying various different methods on how to get into the school. Hey, why don't you look at that? This episode wasn't bad either. I swear, this is so weird, man. We will get like a pretty boring or just an awful episode pretty close to each other, and then the episodes just start to get better again out of nowhere. This season's quality so far is just a constant up and down so odd. Anyways, yeah, this episode was pretty good too. We even get introduced to a new pony named Cozy Glow, who the Q-Mark Crusaders help out a little bit. Now, you might want to keep Cozy Glow in mind because she may or may not actually be a very important character later on. But yeah, this episode will be going below the last. <laughs> Queen Chrysalis is back once again and wants revenge on Starlight and the main six. She ends up creating clones of the main six to try and help her out, and they end up meeting the real main six members. What we see for the rest of the episode is the main six's retreat going a bit south because of everyone believing the clones are their actual selves and arguments starting because of it. This one was pretty fun. I like seeing how everyone responded to the clone versions and all their situations tied together pretty well by the end. The clones themselves were pretty funny too, and I like how they acted just like the main six did when Discord hypnotized them. The retreat is itself isn't all that exciting obviously, but the main six interactions with the clones made it a fun time. Also, Pinky, Comfort, and Fluttershine, this one was very sweet. Going above the mod couple. After all of the main six get called by the map, Twilight leaves Starlight to be in charge of the friendship school, but it turns out Discord really wanted to be the one in charge instead. So because of his jealousy, he makes Starlight's job super difficult for her. This one was alright, but I really don't get why Discord acted like the way he did in this one. He kind of felt like his season 3 of 4 self, where he wasn't like taking over the world or whatever, but definitely still caused a lot of annoyances for some. Like nowadays, he obviously does some chaotic things. I mean, that's his whole character. But here it just felt a bit much. This is one of those episodes where I think this type of plot would have worked way better earlier on than the show. Season 8 is way too late for Discord to still be causing this much trouble for someone. Again, this episode is alright. I found it a bit fun at points like the scavenger hunt, but I just felt Discord's behavior was a bit too petty here. Hello? Um, what exactly is a long distance plan? The young six are about to go on break for horror swarming. However, one of the students pull a prank and Twilight has no idea who did it. So she has all of the young six clean up the mess while she talks to each one of them to find out who pulled the prank. And in the meantime, we get... A bunch of stories about the students' old Harps Warning memories put together. Once again, this type of episode where it's just a compilation of stories just doesn't work for MLP in my opinion. Much like Campfire Tales, it just feels kind of boring. The first few minutes of this one make you think it might actually be a little interesting and could even be a good old detective episode, kind of like Rarity Investigates. But then it just turns into another anthology episode and you're sitting there like... That's it? I will say that I think Gallus' story was actually pretty interesting and was pretty sad, but the rest of them, I didn't really care too much. The Harvest Warming Club will be going above surf and or turf. I really hope these anthology episodes don't become a new trend for these last seasons. Twilight discovers that there is apparently another friendship school up in Karawa and is shocked to learn this information. So she and Rarity head down to the school, only to find out that not only is Star Swole the bearded enrolled here, but the school itself is owned by... Flim and Flam.
I bet you saw it coming from a mile away. And so Twilight must once again expose their scams. Yeah, so we're back to Flim and Flam just being the same old scammers. This is like, what, the third episode of Flim and Flam scamming people and a pony trying to expose them. We've seen this a billion times already, and it wasn't even that good the first time. They even suggest the idea of the school actually being legitimate and Flim and Flam actually changing their ways. But then you find out that was just a big lie from them and they're still the exact same characters they've always been. I think it would have been way better if maybe this episode actually did redeem Flim and Flam and they stopped their scamming ways. It would be a nice little send off for them. But no, just another episode we've technically seen like twice already. Friendship University is going above the last. If we get another Flim and Flam scamming people episode, I'm actually going to lose it, bro. <laughs> While Rarity and Rainbow Dash try to teach the students a friendship lesson, they realize they don't have much in common and start to dislike each other as a result. And so now Twilight must figure out a plan on how to get Rarity and Rainbow Dash to start arguing. This episode is just stupid. It's like a slightly better version of non-compete clause, but I use the word slightly very lightly. Similar to that episode, it just feels like they're acting like their season one selves rather than their current selves. Their season one selves argued a bit more because they just became friends and were still figuring things out. But we are eight whole seasons into this show. These petty arguments stopped ages ago. These episodes where the characters just act like their past selves just makes it seem like they haven't developed at all, which is obviously not true. We've seen many developments with every character. 70s episodes this late into the show is just ridiculous and stupid. This episode is super dumb. Going above non-compete clause, but my god, this one's almost just as bad. This episode is awful. Just god awful. There are literally zero redeeming qualities. This episode is straight up hot garbage. Let me tell you why. So, Pinkie Pie starts to get addicted to an instrument from Yak Yakistan, the Uvidaphone. However, she isn't quite that good at it and starts to cause disruptions from all across Ponyville. So, her friends eventually tell her to just stop playing altogether instead of, I don't know, helping her get better? That's not the worst part, though. We're not even done yet. So, Pinkie gets a little upset that she can't play her instrument anymore and want to know what she does not soon after? She plans to leave Ponyville. Yeah, I'm not kidding. She gets so upset that she is willing to leave behind her home. So our friends must track Pinky down and cheer her up so that she can return to Ponyville. This episode is just an absolute mess and I hated it. So let me start with the biggest problem, Pinky's characterization. The way she acts in this episode is just so out of character that actually just baffles me how this idea was even made. Like it is so stupid that Pinky wants to leave behind her friends in her home just because she can't play this random instrument anymore. Hey, remember that episode back in season six where she literally sold her most prized possession her party cannon yeah guess what she doesn't get this upset and moves away from her friends she still tries to have a fun day with mod and rarity so why is it different here i don't get it and then there's the whole thing with her friends just telling her to stop playing all together like yeah she was definitely disrupting every pony and definitely needed to know that but telling her to just stop playing it all together it's just not what they should have done at all what they should have done instead was help pinky get better at at it so that she can play your instrument and Ponyville will actually enjoy it. If this episode was instead all about something like Pinky thinking she can improve at the Yavita phone on her own, but realizes that help from her friends could help a lot more, it would have been way better and pretty cool, actually. Because it would basically be like not asking for trouble, but Pinky is the one thinking she doesn't need help instead. But nope, we just had to get this garbage instead. Give me another. But Pony already had 25 ice cream. Ice! Hey guys, get it? She's drunk. Everything about this episode is horrible. The story, Pinky being out of character, the lesson. This is a really bad episode of MLP. New worst episode of the whole show. I'll be shocked if anything manages to be worse. Thank god we finally have an actual good episode i swear man we were on like a whole streak of low quality episodes and then they just dropped this banner out of nowhere let's embrace this episode while we can before we sadly likely go back to mediocrity trixie is offered to host one of her magic shows all the way in saddle arabia with it being so far away trixie doesn't want to go alone and so she decides to bring starlight along with her for the adventure but along the way they run into many problems and their friendship starts to fall apart as a result if you're a fan of Starling and Trixie like me, I think you'll enjoy this episode a lot. It's just some good old Starling and Trixie fun. I love seeing these two go on this adventure, and they were pretty funny here as per usual. Starlight! Starlight! I think there's a wild animal! 
on the left side. <laughs> It's nice to have an episode which is fully dedicated to Starlight and Trixie, because usually there are other main characters alongside them. But no, this entire episode is just the two of them. I like Starlight, I like Trixie, an episode dedicated to both of them, sign me up. New best episode of the season, no doubt. It's good that even in this season, we can still get some banger episodes like this one. Scootaloo starts to become obsessed with a new flight group, the Washouts. They do a bit more dangerous and wild stunts than the Wonderbolts, which Scootaloo enjoys way more. She loves the Washouts so much, in fact, that she actually wants to be one of them too. But Rainbow Dash isn't quite the biggest fan of all this, considering she enjoyed getting so much support from Scootaloo and every pony else. You know what? This episode was pretty good too. I know these might be flukes though, so I'm not getting my hopes up for the season improving too much. For what this episode was, wasn't too bad. It was cool seeing a new flight group other than the Wonderbolts, because as far as I know this is literally the only flight group we've seen in the whole show other than the Wonderbolts. I'm honestly shocked they didn't do something like this sooner. Having a competitor to the Wonderbolts seems like an idea they do from the very beginning. But regardless, I had an alright time with this one. Going below the mod couple. With Rockhoof being in limbo for thousands of years, the world has obviously changed a lot since then, and so he must try to adapt to the modern world. However, with him still being used to the way things were in the past, he struggles with this a lot and starts to question his purpose in life. He even gets to the point where he wants Twilight to turn him into stone forever. You can probably guess what this is an allegory for. I don't think they handled that aspect the best, but everything else was alright. I like seeing Rockhoof try out many different things, and the ending for this one was really sweet, with everyone loving his stories. This one was another alright one. The young six are trying to study for an exam, but then they suddenly find this mysterious area beneath the school. They get intrigued by this, so they go into it, only to realize that it's a test about overcoming your fears to help your friends. This episode isn't horrible, but I didn't really have much interest while watching it. I think that's just because I don't really find the young six to be super interesting characters. Some of the characters like Yona are definitely a bit more interesting, but they just don't have the chemistry the main six have. I think one of the reasons why I feel this way is because they don't really give the individual students their own episodes. With the main six, you got to really explore what each pony was like with their individual episodes. But it seems the Yun 6 episodes are just all about them together, so we don't get to really explore each creature individually. They were just subtly introduced in the show was like, you're gonna like them, trust me. I don't hate them, obviously, but I just wish that we were able to explore each character a bit more instead of just always watching them at once. I guess this episode kind of explores each of them individually, but only for a brief amount of time, as they obviously have to share the screen time with the others. Sorry for my little tangent, but that's just my thoughts on the Yun 6 so far. Anyways, this episode will be going below Friendship University. Didn't find this one too interesting. Sorry. Yes, but actually... Come on! We're burning daylight! I know, but what I found out is that- Now we gotta get up that peak! I figured if we use some rope and elbow grease, we can make it up half- Applejack! Can you please listen to me? Oh my god. <laughs> Wanna know something funny? This episode just made me realize how long it's been since we've gone a map episode with main six members. It's been a bit. Anyways, Fluttershy and Applejack are called by the map to a little village with ponies called Kieran, where it seems that they all, for some reason, are completely silent. Applejack eventually meets a Kieran who loves talking named Autumn Blaze, and it's revealed that every Kieran is silent due to the village burning down a while back due to some harsh words being thrown at each other, which made them burst into flames of anger. So it is up to Fluttershy and Applejack to try and restore the village to its former glory. Just like the other map episodes, this was a really good one. We got to explore a new location I thought the idea of a completely silent village was cool. Fluttershy and Applejack were great here once again as well. Maybe they know something we don't. Now, Fluttershy, I've told you a dozen times, there's nothing to be scared. Ah! There was also Autumn Blaze, who I thought was an alright character. Similar to Gabby, she gave off tons of Pinkie Pie energy. Overall, another great map adventure. It's nice to see one of these again. Sounds of Silence is going below the Breakup Breakdown. I had a fun time with this one. <laughs> random dragon crashes in Ponyville and claims to actually be Spike's father. Spike is super excited about this, obviously, as he has never met his parents before. Spike's quote-unquote father then starts to teach Spike about how to be a real dragon, and Spike loses sight of his true self in the process. Now, notice how I said quote-unquote father. Well, 
That's because it turns out this dragon isn't actually his father. So if you expected to actually meet Spike's father in this episode, you just got clickbaited. Yeah, this one wasn't too great. The dragon pretending to be Spike's father wasn't really an enjoyable character. Not just because he pretty much scammed Spike, but he just wasn't really funny or interesting. He pretty much acted like almost every other dragon in the show. I'm your father. <gasps> I wouldn't be surprised if people forgot this one even existed because this is a pretty forgettable episode. Not the worst, but I wasn't a big fan either. Father knows Beast is going below surf and or turf. Now on to the season finale. Please be good. So the magic in Equestria suddenly starts to stop working and they have no idea what is going on. The main six think possibly T-Rex could have something to do with this, so they head off to Tartarus to see if he has done anything or gone anywhere. Meanwhile, back at the Friendship School, Nisei returns and thinks the magic is disappearing because of some of the students not being ponies. And it's revealed that it wasn't actually T-Rex making the magic disappear, but Cozy Glow. Yeah, now you know why she's actually a pretty important character. Thankfully so far, this finale looks like it'll be pretty good. The main six adventure is pretty fun so far, and the stuff at the Friendship School is interesting too don't worry twilight i got this free pizza delivery ah! i also like how the cumor crusaders are actually heavily involved in this one too with cozy glow now revealed to be a villain i wonder what's gonna happen with her guess we'll have to find out in part two The main six learned about Cozy Glow stealing the magic thanks to T-Rex spilling the beans, and so the main six must now get out of Tartarus and get back to the school to stop Cozy Glow. However, they cannot seem to get out. Meanwhile, Cozy Glow continues to steal magic from everyone, and everyone must stop her. Honestly, what a good finale. I actually liked it a lot. All of the stuff that goes on in this one is pretty fun. Naysay also has a bit of a turnaround in this one and allows for the school to be more diverse. Still don't really like him though. It was also interesting to see T-Rex again, as we haven't seen him since the season 4 finale when he was defeated. The season 5 finale doesn't count. I know he appeared in that. But yeah, it was interesting to see how he was doing in Tartarus. The main six were fun as per usual, and it was cool the young six were the ones who managed to stop Cozy Low. This was a pretty good finale. A good way to end off what was a very mediocre season. This is the new worst season of the show for sure. The consistency with the quality in this one was so weird. Like you could have a few pretty good episodes and then the quality randomly completely nosedives and get a ton of mediocre or even just god awful episodes in a row. There were only a few episodes in this season which I could say were really good. Most of them were either mediocre or just some of the worst of the entire show. My opinions on the friendship school for sure still stand. Like I said, it just makes everything feel so much more bloated. The past seasons already had enough going on but man the school just made things even more crowded and the school concept itself i'm not really big on again like i've said mlp is a show about adventure and learning lessons and i really like the adventure aspect but obviously being out of school isn't very adventurous so this just leads to many of the episodes that take place at the school being not so interesting to me at all not only because of that but in some of the school episodes some of the characters just acted really out of character there were some good school episodes like horseplay because that one actually characterized the main six in the way they normally are but in most of the other school episodes episodes or even just regular episodes they just act so out of character and it gets really annoying to watch i could definitely see why many consider this to be the worst season of the show with how inconsistent and the quality is and how many bad episodes are in here it could be a bit of a pain to get through thankfully like i said there were some gems like sounds of silence and on the road to friendship but for the most part this was a very mediocre season season nine is up next and is the final season of the whole show i bet there's gonna be lots that will happen in this one to wrap up the show and hopefully it'll be way better than this season It'll hopefully be fun, wild, and pretty emotional. So to prepare for the final season of the entire show, let's check out the Christmas special, Best Gift Ever. Yeah, so after season 8, they decided to make a 40-minute Christmas special. I enjoyed the Harvest Warring episodes a lot, so a full special about it seemed like it would be a good time. And spoiler alert, it was. So let's talk about it for a little bit, shall we? So for Harvest Warring this year, the main six and Spike, decide to do something a little bit different. They decide to do what is called a heartwarming helper, where every pony is assigned a pony and they must get just one gift for that pony. So everyone goes on an epic search in order to find the best gift ever. I already said that I liked this special, but I didn't just find it pretty good or all right. 
I actually really like this special. For comparison, I think it's actually better than the movie. I guess the reason why I like this one so much is it's a horsewarming episode, which I've already stated multiple times. I love horsewarming episodes. And it's a nearly hour-long special. It's the best of both worlds. I just found it so much fun with us seeing how each of the characters try to find their best gifts. I think they gave each character the perfect amount of screen time, and none really got more or less than the other. There was one scene with Flim and Flam, but thankfully it doesn't drag on for too long, and we don't get another super long musical number from them, so I didn't mind it all that much this time. It's full episodes dedicated to that, which I have a problem with. Another thing we get in this episode is a funny little scene with Derpy. Why is that a ruby? Because Applejack's not in Sweet Acorn Orchard. Do you want me to get the package and deliver it to her? No! It's really funny how many voices Derpy has had. I'm assuming it's related to the controversy surrounding her, with many parents finding her offensive to disabled people, which... It's kind of stupid. Like, your character wasn't making fun of them or anything. What do you want about? But yeah, I guess they changed her voice as a result of that controversy or something. But hey, she sounds just fine here. Derpy is Derpy, and she's still an S-tier pony. Anyways, moving on from Derpy, we also get some good old Discord action in this special. And as usual, he brought some nice comedy for us. He also tries to help Rainbow Dash find the perfect gift for Fluttershy, and he, of course... Fixed an animal that turns into a beast. Classic Discord. But yeah, each of their adventures to find the perfect gift were all super fun. Rarity's was actually pretty sweet, with her gift that was meant to Applejack ending up being given to a different pony, as the gift was accidentally sent there. But Rarity decides to let the pony keep the gift, which was very nice of her, and was definitely a highlight for this special. And at the end of this special, we get a nice little song from Spike, which I liked. The song at the beginning was also pretty good. And one more fact about this special I'd like to talk about is that to help advertise it, there is a whole phone line you could call, and you could hear how the main six were doing while trying to find the best gift ever. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? It's me, Fluttershy. I'm supposed to be choosing the best gift ever, but I've been having a little trouble. A lot of trouble, actually. The problem is, there's so many presents to choose from. They're all so wonderful in their own ways. And whichever I choose, well, the other presents, they might feel left out. I don't want to hurt any present's feelings, so I choose all of them. <laughs> I hope your heart's warming is filled with hugs from every pony you love, and some critter hugs, too. Thanks so much for calling. Bye-bye. However, nowadays this phone line doesn't exist anymore, so you unfortunately can't call Pinkie Pie and hear chaos going on in the background anymore. Anyways, I think overall, this was a super solid special. If you like the Harvest Warring episodes and don't mind watching a 40 minute special, I think you'll enjoy it. It's got a fun story, it's pretty sweet, and has some good musical numbers. Best Gift Ever is honestly one of my favorite things I've watched from the show so far. Near the top of the whole list. Alright, who's ready for some season 9? Yo, sorry if my voice sounds kind of off for this section. I kind of had a fever recently, so uh, if you hear, like, my voice go weird at times, then it's because it's remnants of that, so, yeah. Well, here we are. We are at the final season of the whole show. Before we start reviewing this episode, I'd just like to thank you if you've watched this far. And also, please tell me you're enjoying this video. <laughs> Anyways, it is revealed that Celestia and Luna are actually going to retire and leave Twilight in charge. Meanwhile, an old villain named Grogar groups up some of the show's past villains, and they all plan to take over Equestria and stop the main six once and for all. This is a really promising start. Literally the first episode of the season, and yet the stakes seem to be already be pretty high. Celestia and Luna are retiring, a group of old villains, even King Sombra returning? I'm really digging what is going on so far. And we even get a crazy cliffhanger, with the Tree of Harmony literally being destroyed to bits. Wanna know what happens next? Yeah, me too. Sombra continues to try and take over Equestria, and the main six must figure out what to do now that the Tree of Harmony is destroyed. And we see just how Sombra takes advantage of this, with him possessing tons of ponies. This is easily my new favorite premiere. The amount of stakes at hand in this one really had me on the edge of my seat. Like, you have several parts where the main six start to burst into tears because of what is happening, and the little tree of harmony getting destroyed. You would not see stuff like this happen in an average premiere. But the high stakes in this one just made it all of that more fun. 
Sombra's defeat really felt like Nightmare Moon's defeat way back in the first premiere, which was a nice little throwback. Kind of like a full circle thing, you know? All in all, this is a really good start to the season. With how crazy this premiere already was, I have no idea just how crazy the finale might be. The young six are called by the Tree of Harmony, only to find out that it has been destroyed as seen in the premiere. And so the young six want to try and memorialize it in the best way possible. I know I said I wasn't too interested in the young six, but this was an alright episode. It was sweet seeing this group try to memorialize one of the most iconic parts of the show. We also get to see the Tree House of Harmony, which I think has a cool design. There's no doubt that I'm gonna miss the Tree of Harmony though, but I can still appreciate the Tree House of Harmony for what it is. This was an overall decent episode. Nothing too crazy, but I thought it was all right. After King Sombra's return, Shining Armor helps to make the Candlelock Castle a little bit more secure, but he needs someone to test his defenses so that he knows they're good enough, and so he assigns Twilight a special task. If she can get past all of the defenses and steal a crown, she officially earns the label of Sibling Supreme forever. This competition is inspired off of what Twilight and Shining Armor used to do when they were younger. They would do some competitions, and by the end of the week, the pony who won the most competitions would earn the label of Sibling Supreme. This is a title that Twilight really really wants to keep, so she asks for help from her friends so that they can successfully pull off this heist. There are tons of fun aspects in this one. It was cool to learn more about Twilight and Shining Armor's childhood, and I loved all of Twilight's friends' wacky ways of trying to help her get the crown. It's once again just some good old main six fun, and I really enjoyed it because of that. The way this one ended was pretty sweet too, with Spike being the one to steal the crown and earn the title Sibling Supreme. Very good episode, season 9 is looking very promising so far. Twilight finds an old book which she forgot to return to the Canterlot Library and has had for years. She also finds out that the librarian who used to work there, Dusty Pages, lost her job because someone never returned a book. So Twilight thinks that she is at fault for Dusty Pages losing her job and must make things right. This was a pretty adventurous episode, I liked that. We got to learn more about Twilight's life in Canterlot and how she was special for returning every single library book on time. I like how this episode goes from Twilight trying to return her book to trying to make things right with the old librarian. It's cool. This one was pretty interesting. Gonna go above Uprooted. From Ponyville. Do you think they know we're here? I think they have a pretty good idea. Quibble Pants is back, and it turns out he has a new special sun pony and a daughter. But he and his daughter can't quite seem to get along due to his daughter loving sports, but Quibble Pants not really being into sports. So Rainbow Dash does whatever she can to help Quibble Pants bond with his daughter. I liked how we revisited the Buckball stuff from Season 6, as I really enjoyed that episode, as you all know. I didn't think they'd actually revisit it, so it was a pleasant surprise. Quibble Pants was definitely better in this episode, in my opinion. Rather than the same old... Uh, this adventure is obviously fake, but nice try. We get a nice little story about a father just trying to have a good relationship with his daughter. It's sweet. Overall, this is another good episode. Common Ground is going above the last. Ah, see, now here is an episode solely dedicated to one Young Six member. Sandbar asks Yona to a dance at the friendship school, but Yona doesn't feel that she'll fit in that much. So she asks for help from Rarity and the others on how to have a good time at the dance. Good! Now, black, green, red, and blue. Red, black, hold one and two. Red, blue, red once more. Green, black, blue, red three and four. Ah! Yona feel like she has four more feet! This was actually a pretty solid episode. It definitely helps that it's not only solely dedicated to one Yun Six member so we can really explore their character more, but it's dedicated to my favorite Yun Six member, Yona. There's just tons of fun to be had in this one. Each main Six member trying to help out Yona was a really fun aspect. It's another episode which teaches you about staying true to yourself and how being someone you're not can affect you and the others around you. The ending was pretty sweet too. Overall, actually a really good episode that helps explore Yona's character more. See, if they just did more of these, I think I'd grow to appreciate the Young Six just a little bit more. But oh well, what can you do? Second best of the season so far. Rogar is sick and tired of... <coughs> Rogar is sick and tired of T-Rex, Cozy Glow, and Chrysalis arguing all the time and wants them to get along. So Grogar sends the three on a mission to retrieve his old bewitching belt at the top of Mountain Everhoof. 
and he wants the three to work together in order to retrieve it. Honestly, I wasn't too into this one. It's cool we got an episode dedicated to these villains, but it wasn't really that funny or interesting. I just don't think these guys are funny enough to carry an entire episode. The one part I did like was the song, but everything else, I wasn't really digging it. Not an offensively bad episode, but it's another one where I just find it to be kind of boring. Bottom of the list for season nine, I just, I, I don't have much to say. <laughs> Spike, Smolder, and Fluttershy head off to the dragon land so that they can cheer up Smolder's brother, who actually turns out to be Garble, that one dragon who just loves to pick on Spike. Meanwhile, Fluttershy tries to figure out why the baby dragon eggs aren't hatching. I never really liked Garble as a character, as he just felt like his entire personality was picking on Spike. But I actually really like this episode. It's real that this whole time, Garble only picked on Spike to fit in with the other dragons, when in reality, Garble enjoys doing other stuff that most dragons would probably make fun of him for. It really reminds me of the movie Wonder, where Jack Will makes fun of Augie to fit in. Both of these stories teach the lesson of not only being true to yourself, but that it doesn't matter if you don't think you fit in. What's important is staying true to yourself, no matter what others may think. And people actually like Garble's true self by the end, so he got a pretty good ending. I'm glad that we got some closure to Garble, as some other antagonistic characters just don't seem to change. <coughs> Anyways, I enjoyed both that story and Fluttershy trying to help the eggs hatch. And speaking of Fluttershy, guess what this episode also had? Excuse me, but that's not a very nice game. <laughs> I nearly got you! Enough! Assertive Fluttershy, baby, let's go! Anyways, yeah, this episode was pretty good. It was a good closure for Garble's character, and it was pretty fun. Sweet and Smokey's going below, she's all yak. While well, Applejack is busy trying to plan for an important harvest, Applebloom is obsessed with trying to catch the Great Seedling, a spirit that can help with harvesting. But Applejack doesn't quite believe in the Great Seedling and tries to continue with the harvest. But she eventually gives in and helps Applebloom set up traps so that they can catch this magical spirit. This was actually a pretty sweet one. Applejack at first just tries to tell Applebloom it's all a myth, but she realizes how much fun Applebloom is having setting up all these traps, so Applejack decides to join in to have fun with her sister. I enjoyed seeing all the different traps they set up, and it was cool to hear about another old pony's tale. I don't have much more to say, so I'll just say I had an alright time with this one. Nothing too amazing, but for what it was, I had a good time. <laughs> Starlight starts to get exhausted from her role as guidance counselor at the school, with her being available at all times. She tries to take a little break to spend some time with her friends, with her telling Silverstream the office is now closed. But when Silverstream suddenly goes missing, it is up to Starlight, Trixie, Mud, Mudbriar, Sumbers, and Silverstream's brother, Terramar. My god, that's a lot of characters. To try and find Silverstream. I loved how many different characters were involved in this one. We get some good Trixie moments from this one, which is always nice. Weren't we just here? I think the mix of different characters definitely made this adventure way more interesting, rather than if it was just like Starlight and Terramar or something like that. And this episode did a good job at not only showing why Starlight's job is so important, but why Starlight also deserves some time to herself. Overall, a pretty good episode that I had a fun time with. So after nine seasons, we finally get to meet Scootaloo's parents. It turns out that the reason why we never see them is because they have a super important job that leaves them with no time to spend with Scootaloo. So they decide it's a good idea for Scootaloo to move in with them, far away from Ponyville. But with how important the Qmart Crusaders are as a trio, Scootaloo doesn't want to leave her home. So the Qmart Crusaders try to convince Scootaloo's parents that Scootaloo is super important to Ponyville and can't leave. It was cool to finally meet Scootaloo's parents, and this episode was actually pretty emotional. I enjoyed seeing all the Qmart Crusaders' ways of trying to convince Scootaloo's parents that she should stay and the ending with her parents acknowledging just how important she is to Ponyville was very sweet. Considering this is one of the last Qmart Crusader episodes of the entire series, I'm glad I ended up enjoying this one. Oh now, this is just terrible! Miss Cheerily ordered cupcakes for school today and I forgot to make the order! Yeah, no biggie! <laughs> 
The two princesses decide that they want to go on a little vacation to get a little sense of adventure and leaves Twilight and her friends in charge while they're out. So while the two princesses start to argue about what to do on their vacation, Twilight and her friends struggle with covering the princess's duties. Honestly, this episode really reminded me of All Bottled Up, where we go between two plots throughout. And I really liked that episode, so it's good to see this one ended up being pretty fun too. We got to spend some more time with Celestia and Luna and once again got to see them do something other than princess duties, which like I said, is a nice change of pace. Seeing Twilight and her friends try to take care of their duties was also pretty fun. Yeah. All we have left to do is polish the armor, bubble the punch, glitter the carpets, puff the pastry, float the floats, and carpet every road in Camelot. Should I keep reading? We even got to see both of the stories connect by the end, with Twilight struggling with controlling the Sun and Moon amulet, while Celestia and Luna fly back. Another pretty fun episode, going below the last. Weird Al returns as Cheese Sandwich in this episode. He was a really good character in Pinkie Pie, so hopefully he's just as good here. Pinkie Pie has been invited to Cheese Sandwich's amusement factory, where he distributes things to provide ponies with fun and laughter. Pinkie is super excited about this invite, as not only does she get to explore this factory, but she will hopefully be able to get help from Cheese Sandwich about finding her life's purpose, as she feels she still hasn't yet with how many things her friends have accomplished. But there is a big problem. G Cheese Sandwich just can't laugh not even a grin so it is up to pinky to try and restore cheese's laugh not only do i think cheese sandwich was good once again but i think he was even better than in pinky fried i had such a good time with this episode i love seeing pinky try to help cheese sandwich laugh again she was really good here cheese's factory was also a pretty interesting and unique location i liked exploring the types of gags that were produced and the ending with pinky realizing her life's purpose is simply making others happy was nice i really like this episode it's a very good episode for both pinky and cheese sandwich Sandwich, and I'm glad I didn't disappoint at all. Best episode of the season so far. Want another episode where Rainbow Dash is super unlikable? No? Well, too bad. The school decides to start a buckball team, and Rainbow Dash hopes to be able to coach the team, but Twilight wants Rainbow Dash to coach the cheerleading squad instead. Rainbow Dash is super disappointed by this and ends up just trying to avoid coaching the team like i said rainbow dash is just super unlikable on this one i do like how they're expanding upon the buckball stuff more but this episode just wasn't it like yeah i can definitely understand why rainbow dash would be a bit bummed about not coaching the buckball team she is a sports pony after all but her just straight up refusing to coach the cheerleading team just seemed really petty for her this entire episode just feels like it belonged in season eight more than season nine which featured tons of episodes where the characters were super unlikable or just straight up out of character it's not the worst thing out there but certainly not great even if the title has great in its name this episode is going above frenemies at least this one was a bit more entertaining and interesting than that episode Okay, why does this episode have like two different titles? Sometimes you'll see others call it a trivial pursuit, and other times you'll see others call it a trivial problem. Although I'm pretty sure that the pursuit version is the correct title, so I'm just gonna call it that. Anyways, we are introduced to a Jeopardy-esque game that lots of ponies play called Trivia Trot, and Twilight is really good at it and has a good winning streak going. But the chances of her streak continuing her opponent to Jeopardy, no pun intended, when she is paired up with Pinkie Pie, who doesn't quite take the game as seriously as Twilight does. So what follows is Twilight going insane, trying to make sure her streak isn't broken. Twilight and Pinkie Pie forever! Ooh, we can be Team Twiggy! Or <gasps> Team Pink like <gasps> Sparkle Pie! No, 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 no! <gasps> Twi Pie! Oh, they knew exactly what they were doing here. This episode is pretty good. I will say I did feel bad for Pinky a lot, with Twilight pushing her away a lot and just taking the game way too seriously. But I think there's still tons of fun to be had with the two. I liked how they both just didn't take the game seriously at all by the end, and both just want to have some fun. It was also cool to see some of the other team-ups. Fluttershy and Bulk Biceps, Sunburst and Cranky, Mod and Mudbriar. It was nice. Another thing I noticed while watching this one is the animation. I feel like this episode really shows you just how different the animation has become. Earlier on, I said I didn't really mind the over-exaggerated expressions because they didn't seem too crazy or overused. But I don't know, some of the expressions here just fell a bit off. I don't really know how to describe it, but you could probably notice it when watching the episode itself. It seems that's usually when they're facing front, so it probably has to do with that and the way they're drawn now. Doesn't ruin this episode too much, but definitely a bit uncanny. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's enough talking for this one. Going above common ground. 
with Celestia and Luna retiring sometime soon, they decide that this Summer Sun celebration will be the last. So Twilight really wants to make sure that this one is the best yet. But Grogar's group of villains are determined to try and ruin it for every pony else. So it's up to Twilight and her friends to try and make sure that the Summer Sun celebration goes well and doesn't get ruined. Look at me. You know what? This was actually a really good one. One of my favorites of the season so far, in fact. I seem to really enjoy the episodes where it's just all of the main six trying to help with a problem, as we get to see how each of them handle it. That's probably why I enjoyed this one so much. It's just the main six trying to make sure a celebration goes well. And the villains were definitely a bit more interesting in this one than in front of me. But yeah, nothing more to say. Super fun one. Fluttershine Angel's relationship is in a little bit of a rough spot. I mean, when is it not, am I right? And so Zakor gives them both a potion where they switch bodies. I wonder what it's gonna do. Whoa, 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 hang on, hold up. Am I a pony? Why am I a pony? And so the two of them both start to understand each other a little bit more, due to how difficult their lives can be at times. This was honestly the perfect episode to give a little closure for Fluttershy and Angel. Throughout the series, Angel always just acted like a little prick to Fluttershy at times. But here, he seems to finally understand her a bit more and appreciate her for all she does for both him and the animals. Fluttershy also understands that she needs to try and balance time with Angel and the other animals, even if things can get a little busy at times. Roses are red, violets are blue, you suck flowers, and so do you! Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> toy ball, toy ball, toy ball. Yeah! Oh, come on! I usually find body swapping episodes to be pretty interesting, as it's funny to see what wacky shenanigans the characters can get into. And this one was no different. We get to really see both of their struggles with their new lives, and I'm still realizing that both of their lives can be just as hard at times. This episode will be going around the middle of the season 9 list, but this is still a pretty good one. This episode, on the other hand, is really, really bad. Rarity notices that Spike is hanging out with her less and less because Spike has found a new friend who turns out to be Gabby. You know that one Griffin that really wanted a cutie mark? Remember her? And so Rarity worries that she's done something to upset Spike, and we spend the rest of the episode seeing her basically just stalk him. If you're a big fan of Rarity, you are going to hate this episode, guarantee. The way they characterize her here is just so weird, and she comes off as really clingy. It's kind of uncomfortable to watch, if I'm being honest. And to make matters worse, you got the uncanny animation I was talking about from the trivia episode, which just makes her expressions even more weird. Once again, this episode just seems like something that would come from season 8. This entire episode episode is just rarely trying to break up the friendship between spike and gabby and it's just why all in all just a really bad episode bottom of the entire list for season nine so far likely for the rest of the season too we're basically in the home stretch for this season so i'd be shocked if they managed to randomly make an episode worse than this one Ooh, a bunch of boring stuff for a really long time okay I know history is important, but I never learned any of it, and look how I turned out. Last Starlet and Trixie episode of the series, let's hope we're going out with a good one. And thankfully, we are. With Twilight soon taking over Celestia and Luna's duties, she won't really have time to take care of the school. And so she obviously picks Starlight to become the new hand mayor because... Let's be real, who else would she have picked? Discord? We all saw how that went. Anyway, since Starlet is a bit nervous about taking care of the school on her own, she decides to try and find someone who can act as a vice head mayor so that she isn't alone when making sure the school is doing alright. Now, you may be wondering, where on earth does Trixie come into this? Well, it turns out Trixie really wants this job, mainly so that she can work with Starlight, but she doesn't quite meet the expectations Starlight is looking for from a vice head mayor. And so we spend the episode seeing Trixie's methods of trying to prove to Starlight that she's a good choice for the job. It was mainly just funny seeing Trixie these methods of trying to get the job. That one running gag where she kept saying wink was pretty good too. Well, message received. Wink. The ending was also a nice little resolution, with Trixie not getting the vice head mayor job and Sunburst getting it instead, but she becomes the new guidance counselor. Overall, this is a pretty fun Starlet and Trixie episode, and I'm glad the last one ended up being a pretty good one. This duo has some pretty consistently good episodes, and was for sure a highlight for the series. Barmy wishes we got a little more of them in season 6, but hey, better late than never, I suppose. 
keeping up the theme of final episodes, we have our final Daring Do episode. With a random author releasing a book which seems to talk about Daring Do's adventures from Cavalaron's perspective, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy must investigate this mystery. So Fluttershy ends up going on an adventure with Cavalaron and some others to try and find out the truth behind the books, and Rainbow Dash and Daring Do try to rescue Fluttershy from the villains. Thanks. I'm having the best time with you all. Fluttershy must be having the worst time with Cavalaron's goons. This was a weird send-off for Daring Do. I'll say that myself. I don't think this episode is as bad as others say it is, but I can definitely understand why others don't really like it. Like, this episode is just full of continuity errors. They try to redeem Daring Do's villains and make them seem like they were good guys all along, but like... They were clearly established to be villains earlier on, so I don't buy this redemption at all. It really just messes with the lore that we already know. But at the same time, I did enjoy seeing a Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy Daring Do adventure. The one with Pinkie Pie was pretty fun, so it's cool to see another one of my favorites drawing Rainbow Dash in one of these. It also honestly makes sense for Fluttershy being one of these since she was literally the pony who helped Rainbow Dash try and get that book back in the trading episode. But this one messing with the canon, I'll bet, definitely brought it down. Not a bad episode by any means, I think this one is another one that gets a little more hate than it deserves, but definitely will be placing a little lower on the season 9 list. It's gonna go above the point of no return. <laughs> last cutie mark crusader episode the three are sick of not being able to do stuff that grown-ups are able to do and so thanks to the magic of magic the cutie mark crusaders are transformed into grown-ups but they seem come to realize that the responsibilities that come with being a grown-up are a little harder than they thought this is another idea that i'm shocked they haven't really explored before there's tons of people out there who have had a very similar mindset that being a grown-up is super fun since you can do so much more but then you grow up and realize Oh, I took my younger years for granted. And this episode definitely executed this idea well. The adventure the Key Mark Crusaders went on was pretty interesting and was pretty fun too. Although, I definitely feel like the last crusade fits way better for a final Key Mark Crusader episode than this one. If the order of these two were swapped and this episode came before the last crusade, I feel like it would work way better. In fact, this episode could have even worked earlier on in the series, maybe around the season 4 or 5 mark. But that doesn't really bring down the actual episode at all. This is still a pretty good episode, and I'm going to be putting it right above a horseshoe. Doing. And now we say goodbye to this iconic trio as we move on to the last episode before the ultimate finale. So yeah, here we are, the final episode before the finale. And fortunately, it's a really good one. So Big Mac and Sugar Bell both plan to propose to each other, and they have a secret plan on how they're going to do it. But when each of them tries to get help from their friends, it ends up resulting in chaos. Not only was this episode tons of fun, but it was so sweet too. I like the little segments of Spike, Discord, Mrs. Cake, and the Kumar Crusaders talking to the camera and explaining what happened. These characters trying to help Big Mac and Sugar Bell only for it to end in chaos was pretty fun too. But I definitely think the highlights of this episode come from Big Mac and Sugar Bell as per usual. But man, this is definitely the best episode with the two so far. Because the ending with the two ending up getting married was just so damn sweet, man. I loved it. I loved how they got married at the exact same place where Applejack's parents did. Nice little full circle thing. Big Mac and Sugar Bell are just so sweet together and similarly to Applejack's parents, no matter what happens, they are sticking together. And you know you hit the jackpot when you got with someone who has a mindset like that. They don't care how many hardships will come along as long as they have you they are perfectly happy this episode was just all around a perfect conclusion for big mac and sugar bell they are now happily married and they seem like they're gonna be a great husband and wife i don't think i could have asked for anything else for our final episode with these two not only that but this was just a really good episode to set us up for the finale it's both sweet and fun which will likely be what the finale will be like too the big mac question is gonna go below the summer sun setback all right now on to the season finale this is when things are really gonna get crazy so if you're ready Let's do this. So here we are, the grand finale, the most important finale in the entire series. This is the finale to the show. So let's see how it is, shall we? So you remember that group of villains we saw throughout the season with an old villain named Grogar being in charge of them? Well, it turns out that Discord was Grogar and was simply testing the main six with how they'd handle certain situations. Very 
interesting choice from Discord, to say the least. I'll speak more on it later, though. Discord gets his magic storm from the three villains, and so now they have the power to take over Equestria. So it is up to none other than the main six to stop them all. What a wild first part this was. Discord's behavior in this one was a little questionable, though. Like, you're meaning to tell me Discord put Equestria at risk several times just to test the main six? I know Discord is a little irresponsible at times, but I don't think he'd be this irresponsible. It doesn't really bring down this finale too much, but it's definitely an aspect I find a little odd. Other than that, though, you can already tell how high the stakes are going to be for this one. The final shot of this one before the 2v continues screen literally shows Twilight straight up in tears with how stressed she is. Like, imagine just three villains casually coming out of nowhere and threatening you along with everyone else. That has got to be terrifying. They really do a good job at showing just how intimidating the villains are here with them doing stuff like grabbing twilight aggressively by her wings the stakes here in general are just set perfectly and it makes you really excited to see what happens next this is looking to be one of the best finales of the entire series so let's check out the next part and hopefully that'll be the case Twilight suddenly disappears and the rest of the main six get captured by the three villains. Meanwhile, the entirety of Equestria is understandably thrown into a pit of panic due to the sudden takeover of the villains. The main six are eventually free thanks to Discord's help and eventually find Twilight. And Twilight is so overwhelmed by all this happening that she actually thinks they won't be able to save Equestria. But her friends remind her of how strong they are and so they try their hardest to make sure Equestria is in good hands again. God, what a great two-parter finale. Just like I mentioned in part one, I think my only gripe of it is the whole thing with Discord being Grogar and putting Equestria at risk several times just to test the main six, but he at least helps out in the end, so I don't find it to bring down the entire episode down that much. Just like in the first part, the stakes are set perfectly here. You get to see all these locations just set into hysteria because of this sudden takeover, and you even get to see Twilight in a state you usually never see her in. See, the entire theme of this season was that Twilight is finally starting to get her confidence up a bit and believe that they would always be able to stop threats, no matter how big. But in this episode, she genuinely believes that it's straight up impossible to save a crush here with how much is going on. These three villains literally brought her confidence all the way back down. And like I said, you never see Twilight like this. But even with Twilight doubting herself, her friends still believe in her and themselves and try to lift her spirits up, which was really sweet. It just shows how loyal this friend group is and shows that they will always believe in themselves no matter what comes at them. And that's how you know you've got good friends. I also love the final battle on this one. What makes this one stand out from the others is we get like every character here we get some good old main six action which is always fun and then out of nowhere in like an end game-esque way a bunch of the show's iconic characters just come out of nowhere and help the main six defeat the three which is pretty awesome and as the cherry on top, Celestia tells Twilight that she's officially ready for becoming a new ruler of Equestria after they defeat the three villains. Not only that, but this episode ends in the exact same location as the best night ever ended. I have no idea if that was intentional or not, but either way, it's another nice little full circle thing, and I love that. This two-parter overall was just such an epic one, and one of the best of the show for sure. I don't think it's quite as good as Twilight's Kingdom. There are definitely some minor gripes I have with this one that I don't really have with Twilight's Kingdom, but this one comes extremely close. This episode will be going above the beginning of the end. Now, despite this being a two-part finale, we actually have one more episode in the season to go, and it's going to be even more emotional than this one. So without further ado, let's check out the final episode of the entire show. Here it is, the episode that made millions of fans cry around the world. And I can definitely see why. So in this final episode, we fast forward many years after the epic battle between the three villains and the rest of Equestria. And we get to see Twilight as the new ruler of Equestria, along with Spike, who now looks like he's pretty much been to the gym. Twilight also looks completely different, with her resembling a Celestia-like design. Not only is she now the new ruler of Equestria, but she now takes care of Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. One of Twilight's students actually ends up coming up to her and tells Twilight that she isn't quite big on the whole friendship thing and thinks it's a waste of time due to 
believing that they can never last forever. So what follows is Twilight recounting a time when she thought the same, when she was moving away from Ponyville to become the new ruler of Equestria. We get to see how Twilight and her friends prepare for her coronation, and what the rest of the main six are up to nowadays. We also get to see that even after all of these years, the main six are still very best friends and keep in touch with each other despite how busy they all are now. And so thanks to this story, the student learns about the true magic of friendship. Like I said, I can for sure see why this episode made so many people emotional. As I was watching this one, I just felt so many emotions. I obviously felt very proud of not only Twilight, but the rest of the main six too, for how far they have come. Twilight is now the ruler of Equestria, Pinkie Pie is a kid with cheese sandwich, Fluttershy and Discord help to run the Animal Sanctuary, Rainbow Dash is now in charge of the Wonderbolts, Rarity is still very successful for boutiques, and the demon just opened one in Yak Yakistan, and Applejack is now the one in charge of Sweet Apple Acres. It's just absolutely amazing to see how far these characters have come and how much they've accomplished. But on the other hand, it's also very bittersweet. Like, this is literally the final episode of the whole show. This is where the story ends. When the magic of friendship grows song was playing i was just thinking about how i was actually about to finish the show and how proud i was of all these characters i was sad it was coming to an end but i was also very proud of what all these characters have managed to do over the course of the series and just to make things even more emotional not only do we get to see the students start to make some friends and have twilight's entire story with the main six be a full circle but the final shot of this episode shows that the entire show was basically just one big story with the book that appears at the start of the very first episode finally closing concluding the story this was just the perfect way to end the show. I was shocked to learn that people actually dislike this finale, even to the point where some want the entire season to be revised. Like, how could you not be happy with this? I don't think I could have asked for anything more for the final episode. This was just such an emotional episode. It really wrapped up the series perfectly. This episode is the best episode of the season for sure. It's definitely carried by the fact that it's literally the show's finale, but it's just such an emotional experience. I love seeing where all the characters are now and seeing what happened before Twilight's coronation. It was the perfect way to end an amazing show. Thankfully, I could say that season 9 was miles better than season 8 for sure. Not just because it's the final season of the entire show and it contains the literal finale, but there are just way better episodes in here and there are also way less duds in here. With season 8, there would be times where there would be like 5 mediocre, terrible episodes in a row, but in season 9, there were only like 3 episodes I wasn't really big on. That is for sure an improvement from season 8. Season 9 is definitely not one of the best seasons, but still a pretty good one and a good one to end the series on. I feel like if the series went on any longer, it may have suffered from seasonal rot, which is a term that is commonly used to describe shows that slowly got worse and worse the longer it went on. So despite not making it to 10 seasons, I think ending it here was the best choice for sure. I would rather not have more seasons of this show if it meant the episodes would suffer in quality because of it. Shows like The Fairly Odd Parents really suffered from seasonal rot because of the show just going on for such a long time. It got to the point where I'm convinced the crew just stopped caring as many of the show's established rules were basically just ignored. Like, just look at this image and tell me nothing's wrong with it. I dare you. I'd hate to see that happen to such a great show like MLP, so I'm glad that didn't end up happening. But yeah, season 9 is a pretty good season. Now you may be thinking, well, that's it, right? Isn't it time to rank all these episodes now? Well, not quite. You see, this technically isn't actually the final piece of material in the Friendship is Magic franchise. Since I want to cover all of the content in the franchise, other than Equestria Girls, I don't really like it, sorry. We will also be taking a look at some short episodes Episodes, which are only a few minutes in length, and the spin-off show called Friendship is Forever that came out in 2020. You may not be very familiar with these, as I don't see them discussed as much, but I still want to cover them because, like I said, I'm trying to cover all the franchise. I could easily have just done all nine seasons and call it a day, but nope, you're getting a full retrospective of the franchise, and you're gonna love it. But before we get into those, we actually have one more special to cover, which actually came out in the middle of season nine, but I'm putting it here because I didn't want to break the flow of the season 9 section and that special is none other than rainbow road trip So yeah, like I said, this special came out in the middle of season 9, and this one is even longer than the best gift ever special, with it being an hour in length. 
So let's see what we're dealing with here. So Rainbow Dash has been invited to be the guest of honor at an event called the Rainbow Festival up in a place called Hope Hollow and is obviously super excited about it. So the main six travel to Hope Hollow only to realize that literally the entire town is super dull and is lacking color. They all eventually find out that the town actually used to be full of life and color, but it all disappeared after the last Rainbow Festival turned out to be a disappointment. So it's up to the main six to try and restore life and color in the town and help make a good Rainbow Festival happen. Once again, Again, a really good special. I found this one to be a little bit better than the movie too. No just to the movie, but these specials have just been way better than I was expecting. But yeah, it was solid. One of my biggest compliments for this one is bringing back the animation style that the movie used. I've already stated how much I love the animation style for the movie, so seeing them bring it back for the special was such a delight. Despite this being a TV special rather than a theatrical movie, it still looks absolutely spectacular, and I definitely think it benefited the special a lot. Another cool thing about the special is it explores a completely new location. We get to explore all the citizens, the lore, the buildings, it's nice. And similarly to the best gift ever special, I feel like each main six member gets the perfect amount of time to shine and none get more or less than the other. Each of them contribute to helping the town in some way and the scenes are all balanced pretty well, just like best gift ever. I know I'm saying that a lot. It's more of a simple story, with it mainly just being each of the main six helping out different parts of the town, but I still found it to be pretty fun. It's getting so a pony can't even walk down the street without being terrorized. <laughs> oh, that's not terrorized. This <laughs> is terrorized. Like I've said, the main six all have very diverse personalities, and they all seem to get an equal amount of screen time, so it still feels interesting throughout. I also liked how after the scenes of the main six helping, you get a little hint as to why the color disappeared from the town. Because when the mayor named Sunny Skies is telling the story as to why the color disappeared, he believes it disappeared because of a rainbow generator malfunctioning during a rainbow festival, and that making the colors go away. But throughout this episode, you learn that the real reason was because the town just lost all of their hope when their last hope, that being the generator, malfunctioned. So the main six helping out helped give the town some hope, and that ended up being what restored the colors. They did a pretty good job at hinting towards that throughout the episode, and it definitely helps keep viewers engaged. The story with Sunny Skies and Petunia Petals was also a pretty sweet aspect. But yeah, I don't think I have much more to say. I really enjoyed Rainbow Road Trip. The animation is stunning, the songs are pretty good, and we got to explore an interesting new location. I honestly think the special is kind of underrated, and I don't really see many talking about it. So if you're bored, go check out this special. I think it definitely deserves some more love. I still think Best Gift Ever is just a little bit better, but this one is pretty good too. Alright, now who is ready for some MLP shorts? Okay, so I actually completely forgot this existed until I had already edited the first five seasons for this video. However, I still want to include it in this video, so just to not make things messy, I'm going to put it in this section since it falls under the shorts category perfectly. So this is actually a real animation test for MLP that was made way back in 2009, just one year before the premiere of the show. This actually used to be considered lost media, but it was eventually uncovered in late 2019, shortly before the finale. The test itself is only around a minute and a half in length, and we see Twilight trying to read, Rainbow Dash having a blast with flying, and Pinky just being... Pinky. You had no idea how funny it was to go from Rainbow Road Trip, which had this super lively and bouncy animation style, to this flash animation from 2009. Not dissing it, though, obviously. For this being an animation test, this is honestly pretty close to what Season 1 would look like. Also, something interesting about this animation test is I'm pretty sure Terror Straw not only voices Twilight as per usual, but also Pinky and Rainbow Dash. Rainbow, careful. Sorry, practicing moves. Woohoo! All right, a bubble on the bubble. What? <laughs> I mean, I brought you an umbrella. Yeehaw! I know, but this morning I woke up and I had a funny twitch in my tail, and that always means something will be falling out of the sky. You can definitely tell that Ashley Ball and Andrea Libman, who usually voice these characters, are just completely absent from the short. And another interesting thing to mention is Twilight, Rainbow Dash, and Pinky are the only characters that appear in the short. We don't get any Fluttershy, Rarity, Applejack, or even Spike. I guess they were still figuring those characters out and just used the ones they had the best ideas about. Or they just didn't have a good idea on how to utilize them in the short. One more thing I'd like to mention is how in this short, we get the whole Pinky Sense thing going on. Which means that feeling Pinky Keen took inspiration from this short and turned it into a full episode, which I find pretty neat. That was awesome! Was that your reign? Yes. No. Wait a sec. Hmm. Nope. 
That wasn't it. That was it. But yeah, this was not only super cool to take a look at, but it's a charming little short. I don't really think this is pretty important to mention when discussing the show's history, as it was a good starting point for making the show what it is today. And now we go from 2009 Flash animation all the way to 2018 Flash animation. How great. So these first few shorts you'll probably notice have a certain theme. And that's because Hasbro decided to create three shorts in order to promote the best gift ever special. They really promoted the hell out of the short. Wow. But let's see if these shorts were good promotional material or not. In this short, we see Rainbow Dash challenge Applejack to a triple pony dare competition. The rules are simple. The first pony to complete a dare wins. Applejack and Rainbow Dash constantly try to complete many dares but are unable to do so pinkie pie eventually inserts herself into this short and she ends up winning due to the due to daring the dude due to daring the two to stop daring and then refusing. The short's all right. I think a common trend with these shorts is I'll simply consider them to be all right due to them only being a few minutes rather than closer to like seven or something. But for what it is, this one is decent. I like how Pinky just randomly insert herself into this whole thing and ended up winning. If the next best gift ever shorts are similar to this one, I think I'll be just fine with that. Pinkie Pie creates an escape room for her friends to try and get out of. She gives a little warning that if they don't get out in time, something quote unquote super big and really scary will happen. But she doesn't remember exactly what that scary thing is. And so we see Pinkie's friends try to figure out how to get out of the escape room, only to fail and they eventually find out what the super big and really scary thing is. It's got me wearing a parachute. This short definitely felt a bit more fun than the last one. The main six trying to get out of an escape room was pretty fun back in season seven, and it was no different here. I liked how Pinky was the one to create the room this time, and she was pretty fun here. Overall, a slightly better... <laughs> No shot, I accidentally wrote shirt in the script. A slightly better short than the last one. There we go. This one just felt a bit more fun to me. While Rarity is trying to teach her class at the school, she keeps getting interrupted by club and event cancellation announcements over the intercom. And oddly enough, the voice coming from the intercom doesn't sound like Twilight at all, and she's usually the one to announce these things. Rarity eventually finds Twilight. Frickin' said Twilight. Rarity eventually finds Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, who seem to be experiencing the same issue with their classes. The three of them investigate this mystery only to find out it was Applejack doing the announcements and that Twilight let her do all the announcements for the day and she tried to make them a bit more fun sounding to make up for all the cancellations. This one's all right too. It's a short little mystery episode and it's pretty fun. I did like how they didn't just use Rarity for this one as they easily could have, but they decided to bring Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy into and they definitely made it a bit more fun. Don't have much to say about this one, but it is the last of the best gift ever shorts. So after this one, you'll notice them being a little less festive. Well, overall, I think the best gift ever shorts did exactly what they needed to do, and were certainly good promotional material for the full special. Twilight thinks Rarity should try changing up her main style and ends up creating one that's very similar to Celestia and Luna's and really likes it. She tries to get her main into this style, but nothing seems to work. That is until she finds out that Spike's wings flapping creates some decent winds and has them fly over her main, recreating the hairstyle. This one wasn't really bad, but it's the weakest short so far. This one just didn't really feel as fun as some of the others did. It was a little interesting seeing her methods of trying to recreate the hairstyle, but in comparison to the other shorts, this one's just okay. Twilight has a cold and Spike can't seem to help her get better. The interesting part about her cold, however, is strange things start to happen after every sneeze. And we get to see what strange things happen to the rest of the main six because of these sneezes. Pinky eventually arrives with a cure for the cold and it seemingly makes everything go back to normal, but then it turns Twilight into a baby. All right, then. Uh, what'd she say? I don't know. Not even I speak sound effect. This is my new favorite short so far. I had a really fun time with this one. In fact, I kind of wish this one was turned into a full episode. Them turning the whole pinky sense thing from the animation test into a full episode proved to have worked, so I bet a full episode of this could have worked too. I love seeing all the wacky and strange things that happen to the main six. It really reminded me of Bridal Gossip, where they had all these strange things happening to them. What a fun short this was. Top of the list for the shorts. 
So do you remember that gag from non-complete quads where Fluttershy seemed to win teacher of the month every single month? Well, it looks like they turned that gag into a little short. Rainbow Dash and Applejack are super jealous of how many times Fluttershy has won teacher of the month and want to know the secret to winning it. And so we see a few moments that helped her win some teacher of the month awards. Fluttershy suggests that a Rainbow Dash and Applejack have a student appreciation party for the students in order to win the award, but Fluttershy ends up winning it again when they accidentally reveal it was Fluttershy's idea. This was a pretty funny short. I like seeing examples of how good of a teacher Fluttershy is, and I can certainly understand why she has won so many awards. Like, don't lie, you'd want Fluttershy as a teacher too. I know I certainly do. And the ending with her ending up just winning again was pretty funny. Teacher of the Month is gonna go above Mystery Voice. <laughs> Twilight storms into Starlight's office and says that she's struggling with being a good head mayor at the school due to constantly seeing ladybugs and being deathly terrified of them. With the help of a little book on hypnosis, Starlight tries hypnosis on Twilight in order to get rid of her fear. However, in the middle of the hypnosis, Pinkie Pie bursts into the office and is super excited about flying kites. This results in the hypnosis causing Twilight to yell, ladybug kites. What's wrong? Why does she keep yelling at it to stop looking at her? <sighs> the concept of hypnosis has so much potential for funny gags, and this one I think definitely did a good job with it. It was also interesting to see Twilight come to Starlight's office for help, as she is the head mayor, so you'd think she wouldn't need guidance, but... I guess Ladybug is what cuts it. And cheese quesadillas, don't forget that. This was a pretty funny one. The short after this is the last one, so let's see what it's like. Here we go, last short. So it's a very hot day in Ponyville, and Pinkie Pie and the Cakes are very excited to open up the Sugar Cube Corner Ice Cream Museum. Pinkie takes a lot of time to hype up the grand opening, but due to the heat, the Cakes try to warn Pinkie that the ice cream could melt soon. But Pinkie is too focused on hyping up the opening, and comes to find out the ice cream has, in fact, melted due to the intense heat. But Pinkie isn't too upset by this, because she still thinks it tastes good, so therefore, the museum could still open. This short was fine, but one of the weaker ones despite being a Pinkie short. I think that's just because most of it is Pinkie hyping up the event and you know exactly where it's going to go i think it would have been better if we didn't know the ice cream already melted and so we don't see the cakes warning pinky but hey this one's still all right i'll be putting this one above rarity's biggest fan all right so those were the mlp shorts and what are my thoughts on them I think they did exactly what they needed to do. They didn't need to be this absolutely amazing masterpiece. They just need to be a quick little story that can still be enjoyable. And I think all these shorts were pretty all right. None of them were god awful, but none of them were amazing either. So if I were to rank this in terms of a season, this one would definitely be lower on the list. But that's just because this show has definitely produced better stuff. But like I said, none of these were bad either. I think they definitely did their best with the short runtime and managed to do some creative and fun things with them. Shorts like Alia Corn totally could have been turned into a full episode of how much was going on in that one. But yeah, overall, these shorts are pretty all right and are a fun time. If you're looking for some absolutely amazing content from the show, these probably aren't for you. But if you don't mind just relaxing for a little and watching some short adventures, then you should check these out. I think you'll have a great time with them. I don't really think I have much more to say about these as there isn't as much to say about them in comparison to a full season filled with 22 minute episodes. But again, these are not bad at all, just not as great as some of the other content we've looked at. And I know it's probably a bit unfair that I'm ranking shorts alongside full seasons but i mean notice how season eight got a lot of trash talk for me and these didn't really just saying anyways now it is time for us to move on to the final thing we will be ranking in this video the episodes of friendship is magic spin-off show friendship is forever yeah so after friendship is magic concluded they decided to make a little spin-off called friendship is forever which showed starlight and spike trying to collect memories from all of the main six members so that they could give twilight a little book of memories as a little gift all the episodes would air in 2020 and there were only six of them we're back to full episodes for this one but like i said there's only six of these so it'll probably be another one of the shorter sections of this video and again this is the final thing we're looking at in this video before we start to rank all these things so before we get into it i just like to say if you're still here thank you just thank you for watching all the way up to this point i hope you've been having a great time with this video so far all right let's check out this spin-off shall we
All right, so to kick off this little mini series, it looks like we're starting with Rarity. It starts off with Starlight and Spike coming up to Rarity and explaining their plan. That plan is that they want to collect tons of memories from Twilight's friends and put all of those memories into a book to give her as a gift for a coronation. The big catch here, however, is that Twilight cannot know about it just yet because they want it to be a surprise. And so Rarity must try to naturally spill as many memories from Twilight as possible without her knowing about the book. With all this, you probably guessed what this series is gonna be like. For most of the episode, we get to see some of Rarity's fondest memories with Twilight in a little compilation. And normally, I'm not really a fan of that kind of stuff. Because similarly to Campfire Tales and the Harp Swarming Club, it's just a bunch of stories and memories put together. But I actually think it works here, and I'll explain why. You see, these memories actually have some weight to them. Not only do the characters feel nostalgic, but you do too. You watch these characters grow all throughout the series, so seeing a bunch of these old memories will actually be pretty interesting. You get to really see just how much the characters have grown over time. So for me, I think this little mini-series will be alright. I really found it interesting to look back on all these memories, and like I said, it triggered my nostalgia. I really liked revisiting some of these memories because not all of them showed Rarity in a perfect way. You also got to see some of her weaker moments, but again, that shows just how much she has grown. I just think overall, this is the best way they could have executed a clip show. The memories they choose are pretty important ones and aren't just some random haha funny moment that doesn't really stick with you. They made sure to pick ones that actually showed the character's growth, and I like that a lot. Okay, that actually caught me so off guard. So yeah, I guess instead of the usual fade or cut to black for the ad breaks, they just play the star of the intro with the picture and the Friendships Forever <laughs> logo. I legitimately thought the episode was like glitched or something and went back to a glitched intro. And speaking of the intro, literally the only change is the logo. So there's that. Anyways, this seems like a pretty good start for this spinoff and I can't wait to revisit some more memories. <laughs> One of my favorites, Pinkie Pie, is up next. This one starts off just like the last one, with Starlight and Spike visiting Pinkie and explaining to her about their plan with the book. Pinkie's plan to try and get Twilight to spill some memories is to make some desserts that have a taste and memory formula, which will help Twilight remember some specific memories. I think something you'll notice with these is that my enjoyment of these episodes fully depends on how much I enjoy the character whose memories are being discussed. So since this one is all about Pinkie Pie, it's obviously going to be super enjoyable for me, because as you may know by now, I love Pinkie. With that being said, yeah, I really like this one. Pinkie's plan was definitely a bit more entertaining to watch than the Rarity one. And just like the Rarity one, they picked some really good memories for Pinkie here. In fact, they even put the entirety of the Smile song in here, so that was a nice touch. It's really fitting, too, because like I said before, that song is the perfect encapsulation of Pinkie's character, which is all about making others happy and putting others before herself. Unsurprisingly, this is my new favorite Friendship is Forever episode so far. Sorry, Rarity fans. <laughs> Wow, okay, two of my favorites back to back. This time, it's Fluttershy's time to shine. Interestingly, though, we don't start off with Starlight and Spike coming up to a pony with the book and explain what it's all about. Instead, we seem to get right into things, and we see Twilight spell out some memories about Fluttershy while she tries to get the animals to listen to her so they can rehearse for their performance at the coronation. Not gonna lie, I could see the ending twist for this one coming from a mile away, with the whole thing with the animals not listening to Fluttershy being planned so that she could try and get some memories out of Twilight. Pretty 200 IQ play from Fluttershy there, not gonna lie. But yeah, I unsurprisingly like this one too. In terms of episodes, I think Pinky's is just a little bit better. Simply because the way Pinky tries to get some memories was kind of funny and just so over the top. But Fluttershy's is also pretty good, with the 200 IQ play and the memories once again being pretty good. Ville Tower. Her, you're not... <gasps> oh, that's a shame. You make me lose, I blow my shoes! Hey! <laughs> I'm sorry if I say that for like all of these episodes, but they just seem to be doing a pretty good job with this. Again, like I said, if they want to do a clip show, this was the best way to do it, honestly. But hey, you never know. Maybe one of these will just have the worst memories ever and the episode will suck. Guess we'll have to keep watching and find out. Up next is the fast flying Pegasus herself, Rainbow Dash. As you probably expected, this one starts in the same way as most of the others with Starlight and Spike coming up to one of the main six members with the book, yada yada yada. But instead of this one involving Rainbow Dash flying all over the place as you'd probably expect, this entire episode takes place at the spa. I find this pretty funny, especially since this has been a running gag throughout the series. Rainbow Dash secretly loving the spa but not wanting to tell anyone because it makes her look a bit soft. I like the whole Rainbow Dash spa thing, not just because it's kind of funny seeing her fail to hide her 
interest for it. But it once again shows us a different side of her, which is a nice change of pace. But yeah, Rainbow Dash's method of trying to get Twilight Dispel some memories is definitely a bit more simple compared to the last two. Similarly to Rarity, Rainbow just tries to naturally get Twilight to spill out some memories and make sure she stays long enough to get enough memories for the book. Like I said, I think my favorite part of this one was just seeing a different side of Rainbow Dash for once. We're all used to her more competitive and hyper side, but it's nice to get to see a different side of her where she's more relaxed and calm. Rainbow Dash is my third favorite main six member, so this one will be going below the last. <laughs> Looks like it's time for Applejack to share some memories. However, there seems to be a bit of a problem. You see, this whole thing is supposed to be a secret, and she isn't supposed to tell Twilight about what's really going on. But here's the thing, she really sucks at lying. So getting Twilight to spill out some memories without telling her about the book is going to be a pretty hard task, it seems. Thankfully, Spike helps her out a little bit and makes sure she doesn't spill the beans. So throughout, we see Applejack and Spike try to naturally get some memories out of Twilight at Sweet Apple Acres. And it turns out that by the end, keeping a surprise from someone isn't actually a difficult task for Applejack at all, and even she knows that a surprise shouldn't be spoiled for anyone. It was interesting to see Spike not be hidden somewhere and tag off Applejack to get some memories, but other than that, this one's just alright. I'm 100% gonna make so many people mad when I say this. I mean, to be fair, any main six opinion could be considered to be a hot take depending on who you tell. But Applejack is the main six member I have the least interest in. Not that she's a bad character at all, she certainly has her moments. But in comparison to the other members, she's just alright. So naturally, I won't be into this one as much as some of the previous ones. Again, doesn't mean it's bad, but it's definitely the weakest so far. Like I said, for me, these episodes' quality fully depend on the character which it's focusing on. That's why, for example, I enjoyed the pinky one a lot because I love pinky, but I just considered the rarity one to be decent because rarity is around the middle of my list of favorite main six members but yeah like the others this one picked good memories it was cool to look back on some of applejack's most infamous moments again this one is the weakest so far but it's definitely not bad now you may notice that despite us actually having gone through all the main six members besides twilight of course we still have one episode of this spinoff left and well that's because we actually got to see twilight get the book so let's see what this final episode will be like shall we and friendly reminder this is the last thing we will be looking at before the big ranking of all of these episodes Episodes. So again, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Let's finish this journey, shall we? So now that Starlight and Spike are finally done with collecting some memories, they must prepare to give the book to Twilight. However, they realize that they shouldn't only include Twilight's memories of the main six, but others' memories of Twilight. So Starlight and Spike post some of their memories, Celestia and Luna's memories, and of course the main six's memories. After all these memories are put into the book, now it's really time to prepare to give the book to Twilight. Starlight and Spike give the book to Twilight after a coronation, and everyone loves it. Twilight herself really appreciates this gift, but acknowledges that book of memories can never truly be complete as new memories can always be made and after one last group hug the episode ends with the best friends until the end of time song honestly what a wholesome one to go out on this whole idea with the book of memories was just such a nostalgia trip for me and i love seeing everyone have fun with it by the end this entire spinoff was honestly kind of wholesome to watch. Seeing Twilight's friends work together to make a good book of memories for Twilight was so sweet, and like I've said a billion times already, it gave me tons of nostalgia with the memories themselves. In each episode, I feel like they picked the perfect memories to show, and they showed both their weak moments and their good moments. It really was just nice to look back on all this stuff after having watched everything else. And this episode even ends with one of my favorite songs in the entire series, which I think is the perfect song to go out on. It's all about how loyal they are to each other, and how they will be friends until the end of time hence the name it's a good song to tie into them always making new memories together overall i think this was a pretty good send-off for not only this spin-off but the entire friendship is magic franchise starlight and spike finally give twilight the gift they've been planning for a while everyone loves it a good song plays and that's the end this episode will be going below memnajiri not the best of this spin-off but for sure got points for being a pretty wholesome ending to not only this mini series but the entire franchise
Mischief is Forever is a nice little way to finish off the franchise. You get to truly look back on some of the show's best moments and see how much all of these characters have grown. It may be a clip show, but man, did this clip show give me so much nostalgia. They really showed us some of the best memories for all these characters. Similarly to the shorts, it's definitely one of the weaker things in comparison to the full seasons of the main show. But still, as its own thing, I think it did all it needed to do. And that was to show us how far these characters have come and how strong their friendship is. Seeing all these characters come together to help Starlight and Spike with this special gift for Twilight was really sweet, and some of them came up with some pretty fun ways to get memories. I just think overall, this is the best route they could have gone for a clip show, just showing us some good memories of the main six. But again, like I said, this miniseries might not be for everyone. For someone who could get nostalgic for things easily, however, I had a good time with this. Nothing too amazing, but still good for what it is. I'm glad that the final thing we ranked in this video was a good send-off for the franchise. go that is over 220 episodes of my little pony friendship is magic reviewed what a journey this was i'll go more in depth about what working on this video was like after the big ranking but let me just say it was both fun and pretty difficult fun because i love this show and i love doing a little retrospective of it but at the same time it got pretty difficult to rank these episodes you may notice that most episodes i managed to enjoy a lot so trying to determine which episode was better or worse than the other got pretty tough at times Times. But hey, overall, this was an absolutely amazing experience, and I do not regret doing it at all. So now that we've reviewed everything, it's time to rank all this stuff now, shall we? Now, I think that before we rank over 220 episodes, we should rank all of the seasons first. This will hopefully give you a pretty good idea of what the final ranking will look like, and I also just want to discuss these seasons again now that I've watched all of them. And yes, I will be counting the shorts and Friendship is Forever as a whole season. The movie and the specials, however, will not count. You'll see those in the big episode ranking. Anyways, let's get these seasons ranked. Season 8. Yeah, this is definitely the worst season of MLP. No contest. I know literally everyone on the planet seems to say this, but I literally cannot disagree. It is so mediocre. Don't get me wrong. There were for sure some good episodes in this season, but my god, the worst episodes here were just really bad. This season was literally the only season which just felt like an actual slog to get through. Because you have a few enjoyable episodes, then out of nowhere, the quality dips completely and you have to sit through a few bad or mediocre episodes episodes before it randomly gets better again. The quality is just a constant up and down and makes it such an odd season to watch. Again, this season isn't completely devoid of good episodes, but as a whole, it's for sure my least favorite of the whole show. I can for sure understand why people aren't really a fan of this one. Friendship is forever. I know I kind of trash talked the previous season, so it'll seem kind of weird to immediately start talking a bit more positively, but that just goes to show how weird season's A quality is. Because Friendship is Forever is a good time. It's just not as strong as some of the other stuff we see in the show. But for what it is, it's not bad at all. I think it's definitely carried by nostalgia, but it was just so interesting to look back at all these characters and how far they've come since. The whole thing with the Book of Memories was a cool concept to explore, and some of the episodes really got to show the ponies' personality with their plans to try and get some memories. Like I've already said a million times, this is the best way they could have done a clip show. This one actually makes you feel some emotions and it feels like a good send off for the franchise rather than just something a little bland. Shorts. Similarly to Friendship is Forever, the shorts aren't the most amazing thing ever, but are still a fun time. I think the shorts are just slightly better than Friendship is Forever, simply because there's more original content to look at here. And the content itself is pretty fun, like I said. No groundbreaking stories, but stories that could, well, fit into three minutes. If you're looking for a lot of action, these shorts probably aren't for you. When I say the stories are simple, I mean the really simple. They range from trying to help Twilight get better from a sickness to a simple game between Rainbow Dash and Apple. Jack. Although, like I said, I totally could have seen them turning that Twilight being sick short into a full episode. That one was pretty fun and for sure could be explored upon more with other characters being involved and such. But for what these shorts are, they did all they needed to, I think. And that was to give a little bonus content while viewers waited for new episodes. 
season three once again it's just baffling to me how mediocre season eight is in quality because if we were to exclude the past two entries this would be the second weakest season of the whole show but guess what it's not anywhere close to season eight's quality season three is just all right the main reason this season is so low on the list is because most of the episodes in here are just decent and nothing more with the season having only 13 episodes even just one episode that is a bit on the weaker side could bring this whole season down quite a bit but that doesn't mean season three is devoid of great episodes like come on this season literally gave us an episode about pinky cloning herself and how can we forget the amazing finale that was magical mystery cure but yeah overall while season three is definitely one of the weaker seasons of the show it's still pretty good and i definitely recommend it season one season one is for sure an interesting season of the show it's the very first season so obviously it isn't gonna be the greatest thing ever quite yet but for what it was season eight is a pretty good start to the show in comparison to the later seasons it's definitely not as good and you could tell they were still figuring things out here but even then i still call it a pretty good season in fact this season births some of the show's most iconic moments like fluttershy's yay louder yay louder yay Water guy. You made me look ridiculous. You made me water shy going and saying the gala. I'll catch you yet, my pretties. Oh yes. As soon as one of you little birds or monkeys or bears touches this net, you'll be mine. Mine! <laughs> and even the origin of Pink Amena. Could I have some more punch? Well, of course you can have some more punch, Mr. Turnip. <laughs> This is one great party! You really outdone yourself! Why, thank you, Rocky. And despite this being the first season, one of the episodes in here still managed to be near the top of the entire list, which I find pretty impressive as, again, like I said, they were still working out what they wanted the show to be like and introducing stuff. And one thing about the season that definitely stands out is its more slice of life approach. Most of the episodes here have more grounded stories than the later seasons, which were more focused on expanding the universe. And I find the slice of life approach to this one to be pretty nice. While I do like how the later seasons first further expanded upon this world, I also like just having some pretty relaxing episodes to watch. It'd be kind of weird if the show immediately started to delve into this huge lore right off the bat, so I think this approach was definitely appropriate for this season. With that being said, there are for sure some episodes in here which are pretty low on the overall ranking, mainly due to just not being too interesting rather than awful. So yeah, season 1 is a very good start to the show and a pretty good season in general. I can see why the show took off the way it did. Season 7. This season is for sure a bit of a mixed bag, but I still think it's a bit better than Season 1. When episodes were good, they were really good. When episodes weren't that good, however, they really weren't that good. It's not like Season 8 or the quality rambling nose dives after a few good episodes, but there are for sure some episodes in here that bring the season's quality down a bit. Still though, Season 7 still has tons of fun episodes in here. And this season was the season where they started using Starlight and Trixie more, which was for sure a highlight. In fact, Trixie literally became one of my favorite characters of the whole show. They really made her character so much better after she was redeemed, and I'm glad she and Starlight had some consistently good episodes. Just an overall fun season with a few duds in there. Season 9. I'm really glad they redeemed themselves after Season 8, because this season is so much better than Season 8. I have no idea what on earth happened during Season 8. I'm blaming the friendship school. But I'm glad they bounced back and gave us a good final season. It's definitely a bit carried by the fact that this is the final season of the show and contains the epic finale, but it's still pretty good as far as seasons go. Even the best episodes not related to the finale were really good, and I had a fun time with them. I liked how we got to see what the villains were up to in the background sometimes times although frenemies felt very substanceless but it was cool to have a nice little build up to what the finale would be like don't get me wrong similarly to season seven there are a few episodes in here that are duds and aren't that great at all but again there's thankfully not too many and it isn't a constant up and down in quality i will say the animation does get a bit weird at times for this season but i didn't see it bringing down my enjoyment too much just something i noticed while watching season nine is all in all a good season of the show and a very good final season 
season two. It is actually amazing how much an improvement this season is from season one. I was expecting for the show to improve, but not this much. This was such a fun season, man. It still has that slice of life feel from season one, but the stories they tell are so much more fun in this one. The animation also improves a little bit, and we don't get any of those weird pale colors season one had for the first half. And most of the season's duds are more so just fine rather than kind of bad. So thanks to that, the season's quality remains very good throughout. This is also the first season to have a two-part finale, and man, did they do a really good one for the first one. It was a fun adventure, had a good villain, had good songs. It was just a great ending to the season. And how can I forget that this season also features an S-tier episode, that being Hurricane Fluttershy. Seriously, how did such an amazing episode come from only the second season of the whole show? It's just insane how much they improved from season one. Season two is a really good season of the show, and I think it's the season where people really started to get hooked on the series. All thanks to the more fun stories and epic adventures. Season 6. I seriously was not expecting to enjoy Season 6 as much as I did. With people saying this is when the show started to decline a bit, I expected the season to be around the same quality as the first, but it ended up being one of my favorite seasons of the whole show. It doesn't really feel like there's much of a decline in this season. Most of the episodes were pretty good. This season was also the season where they started to use Starlight more, and she's definitely a really good addition to the series. There are definitely some people who liked her better as a villain and didn't think her addition to the show was that interesting. But for me, I think her addition was good, and it definitely helped spice things up a little bit. All of her episodes in this season were good, and I think her character overall is very interesting to me. And oh boy, when season 6 got good, it got really good. The top episodes in this season were absolute bangers, bro. <sighs> Trixie, there's no time for this. What did you say? That even Trixie's made mistakes, okay? Are you happy? So with all of that, I don't think I'd mark season 6 as the start of a slight decline at all. It's a very good season with tons of fun to be had. Season 5. This season was an amazing start to the Discovery Family era of the show. It definitely feels a bit different in comparison to the past four, but it's still a really fun time. Between this and season 6, I'd say this one is slightly better, but that's mainly because I think this season just had more super good episodes than season 6 did. The only time this season when we get episodes I just consider decent is around the middle, but the first half and the last half were all consistently good. They all stuck out to me pretty well and ended up being pretty high on the overall list. This season for sure feels more experimental than some of the others. They do a lot here, like introducing the cutie map, improving the animation, bringing back some old characters. It's pretty cool. It doesn't feel too messy or anything, so it just adds more fun to the show. I like how both the premiere and the finale had the same villain, which as far as I know, hasn't happened before this. So yeah, I really liked season five. It's for sure a bit different from the past few, but it's still super good for what it did, and I had an amazing time watching it. Now, on to my favorite season of the show, which is... Season 4. This is for sure my favorite season of the whole show. I can see why others love it so much. Season 5 was really good, but man, this season was just fantastic. For starters, we have a nice overarching story throughout, and that is collecting keys to open the mysterious chest at the Tree of Harmony. I loved how throughout the season, you can see that characters learn starting lessons that help them get the keys they need for the chest. And by the end, that turns out to be what helps them defeat T-Rex at the very end of the season in a very epic final battle. The entire story was executed executed so well and definitely kept me engaged throughout. Not even just that, but man, there were so many good episodes in here. There were literally two episodes back to back that are both near the very top of the whole list. Now that is very impressive. This season kind of feels like a mix of the first three with the slice of life feel and the later season with the more crazy stories. It's a really good combination and just made the season so much fun and so amazing to watch. That's not even mentioning just how epic the finale for this one is. This is literally my favorite season finale in the the whole show. t was an absolutely terrifying villain, and the battle between him and Twilight was so good. I could watch that part over and over again. And like I said, I love the ending with the main six finally solving the mystery of the chest and defeating t ending off this fantastic season. And even though this was the first season after the show's renewal and they had to work with the whole Twilight Princess thing, they still managed to make it work perfectly. All in all, season four is for sure the best season of MLP. With how many amazing episodes were in here and how well they execute the overarching story it deserves the number one spot on the season ranking
So there we go. Those are all of the seasons ranked from worst to best. I gotta say, almost all the seasons were pretty good. There was only one I would call just mediocre and a few others I'd just say are all right. But man, this show really had so much amazing content to watch. Almost every season had such an amazing and memorable episode, which stuck out to me a lot. Like even with how mediocre season eight was, they still gave us some really good ones in there. But man, when the episodes are bad, they can get really bad. And that definitely brings down the season a bit depending on how many duds there are. But yeah, overall, this show seemed to stay pretty consistent in its quality throughout, and I think it ended at the perfect time, just before I had the chance to decline in quality a lot. So now, here's the part you have all been waiting for. It is now time to rank all of these episodes. We've got over 220 episode titles to read out, so we are gonna be here for a bit, I feel like. Before we start, though, just another brief little thank you if you've watched this far. If you managed to watch all of the reviews up to this point, I applaud you for willing to watch me talk about colored horses for a few hours. I hope you enjoyed all of the reviews and all my unfunny jokes and gags. I know they probably sucked, but it's now time for the big list. Also, I almost forgot to mention this, but if you're wondering why I, for example, ranked an episode that I said was all right, pretty low on the list, that's just because that episode is probably kind of old and the show became more refined since then. Okay, moving on. So without further ado, let's rank every single episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic ever. Yakety Sacks, Non-Compete Claws, Dragon Dropped, Once Up on a Zeppelin, Frenemies, The Showstoppers, Boastbusters, Dragon Quest, The End in Friend, The Parent Map, Father's Nose Beast, Surf and or Turf, Look Before You Sleep, Owl's Well That Ends Well, Apple Family Reunion, Some Pony to Watch Over Me, Princess Spike, Brother Who's Social, The Horse Warming Club, The Ticketmaster, Suited for Success, Leap of Faith, Just for Sidekicks, Over a Barrel, Appaloosa's Most Wanted, A Flurry of Emotions, What Lies Beneath, Campfire Tales, Friendship University, 246 Great, A Dog and Pony Show, Simple Ways, The Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000, Ponyville Confidential, One Bad Apple, The Gauntlet of Fire, The Cart Before the Ponies, Harvest Memories, Honest Apple, Fame and Misfortune, 28 Pranks Later, Slice of Life, Canterlot Boutique, Twilight Time, Rarity Investigates, Light to the Finish, Winter Wrap Up, Apple Buck Season, Call of the Cutie, The Mysterious Mayor Do Well, Uprooted, Going to Seed, Rarity's Biggest Fan, Sunday Sunday Sunday, Triple Pony Daria, Addressing Memories, Deep Tissue Memories, Mystery Voice, Bridal Gossip, Teacher of the Month, Starlight the Hypnotist, The Great Escape Room, My Little Pony Adventures, Memories and More, Friendship is Magic, Aliacorn, Luna Eclipsed, A Friend Indeed, Memnagiri, Swarm of the Century, Feeling Pinky Keen, Fall Weather Friends, Sweet and Elite, Mystery on the Friendship Express, Baby Cakes, Griff on the Brush Off, Cakes for the Memories, A Bird in the Hoof, Hearts and Hooves Day, Newbie Dash, A Matter of Principles, PPOV Pony Point of View, Where the Apple Lies, Marks and Recreation, A Rock Hoof in a Hard Place, Stranger Than Fan Fiction, Sleepless in Ponyville, What About Discord, The Point of No Return, The Cutie Mark Chronicles, The Return of Harmony, The Cutie Pox, Family Appreciation Day, Pinky Apple Pie, Three's a Crowd, Spike at Your Service, Sister Hooves Social, Equestria Games, Inspiration Manifestation, Daring Doubt, Dungeons and Discords, Applejack's Day Off, May the Best Bet Win, The Cutie Remark, School Days, Wonderful Academy, Marks for Effort, Moltdown, It Ain't Easy Being Breezies, Or Swarming Eve, Read It and Weep, The Washouts, Common Ground, For Whom the Sweetie Bell Toils, Bloom and Gloom, Amending Fences, The Fault in Our Cutie Marks, A Trivial Pursuit, Between Dark and Dawn, She Talks to Angel, The Last Crusade, Green Isn't Your Color, Sonic Rainboom, Stairmaster, Magic Duel, Made in Main Haddon, The Crystal Empire, Keep Calm and Flutter On, The Mod Couple, A Horseshoe In, Growing Up is Hard to Do, Secret of My Excess, Lesson Zero, On Your Marks, The Mean Six, Student Council, Sweet and Smoky, Games Ponies Play, The Crystal Lane, Castlemania, Too Many Pinkie Pies, Putting Your Hoof Down, The Last Roundup, The Best Night Ever, A Canterlot Wedding, It's About Time, Dragon Shy, Celestial Advice, Triple Threat, Forever Philly, Parental Glidance, A Royal Problem, Princess Twilight Sparkle, Hard to Say Anything, Granny's Gone Wild, Secrets and Pies, The Cutie Map, To Change a Changeling, A Harp Swarming Tale, The Hooffields and McColts, Shadow Play, Thanks for the Memories, Daring Don't, Pinkie Pride, She's All Yak, Rarity Takes Manhattan, Make New Friends But Keep Discord, 
Do princesses dream of magic sheep? Castle Sweet Castle, Rainbow Falls, the main attraction, not asking for trouble, no second prances, fake it till you make it, horseplay, top bolt, school race, daring done? Sparkle 7, trade ya, it isn't the main thing about you. Uncommon Bond, Mod Pie, the times they are a changeling. Every little thing she does, the lost treasure of Griffinstone. Magical Mystery Cure, Vivo Las Pegasus, Party Pooped, Hearth Breakers, Sounds of Silence, The Breakup Breakdown, The Big Mac Question, Philly Vanilli, All Bottled Up, The Perfect Pair, Fluttershy Leans In, The Summer Sun Setback, The Last Laugh, The Gift of the Mod Pie, Testing Testing 1, 2, 3, Spice Up Your Life, Rock Solid Friendship, My Little Pony The Movie, My Little Pony Rainbow Road Trip, The One Where Pinkie Pie Knows, The Saddle Row Review, Scare Master, To Wear and Back Again, A Help of Information, My Little Pony Best Gift Ever, Flutter Brother, Crusaders of the Lost Mark, on the road to friendship, party of one, buckball season, the beginning of the end, the ending of the end, the last problem, Twilight's Kingdom, bats, discord and harmony, power ponies, and finally, Hurricane Fluttershy. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic was a super influential show. Absolutely no one expected the show to do as well as it did with audiences. The second the first episode premiered, people already seemed to get pretty hooked on the series and would tune into new episodes from there on out. And so the fandom would grow pretty quickly and MLP fans started dominating the internet. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing these iconic ponies. You'd stumble upon animations, remixes, reactions, memes, they were literally at every every corner of the internet. I still remember watching some old MLP videos on YouTube with my sister on our old iMac computer, with us seeming to really like that Fluttershy Yay remix. Which still goes hard, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> remember stumbling upon those Fluttershy plays videos where it's just someone doing an impression of Fluttershy while playing video games. It's truly impressive how big this show got. Thanks to this popularity, the show would go on for longer than originally planned. It managed to nearly last a full decade. The show itself seemed to actually stay pretty consistent in quality throughout too. Even in the first season, there are still some episodes which are a super fun time and one that managed to get in my top 10. And after the show was renewed for more episodes, the episodes didn't seem to decline all that much in quality. In fact, season four is literally my favorite season of the whole series, and that one probably wouldn't have even existed if it wasn't for this popularity. Like I said, I think the show ended at the perfect time. If it went on for any longer, they'd probably run out of ideas pretty quickly and would start to exaggerate the characters' traits to the point where they're not even the same character anymore. It's really sad to see once great shows fall into this trap, so I'm glad MLP ended with Grace and didn't just get milked until it was dry. The show overall not only did very well, but it's just such an amazing cartoon, especially for being a kid's cartoon. It has enjoyable characters, fun stories, engaging visuals, good music, and also teaches some good lessons about being a better person. The fact that a show about some colored horses learning lessons managed to get nine seasons, a movie, two specials, and more extra content is just incredible. It just goes to show how good this show was and how much people enjoyed it. So with that being said, this video was both incredibly fun and pretty difficult to work on. Like I said, most of the episodes were pretty good, and there aren't many I could call outright awful. So therefore, trying to figure out which one was slightly better or worse than the other got pretty hard, mainly after I started Season 5. But for the most part, this video was so much fun to work on. Since I'm not torturing myself watching a show that I either don't like or think gets worse over time, I just got to watch some fun cartoon episodes. I just turn on my TV or computer, turn on the show, and watch a few episodes, and most of the time, I would either go to sleep or continue my day thinking about how much fun I just had. Literally the second I started editing this video, I immediately knew I was gonna have a blast making it. I really enjoy just expressing my love for the show and also showing you all some moments from the show which I found funny or entertaining. And my god, you do not know how hard it was to keep this video a secret. You see, I've been working on this project since late July, so that meant I had to keep this video a secret for half a year. As of me writing this, it is January 20 
2024 and I just finished editing the final ranking section. I remember all throughout those months of me working on this video, I had so many moments where I just daydream about releasing this video and seeing what y'all thought of it. I'm the type of guy who just loves to talk about their interests to others and dumping every bit of info I know about it. So when I was thinking of a video to make to express my love for MLP, this was the perfect idea. With all that being said, if you watch this entire video all the way through, thank you. If you just watched one season review, thank you. If you watched even just one second, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about a show I love for five hours. I'm really happy with how this video turned out, and I really hope you enjoyed it. That's all I ask, honestly. I don't care about whether or not this video caused my channel to gain a few thousand subs or whatever. My main goal is just that you had a fun time, and I gave the show the respect it deserves. I know this video is completely different from the stuff I normally do. Usually, I'm talking about creepypasta remakes and scary Spongebob stuff, but I just love this show so much and wanted to make a video expressing my love for it and like i said this was the best way to do it for sure i was able to talk about some of my favorite episodes the characters i enjoyed watching and what i thought of the show as a whole so yeah definitely a bit more of a wholesome video but yeah i don't think i have much more to say honestly it's kind of surreal actually finishing this half year project it's been a big part of my life for quite a bit so it'll be weird to not work on it anymore and i'll kind of miss working on this too but i'm also really excited to finally get this out and see what you all think so yeah again just thank you for watching this this video has been such a huge passion project for me as a creator and i'm really proud of myself for what i've made for sure my favorite video i've ever made no contest i like to give a big thanks to alice mark and rt60 for being the two biggest inspirations for this video even existing their ranking videos are very well made and i definitely think you should check them out if you haven't already so with all that being said that will conclude this video thank you for all of your support while i've been working on this Thank you for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is such an amazing show, and I'm honored to have made this big retrospective on it. I'll see you guys in whatever I do next. Peace out.